Se puede
A very good morning to all the esteemed participants. I hope the audio and visual signals are clear to all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for responding. I would like to share and give certain briefings about the session which is about to come. So let us discuss about this session. I will request the participants 
ensure that during the inaugural session as well as during the lecture sessions i will request all the participants to kindly put their mic on the mute mode if you are wanting to request any query definitely you are most welcome you can put your query in the chat box you can also raise your hand you can also unmute and ask the question during the virtual interactive session because the number of participants is quite large we will accept at a time so that in a systematic manner the answers can be done during the inaugural session we expect the participants to be on mute so that when the respected dignitaries are there for the inaugural session we can go unhassled the entire inaugural function also we expect that this interactive session which will be conducted over e platform regarding the preparation for the combined geoscientist examination will prove useful to most of the participants who are appearing in the streams and all of you even if you are not appearing for this session or this year's examination in the next year and coming year because i saw some of them are from the graduation also so whenever you appear for your examination this virtual interactive session will prove useful to all of you so i will request the participants to kindly ensure their attendance to that is 25th of february and tomorrow that is 26th of february for which the duration during which this virtual interactive session will be conducted kindly be present both in the forenoon and afternoon session and take the maximum advantage of this virtual interactive sessions we have arranged sessions by eminent speakers so all of them interacting with the participants and you are requested to make the maximum use after the inaugural session we will have an e session by respected shri n kutum rao sir then we will have a session on preparation for general studies which will be conducted by myself nidhi mishra senior geologist in geological survey of india training institute after the general studies session the participants will be exposed to a e session as well as an interactive one with a chemist who have joined newly in gsi and are qualified this examination previous one and they will be discussing about how to prepare for chemistry we will also have specialized talks for the interview preparation by esteemed respected guest fraternity shri jhp raju who is an ifs officer principal secretary government of meghalaya dr m jagannath rao who is the vice chancellor of adaki nanya university rajamundri on 26th we'll be having sessions regarding how to prepare for the geophysics stream how to do the answer writing how to avoid certain common mistakes and also interview session after which we will also give time to the participants to have interaction with all the faculty so kindly be present to all these sessions keep your mic on mute during the inaugural session request the participants keep your video on for a group photograph of all the participants who are present in this virtual interactive session 
but kindly ensure that your mic is on mute so i hope it is clear to the participants thank you so much we'll be happy back to you रोहित जी कैंडली पुट इट ऑन म्यूट सर प्लीज हेलो नीरे म्यूट लो वीडियो रहा we have to communicate When will be class started? Uh, yeah, participants, uh, you are you are requested to kindly mute the system. The class will be start just uh, in a few minutes. The uh, formal inauguration. So it is requested the participants to please uh, keep your uh, uh, instrument in mute mode so that you can have a smooth running. Yes. Okay. 
participants we are about to start inaugural part session may i request all of you to kindly ensure that you are in mute mode Hello. Is it audible? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. Audible. Video. Video can be. Sir, Namaskar. Is it clear? Sir, Namaskar. नमस्कार सर नमस्कार नमस्कार वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर नमस्ते डॉक्टर एक्सैक्टली शाम टेन ओ क्लॉक सब बेज है ये मीटिंग यस सर एवरीबॉडी हैज जॉइन वी कैन स्टार्ट सर हां वी कैन 9:55 ना अदर 5 मिनट्स डेफिनेटली एक्सैक्टली टॉक शाम टेन ना
ठीक है सर सीधा टेबल में रख सकते जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट आई सेंड डायरेक्टर टेक्निकल कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड कोर्स कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ दिस इंटरेक्टिव सेशन वेलकम यू इन दिस टू डे वर्चुअल इंटरेक्टिव सेशन ऑन इफेक्टिव प्रिपरेशन फॉर द कंबाइंड जियो साइंटिस्ट एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ यूपीएससी टू बी हेल्प फॉर नेक्स्ट टू डेज दैट इज फ्रॉम टुडे एंड टुमारो before i proceed further i would request the uh, participants who have joined us from different parts of the country to keep your device on mute mode so that we can hear our dignitaries in this inaugural session let me welcome respected sri mm power sir additional director general and training manager of geological survey of india who has joined us from the central headquarters of geological survey of india kolkata i welcome you sir and request you, you. to chair this inaugural session thank you sir i also welcome uh, sri c h venkateshwar rao sir deputy director general and head mission 5 who heads the geological survey of the training institute and convener of this interactive session welcome you sir in this inaugural session i also welcome uh, sri vishwajit gangopadhyay sir deputy director general gsi training institute and co convener of this inaugural uh, program uh, inaugural session of this model program i welcome you sir in this session please join us i welcome the faculty members and the newly joined uh, officers of 
different streams, especially chemistry, physics, geophysics, and geology uh, of uh, UPSC 2019, uh, who will be sharing their experience. I welcome you all in this session. And I extend my warm welcome to all the participants uh, who have uh, registered their nomination from more than 280 cities of India until yesterday evening we got over 1400 uh, nominations and as we can, you can see sir every minute there is an increase in the number of participants joining. I welcome you all aboard in this uh, uh, in this program and uh, mm -hmm. I wish to share a very uh, brief uh, about this uh, program. In the history of GSI, this is probably the first time that GSI Training Institute is uh, arranging this novel program to help the aspirants of three different streams of geological survey of India, especially uh, chemistry, geology, and physics, as well as geophysics, to track to crack the UPSC exam. Uh, in this session, as I have already said, the newly officer joint officers of uh, chemistry, geophysics, and ge geology stream of GSI will share their uh, know-how, tips, bits for effective preparation. And we'll also have uh, four distinguished speakers to address our participants and share their experience on the preparations of this personal interview and how to uh, face the uh, UPSC interview. Uh, with this brief course description, I would like uh, now like to request uh, Sri Vishwajit Gangopadha, sir, Deputy Director General, Regional Training Divisions and Field Training Centers, to share a few words on this occasion. Thank you, Dr. Shen. The respected CMN Power, Additional Director General and Training Manager, as a LBG EDSS of General Vikas of India. Deputy Director General of State Mission 5, Geological Survey of India Training Institute, Hyderabad. Director, Technical Coordination, as well as Planning Programming of ATA Hyderabad. All the respected participants and all the eminent guest speakers to join us this particular session, that is e learning session. Actually, the session outcome has already been described by Dr. Shea. I want to emphasize the last four plus decades of the experience of geological survey training issue. This is the first time we have ventured out this particular type of program. And this, as you all know, since the pg during this pandemic time, Geological Sovereign Training Institute has embarked upon a new venture of the sharing the knowledge utilizing the digital platform. To the number of validatory sessions, of course, in all the sessions, those the academicians and the students community is to represent. They are to request us that a course may be designed to prepare the PSC exam joint PSC examination that will be combined geoscientist examination. Participants can kindly mute your microphone, please. Kindly mute the microphone, please. With this backdrop, we thought that we can, with the help of eminent speakers, as well as the part, rather the candidates who have just passed this, uh, this geoscientist examination, they will be delivering to this WebEx platform as well as uh, our Facebook page and which way the one can prepare for cracking this examination. This particular examination is definitely time to look forward for the career progression of all the aspirants 
who want to join that is just going to take the election. There are definitely some way that it will be delivered, will be shared by the personnel, none other than those who qualified the resignation to their hard work. At the end of the two day session, also at the experience, the eminent speakers of the UPC board itself to general. That is also how that change. At the end of the two day session, you will be having a rich knowledge and be looking forward to that similar examination, not only the geoscientist examination, there are a lot of scope with other schools of the geoscience will definitely enrich. Thank you very much. Stay safe. We do one request. Kindly cooperate with the speakers. If there be any problem regarding internet issue only, we will be definitely trying to help and overcome the situation. Stay safe. Bangubadha uh, sir, for your address and letting us know the rationale behind taking this program. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, let me uh, welcome and request our head, GSI Training Institute, CH Venkateshwar Rao, sir, and co and convener of this program to uh, share your words. Thank you, Dr. Vibhas. Respected Shri Imam Pawaksa. Additional Director General and Training Manager, uh, holding additional chair of uh, HOD of uh, Central Headquarters of GSI. Respected Shri Biswit Gangopa Desa, uh, DDG, RTDs, and FTCs, and uh, Shri Dr. Vivas Director of Planning and Programming and Director of Technical Coordination. And, uh, Hello, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Sir, a lot of noise coming here, sir. And, uh, all uh, esteemed uh, uh, participants from uh, different uh, organizations, different academic institutes of Pan India. Hey, good morning, all of you. Hey, warm welcome to the uh, training institute e programming from uh, effective preparations of combined uh, UPSC geoscientist exam. And uh, First time we are conducting, uh, uh, taking the feedback uh, for uh, enlightening the budding uh, students who are aspiring for the geoscientist. In this interview, uh, I thank Sri Amam Powersap, he is our training institute manager and additional director general who takes care of. Uh, Entire training institute from headquarters. He has given a unconditional support for uh, conducting this program. Due to him, what we are doing, all our yeah. and the director general is supposed to be uh, attested today because because of uh, his uh, sudden program, a parliamentary committee meeting, he could not chair this session. And uh, I thankful our director general. I thankful to our uh, additional director general and training major for uh, allowing us to conduct this program. And, uh, I, please stay safe. Any technical issues will be there, we'll be sorting ourselves from ourselves uh, from our side. Kindly bear some inconvenience will be there. And uh, stay safe. Namaste. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, for sharing your uh, views. I would uh, uh, request participants to bear with us. Uh, please put your uh, mic off. Uh, now, let me uh, request uh, Sri M.M. Kaur, the chairman of this session, additional director general, uh, and uh, patron of this entire training course uh, to speak a few words on this occasion. Power, sir, please. Thank you. Thank you. Respected EDG, CCH, Venkateshwara Asa, EDG and HOD, GSITI, 
रिस्पेक्टेड श्री विश्वजीत कंगोपाध्याय साहब डी डी जी आर टी डी एंड एफ टी सी जी एस आई टी आई डॉक्टर बिबा सैन डायरेक्टर टी सी जी एस आई टी आई इमिन फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स ऑल ज्वाइन टू पैन इंडिया दिस प्रोग्राम अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल very much delighted today that our ex dg gsi sri n kutumbara sahab has kindly consented to address the students sri kutumbara sahab he has led this great organization and he, because of his visionary and leadership quality this department has achieved much desired progress in all fronts as envisaged by the ministry of mines besides the great honor and us that the dignitaries professor sri jagananda rao sahab vice chancellor adikavi nananaya university and sri g h p raju ips principal secretary government of meghalaya who has also consented to address and guide the students with their valuable advices i am very much thankful for these dignitaries for sharing their valuable knowledge survey of india is a premier geoscientific organization in the country and has legacy of 170 years gsi continued to grow and diversify into various geoscientific activity and delivered impeccable contribution in the arena of geosciences gsi's main contribution in preparation of baseline geoscience data generation and locating number of mineral deposits has played a vital role in the development of this nation gsi's main contribution is identified number of deposits in the country gsi training is under the leadership of sri c h venkateshwar rao sahab is doing excellent job in generating number of training courses for in house gsi employees and state geological departments and stakeholders including international students and preparing them to take up the challenges in the field of earth sciences is a really appreciable gsi ti's state of the art training facilities of international repute having highly experienced and knowledgeable faculty had designed this workshop to in all the topics that are essential to crack the upsc examination already out students and presently undergoing training programs will be sharing their valuable knowledge and intricacies for preparation of this examination the eminent dignitaries will be guiding students on vital issues in preparation and personality tests this will certainly help the students who wants to choose their career geologists chemists or geophysicists and join this great organization i convey my heartfelt gratitude and to ddg and hod gsiti sri venkateshwar rao and the team of faculty members for arranging this workshop my best is for all the students who join this online this workshop for their 
bright future and may they Our, sir, thank you for your blessings and patronage patronage for this program we hope to share uh, the our views knowledge whatever we have gathered through our service or experience with the young aspirants uh, now we have come to the end very end of this program before i hand over the baton to shrimati nidhi mishra senior geologist and core faculty member of gsi training institute I request all the participants to switch on their videos for a few minutes so that we take some screenshots of this program uh, and make it a memorable one. Uh, uh, the core faculty who are sharing their slides, uh, please stop it and please switch on the, your videos for a while. And yeah, we are having some uh, good uh, number of videos, participants who have joined us. Uh, please stay with us and over to you, Nidhi, uh, please, uh, for the customary word of thanks. Nidhi, please. Thank you very much, sir. Privilege to present the vote of thanks in the inaugural session for the virtual interactive training session on effective preparation for UPSC combined geoscientist examination. We will express our heartfelt thanks to the Director General, Geological Survey of India, under whose leadership, motivation, and guidance we are conducting the entire program. Our sincere thanks, gratitude, and heartful welcome and a sense of respect for Sri M.M. Pawar, Additional Director General, and training manager of GSI for taking out the time from his busy schedule and inaugural session for providing us the required guidance, motivation, mentorship, and support to conduct this training program. We are extremely thankful to you, sir. Thank you so much. Express our gratitude and thanks to Sri C.H. Venkateshwar Rao, sir, Director General and Head Mission 5, GSI Training Institute, for providing the leadership, the logistics support, his mentorship to conduct this e virtual session. We express our thanks to Sri Bishwajit Gangopadhyay, sir, Deputy Director General for Regional Training Divisions and Field Training Centers, for his involvement, support, and guidance throughout the preparation of this training course. I express your thanks towards Dr. Bibhas Sen, Director Technical Coordination, Planning and Programming of GSI Training Institute for his deep involvement throughout support and the proper planning with which he has carried forward the entire preparation for this virtual interactive session. We express our sincere gratitude to the eminent personalities who have agreed to speak and share their experience on this occasion, the Sri GHP Raju, IPS officer, Principal Secretary, Government of Meghalaya, Dr. M. Jagannath Rao, Vice Chancellor of Adhikavi Nanya University, Rajamundri, Sri P. V. Sukumaran, retired DDG GSI, and none other than Sri N. Kutum Rao, the retired Director General of Geological Survey of India, who have agreed to share their experience for the benefit of the students. We express our sincere gratitude and thanks to all the participants of this uh, virtual interactive session, the newly joined officers of the chemistry, geology, and geophysics team, who will be here to share their experience of passing the examination with the participant trainees. Nevertheless, we are most thankful to the esteemed participants from different cities 
throughout the length and breadth of our country. Nearly 280 cities are there from where the participants have joined this virtual interactive session. We are thankful to the controlling officers. We are thankful to the HODs of the department who have given the permission to the students to join this training course. Very much thankful to the entire fraternity and faculty of GSI Training Institute who have put in a great team effort to bring this virtual interactive session in its current form. So we are thankful to one and all for helping us and enabling us to conduct this virtual interactive session for the effective preparation of UTSC Combined Geoscientist Examination. Thank you to one and all. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you sir. Thank you very much, sir, for sparing your valuable time, sir. I profusely thank on behalf of entire PA to she powers up for repeating the session, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. With the permission of the chair, may I conclude this meeting, sir? Uh, yes, 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 session? Sir. Yes, 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 please. Thank you. Dear participants, no, please. Please, please call number of subjects online, please. Yeah, yeah. Dear participants, be, be with us. Uh, our next uh, esteemed speaker, retired DGGSI, Sri N. Kutum Rao, uh, is already online. He will be talking within a few minutes uh, with you, sharing his views, his ideas on the role of geoscientists of GSI in nation building. Please be, be with us. Please be with us for a while. सर जाए जाए रहा हूँ मैं प्रोच्छ रहा हूँ मैं साइड यूरे अस्कर इन्हें मार डालता है मार डालता है Kutumbra, sir, are you online, sir? Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Just uh, okay. sir, be online, sir. Before you come on to line, I will say a few words about you, sir. Please, sure. sir, I welcome you, sir. One minute, sir. Uh, uh, dear uh, respected Sri Biswit Gangupadeh sir, Dr. Bibas said, all esteemed uh, uh, participants from uh, different organizations, different uh, cities of uh, India. I welcome, it is indeed it's a pleasure and privilege for me to welcome Sri N. Kutumbrao Garu, Director General, retired, Jirajka Sarva of India, who served uh, GSI for uh, three and a half decades. Uh, holding different portfolios and there is career. He joined as a ge uh, geologist of a 1980 UPSC batch, served more than 36 years in the different capacities, director international division, director and faculty of Geological Survey of India Training Institute and uh, state in the DDG of Kerala uh, and additional director general of uh, uh, Central Region Nagpur. Superannuated in um, May 2018 as Director General of Social with uh, 
so many joint collaborative projects with the countries like uh, Australia, Britain, and Bangladesh. Conducted and coordinated, coordinated various international geological correlation programs, IGCP, and international events with the uh, British Geological Survey, Natural Resources Canada, IUGS as a director of international division at GSA Calcutta. Served as a trainer and faculty of GSA TA. A geological domain expertise, Gondwana cements of Pranahita Godavari Valley in the unified uh, Andhra Pradesh, Deccan Volcanics of Maharashtra, and tertiary sediments of Manipur state. Significant achievements he achieved during his uh, uh, service. Extent to studies of uh, Godavari and Chintalpadi subbasins of Pranahita Godavari Valley. And uh, uh, the formation of Chintalpuri subbasin turned out to be a profit making open cast mining of fingerani colonies, a PSU of Telangana government, Telangana state, with the annual production of about 5 million tons. He is uh, associated with the fellow, uh, fellow of Geological Society of India, fellow of Gondwana Geological Society in Nagpur, a member of Geological Society of Australia. Uh, this is uh, apart from his uh, service credentials. Uh, being a person is a good human being, wonderful human being, who strives to help the needy people in need of our. He helped so many people uh, who are in trouble uh, by considering the humanitarian grounds, helping the needy people, uh, needy our, for transferring the people from. He always comes for the rescue of junior, and as well as the uh, fellow, he is in trouble. He's such a wonderful human being. Uh, uh, I welcome sir for his, uh, this uh, two days virtual interactive session for how to prepare a combined geoscientist exam sir. Indeed, it's a pleasure sir because uh, this uh, gathering is having a good in under across uh, India. Uh, 270 cities, all students are participating sir. Please sir, I welcome on behalf of the entire GSATA. Please, over to Kutumbra sir. Sir, unmute, sir, unmute, sir. It is not audible, sir. You please unmute, sir. Sir, not audible, sir. Unmute, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Mr. Rao, can I start? I can start, sir. Hello, can I start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, please yes, start, sir. sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rao, for a uh, nice introduction. Uh, nice to see Vishwajit, Dr. Vivas, and Nidhi. And uh, good morning to all of you, the dear uh, aspirants. For this wonderful program, vote of thanks. First of its kind, please. After complete, yeah. I, as uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for me, and it's a pleasure, in fact. As Mr. Rao hinted that, let me uh, just uh, address you all. I would be just uh, briefing you on the role of a geoscientist in GSI, generally in the service to the nation. As you know, if you join any organization, their roles are minimum and specific. But in GSI, he has to, the, the, the geoscientist will be a multitask master. Before we, I talk of the role and the significance of a geoscientist. Being a geologist, I would say a few words 
about the geology. It is such a noble subject. We should be <coughs> aware. Geology illuminates the past, sustains present, and shows way to future. We are there in the past, we are there in the present, we are going to be there in the future. Geology plays important role in modern life and civilization. We all depend on earth materials found by geoscientist activities and by study of geology. Almost everything we get from earth is just recollect. Let it be ever the raw material for our construction, raw material for transport media, whatever you just think, the jewelry we wear, everything we have to get from the earth. That is, the geology is important and will continue to be very important in life and civilization. Now coming to the geoscientists, who unravels the mystery of the Mother Earth. Here, his responsibility is multifold. His tasks are plenty, not one or two jobs, like we see in any other organization. And out of all, that still he excels in delivering the goods. The roles, let us move on. The major task is the discovery of mineral resources. Any government, any policy maker expects from the geoscientist mal, treasure. Besides that discovery of the mineral wealth, there are plenty of tasks where geoscientists is needed to perform in the service to the nation. To quote the Kautilya's Abdul Shastra, mines are described as the source of treasure and India produces as many as 84 minerals. GDP from mineral production, though low, it plays a vital role in the world economy as it has a direct bearing on industrial growth and national development. Mining industry is the backbone for the industrial growth. <coughs> It's, it, it supports several other industries. Hence, every nation to be aware of its potential. At the same time, it is also important to search for the new minerals to sustain the present and to secure the prosperity of the future generations. Such is the onerous task a geoscientist need to play. Exploration of mineral resources is the key to the nation's development. Uh, <coughs> out of the resources, there are energy resources like coal, petroleum, cesium, gas hydrates, atomic minerals which provide power for growth. Metallic minerals provide the backbone for infrastructure and capital goods industry, limestone and the cement is essential for infrastructure. A host of other metallic and non-metallic minerals form the basic ingredient for industries. Besides the mineral utilities here, minerals also are utilized in the sports. You take swimming, uh, take uh, many, many in uh, preparation, manufacturing of the equipment in preparing of the swimming pool, the gypsum seeds, Everywhere, the minerals are in use, indispensable in the day-to-day -day life. They are there in Ayurveda medicine, 
you know some medicines like uh, chanka basma and uh, even in the home of medicines like we call as a calc fox like this so that is one major aspect a geoscientist has to handle besides that see how many roles a geoscientist in gsi has to handle how many tasks he has to perform a geoscientist in a remote sensing and hyperspectral studies picking up alteration zones for targeting the mineral uh, potential geoscientist also have to take a great lead in geotechnical projects like construction of the dams intermodals highways canals yes. you are aware of this jammu kashmir the tunnel way at gsi was initially associated with and in major dams the gsi geologist has to give the feasibility certificate on the irrigation canals the alignment just to quote one small example i refer to the irrigation canal in yavatmal district of maharashtra that was dug to take care of the drought prone area in yavatmal diverting the water from one reservoir to the other after passing water to some extent the water suddenly disappeared and all the politicians have panicky what has happened as long as the water was flowing through the contract terrain is perfect problem the moment it entered the sedimentary terrain the kaladgi basin where the limestone exposed with fuse bedding joints as well the underground network of caverns there is a water loss all this is the crores and hundreds of crores is sunk but this is where geology plays such a key role well anyway in such cases there is a solution the geotechnical specialist of gsi offers either taking the water through the pipe through the damaged part or through the lined canal we have many such these things in the <coughs> dam uh, alignment zones how to see the uh, subsurface geology also and then with such a design and set up in the course of time they caused a lot of damage to the such a major investment if needed even we go for the geophysical studies once again the geoscientist in the mitigation of natural hazards like earthquake tsunami volcano landslides coastal erosion and urban flooding though we cannot predict and stop them definitely with the awareness they can be mitigated you have seen you are aware of this recent uh, flooding of a river in uttarakhand near chamoli and the major damage that happened to ntpc power projects some landslide took place and hit the hanging glacier and then uh, flooding of the oli ganga took place these are all the issues where a geologist advises offers his expert suggestion to the policy makers geologist also to act like a doctor not in the strict sense so here there are geogenic hazards problem some rocks are enriched with some elements cause some diseases here again the geoscientist takes up studies identifies it problems like dental and skeletal porous iodine deficiency disorders stress element imbalances 
arsenic contamination like in purulia district of west bengal lead contamination study in food was studied by the gsi in uh, kolkata it was published it was in uh, a news like this many 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 domains a geo scientist of gsi he is also there in geothermal studies identifying the geothermal springs monitoring them and with the ultimate goal of tapping the geothermal energy chit tatapani geothermal resource is the one is expected to be coming into limelight with the power generation if everything goes well geo scientist is also there in the polar studies like the icy continents like antarctica in such a difficult terrains studying the ice deposition the thickness the geology and the study of glaciers in the himalayan valley which is vital for the indian army guarding india because of whom we are so safe and sleeping comfortably geo scientist plays a vital role again in identifying the geo heritage sites and preservation of the natural and historical monuments gsi identified so many fossil parks geological monuments and maintenance of heritage sites like ajanta kellora caves gsi played a very key role and the government gets the revenue out of all these heritage sites and uh, monuments and maintenance is easy for the geologists it's because we know with what material geological material that monument is built as a constructed so that knowledge of geology is vital geo scientists in the global collaboration and assistance program we need to go out to the underdeveloped countries and extend our helping hand as a big brother in different domains yes gsi is ready always in the forefront and the geo scientists in search of a concealed mineral deposits here comes the geophysics playing a very important role as an important tool for targeting concealed deposits when integrated with the geology various surveys like magnetic resistivity em ip they are deployed as per the requirements that is the mineral commodity specific and these geophysical surveys include both the land and aerial surveys and instruments are fitted on board for marine surveys in the church for minerals in the seabed aerial surveys are utilized for rapid scan of the mineral potential areas to be followed by the ground surveys in detail and gsi also involves in the treasure hunt studies recently southern region with the help of dgs instruments supplied by the northern region has taken up the treasure hunt studies in the old fort in the karnu district of andhra pradesh the digging revealed laminated silver uh, coins plates and then ram grass for due to some reasons they have stopped the digging this is where the gsi geo scientist like a great soldier of the indian army is in the forefront any call he is there geo scientist in the national pan india programs like national geochemical mapping national geophysical mapping the another part of this geo science is the chemistry <coughs> geochemist a chemist fresh from the university joining the gsi need to understand the analysis of earth materials and uh, 
transform himself as a geochemist. Precision and dedication in analysis plays a very pivotal and crucial role in assessing the mineral potential of terrain, toxicity of affected soils. And GSI is equipped with advanced instruments like ICPMS, ICPS, XRD, XRF. On joining Training Institute, orient the fresh earth as suiting to the requirement. Geoscientist, as a paleontologist, geoscientist, as a lab expert in petrology, in mineral physics, in geochronology, in gemology, offering the technical consultancy. Geoscientist, ultimately, whatever the data acquired, process, and he needs to share with end users, with the stakeholders, ultimately for the benefit of the nation. Geoscientist, as a tra in training and capacity building, you are seeing now what the efforts made by the CHG Rao, DDC and HOG Training Institute, and his team of officials, ably supported by Mr. Biswajit, Dr. Biswas, and another young officials for conducting this type of excellent variation, first of its kind, on such mammoth scale, covering entire India from Jammu, Kashmir, far south, including Andaman and Nicobar Islands. GSI TI stands unique in offering the largest number of trainings in India free of cost, catering to the students. motto of excellent sharing. TI has selected international courses, high tech courses, 23 such courses, drawing the official uh, geoscientists from 71 countries with 316 participants and uh, anonymous courses with the collaboration of ISRO, 32 such courses benefiting uh, 529 participants. Applause to GSI TI. And at the end, the integrated approach is the need of the hour. Meeting the ever growing demands and uh, consonance with the nation's call of self reliance. A geologist, a geophysicist, a geochemist have to work hand in hand with a wonderful team spirit for the best output. Let me congratulate all the aspirants for choosing the geoscience as your career. Take the combined geosciences exam in all good spirits. Wish you all the best. Thank you all. And thank GSI TI once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Uh, thank you, respected. Thank you, respected Sri and Kutum Rao, sir. Yeah, okay. Retired Director General GSI. May I request? I request you. Say what of thanks to Kutumbra Gauru, sir. Please, sir. Thank you. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, you are audible, yeah. sir. Taking the privilege to offer from the of our heart serious gratitude to the most loved and general of geological sub of India. In Kutumbala, sir. We are privileged, I hope, all the participants to have you interacting with digital media. Put forward before us the role of a geoscientist in the growth of a civilization. Sir has also put forward before us. The task in the basket of a 
geoscientists. It is as a prelude of our program. Taking this as a motivational one for all the aspirants who want to have successfully first this combined geoscientific exam. Your word of encouragement, your word of motivation will go a long way forward in the career growth of each and every participant including us. You will be interacting with us as we'll come forward as and when we plead before you to mentor us, to mentor all the person in need so that all person leave with prosperity and tranquility. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind and gracious presence and giving us also, also the motivation in taking forward this previous program. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, Kutumbra Sab. In fact, uh, he is our mentor, and uh, we still we follow his suggestions and guidelines. Whenever we ask where, he always comes forward to offer his uh, suggestions and guidelines. And I profusely thank, on behalf of Ender GSAPA, to Sri and Kutumbra Sab, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. With our sincerest and deepest gratitude towards Sri N. Kutum Rao, sir, for sparing time to share his knowledge and his wisdom with the participant trainees, we will now move on to the next session on the agenda. We will have an e session on effective preparation for general awareness, which has become a part of the preliminary examination. So, let us start with the session on effective preparation before which I will be discussing about the plan of the examination. Allow before, me. Uh, before, before your comments, Nidhi, let me uh, take the opportunity to remind all our esteemed participants, some of you may be having this course from your the luxury of your bedroom, maybe from the drawing room, have the attire and posture and composer that is like of a classroom. Mind it that. In the entire country, the entire nation is looking at us. We must behave with proper dignity. Thank you, Nidhi. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, uh, this was from respected Sri Bishwajit Gangopadhyay, sir. Deputy Director General for RTD and FTC. It is requested all the parties. I want to the plan of the examination before I go ahead with the effective preparation for general studies. Allow me just one minute to start sharing the content. Thank you. The content becoming visible on your screens. Just a few moments. And we'll be discussing about the entire plan of examination for the UPSC combined geoscientist examination.
So now I hope presentation is visible on your screens. We are discussing regarding the effective preparation for the combined geoscientist examination. to all the participants for responding. Express our sincerest gratitude towards the Ministry of Mines, Government of India, respected Director General Geological Survey of India, respected Additional Director General and Training Manager, Geological Survey of India, and respected Head Mission 5, GSI Training Institute to help in conducting this particular virtual interactive session. Let us start first part of this session in which the objectives are to make the participants be aware regarding the plan of the examination. We are supposed to provide guidance regarding the entire plan of the examination, regarding the syllabus and the focus areas for preparation. We will discuss about the study and the reference material and we will also give certain tips for smart preparation for this particular examination. This particular session will be divided into two parts. Part one, I will discuss in detail about the examination pattern, the eligibility and the selection criteria. In part two, the discussion will be regarding preparation for general studies. Part two will be divided into eight different modules. Module one will deal with introduction to the general studies syllabus. Module two will deal with the specific subject, that is the first one, the current events of national and international importance. Module three will deal with history of India and Indian national movement part of the general studies syllabus. Module four will focus on the Indian and the world geography component. Module five will discuss on Indian polity and governance aspects. Module six will be on economic and social development. Module 7 will deal with certain general issues on environmental ecology, biodiversity and climate change. Module 8 will discuss about general science. Then we have interaction with the participants. May I request the participants to kindly be on mute? Because it will cause echo. All the participants, please be on mute. Thank you. Sir, you can speak to us. You can speak to us. 
If the participants do not meet, we will have no other alternative to close it. Yes, sir. No other alternative to close the session. Yes. For a few, we cannot be for the others. We want to force are forced to keep you out who are not unmuting. Thank you. The Union Hello. Public Service Commission of UPSC conducts a combined geoscientist examination for recruitment and selection to the post of geologist, geophysicist, and chemist in Group A services in Geological Survey of India. For the junior hydrogeologist, of Group A for the Central Groundwater Board. The selection is based on a competitive examination which will be held in three stages. The preliminary examination, which is going to be the stage one. The mains examination, which is the stage two, and the personality test or popularly known as interview session will be conducted as per the revised scheme, which is in function from 2020 onwards. Admission at all the stages of the examination will be purely provisional subject that the candidates will satisfy the prescribed eligibility conditions. Let us come to part one of the plan of the examination. The part one or stage one of the combined geoscientist preliminary examination is going to be a computer based objective paper. It will consist of 400 marks. Paper one will be related to general studies. The duration is two hours and the maximum marks for this paper are 100. Paper two will be as per the stream wise subject, which again is of two hours duration. However, the maximum marks are 300. Therefore, the candidates may kindly note that they have more marks They have more marks for the subject. The stream wise subjects will be for geology and hydrogeology for stream one. For stream two, it is the geophysics. For stream three, it is chemistry. May I request the participants to kindly make a note of the fact that there will be negative marking for any wrong answers provided in the preliminary multiple objective type test. Therefore, one third of the marks which have been allotted to a particular question will be deducted as a penalty if a wrong answer is provided. Therefore, I request the participants to kindly ensure that you are very much in cognizance of the correct answer before you pen down your choice. Because for unanswered questions, there will not be any penalty. Therefore, if you are not sure about the answer and you are also not able to work upon the elimination technique, which I will talk about later, to deduct the right answer, instead of getting a penalty of negative mark, 
it would be wise not to answer a particular question if you are not aware of the correct answer. Let us now move on to stage two of the combined geoscientist examination mains part. This particular part will be of conventional subjective paper. There are going to be three papers of 200 marks each. Therefore, the combined marks will be 600. Paper one, paper two and paper three, all the three subject papers will be of three hours duration and 200 marks each. Stream one will be of geology and hydrogeology. Stream two will be of geophysics papers. And for stream three, the participants will be appearing for the chemistry papers. Therefore, this particular mains written examination is extremely important because it also has a larger share of marks to ensure that the candidate enters the final merit list. The participants must give due consideration and preparation for the mains subjective examination for which they must go for a thorough study. The stage three of the examination is a personality test or interview. The marks allotted for this is 200. So needless to say, this is also an extremely important part to ensure your grading in the final merit list tally. Definitely please make sure that the marks which you get in the interview session will determine your ranking in the UPSC combined geoscientist examination merit list. And this seniority of your merit position will be there throughout your career in Geological Survey of India or Central Ground Water Board. So kindly ensure that you go thoroughly prepared for your personality test or interview. Let us now discuss about the eligibility criteria for appearing in this examination. The nationality of the candidate is the first criteria. The candidate must either be a bona fide citizen of India. He may also be a subject of Nepal, Bhutan, or a Tibetan refugee who has come to India before the 1st January 1962 and has an intention of permanently settling in India. Some other persons who are also allowed include a person of Indian origin. Please take a note, a person of Indian origin who has migrated from either Pakistan, Burma, Sri Lanka, East African countries like Kenya, Uganda, United Republic of Tanzania, Zambia, Malawi, Zaire, Ethiopia or Vietnam, again with the intention of permanently settling in India. So if you have this eligibility criteria, you are allowed to appear for the examination. Regarding the eligibility conditions relating to the age limit, let me ensure that for age limit, for the geologist and the hydrogeologist paper who are appearing for this particular post, for the geophysicist and the chemist in group A, you will be required to attain the age of 21 years but not that of 32 years 
as on the 1st of January, say 2021, if the examination is being conducted or whatever is the year of the examination, accordingly for that particular year of examination, the candidate must have attained the age of 21 years and not have attained the age of 22 years, that is 21 to 31, you will be eligible to appear for the examination. However, certain relaxation is also granted. For example, in the case of ex-servicemen or candidates belonging to the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe as mentioned in the constitution list, five years age relaxation is granted. So candidates belonging to the backward class, that is OBC category, three years, age relaxation is allowed for any members of the deaf, mute, blind or orthopedically disabled category in the physically handicapped category, 10 years of age relaxation is allowed. Please note the number of attempts is not limited. The age is here the important criteria. Regarding the educational qualifications, for geologist in group A in GSI, the candidates must have a master's degree in geological science, geology, applied geology or geo exploration, mineral exploration, engineering geology, earth sciences, marine geology, oceanography, coastal area studies, geological technology, petroleum geosciences or exploration or geophysical technology any of the geology and the allied subjects from a recognized university. For posting to junior hydrogeologist, scientist B post in Central Groundwater Board, the candidate must possess a master's degree in geology, applied geology or marine geology from a recognized university. When you appear for the preliminary or stage one examination, only the candidates who will qualify this stage will be eligible to write the mains or stage two examination. Please make a note that the candidates which are called for the mains examination will be around six to seven times of the number of vacancies for that particular post in that specific year. So in whichever year, as the number of posts are there, six to seven times of that post, the candidates who qualify the preliminary examination will be asked to appear for the mains examination. Again, in order to qualify in the written examination, a candidate must secure the minimum qualifying marks which have been allocated for each paper. They must also secure the total marks which should be more than the cutoff which has been decided for that particular paper on that particular aspect. The candidates who qualify the mains examination will then be allowed to appear for the interview. The final merit list which will be prepared will be a combined effort which the candidate has put in the preliminary mains as well as the interview part of the examination. Therefore, it is extremely important that you put in your best efforts and give your best shot at the preliminary examination because the marks will be counted for determining the position in the merit list. Give your best shot at the written stage two mains examination as well as the interview or personality test. This will ensure your success and I'm sure that you will come out with flying colors in this UPSC combined 
geoscientist examination. With this, we have completed part one of this session, which was dealing with the plan of the examination and the eligibility criteria which is required to appear for this particular examination. We will now go ahead and prepare and see how we can go for the effective preparation for the general studies paper. In this context, we will be having a particular session which is exclusively dedicated to the preparation of general studies. The learning objectives for this session are to provide guidance regarding the syllabus and the focus areas for general studies preparation. The study and the reference material which are required for all the seven topics which are mentioned in the general studies paper. We will also have certain tips for GS preparation. Here, may I require that candidates pay adequate attention to all the aspects which are of utmost important to ensure a leverage as far as the preparation for general studies is concerned. We make a note that the candidates will be available for appearing for this general studies paper and they need to ensure getting more marks than the counterparts so that they have a success ratio. So here we will be going ahead and we will be studying as to how you can get a distinct advantage for preparation and this will ensure that you have a better mark scoring capacity as compared to other candidates. So let us now start one by one. The first aspect will be to get introduced to the general studies paper, the syllabus part. In the syllabus, it is mentioned that one must be aware about the current events which have national as well as international importance in the scenario. One must be thorough with the history of India and specifically the Indian national movement which was to attain the freedom for India. A candidate should have knowledge for the Indian as well as world geography as far as the A moment, please. Just give me a second, sir.
Is it fine now, sir? Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much to all of you for responding, Shilpa, Sonam, Gora, Vashok. Thank you all. Thank you all. So uh, let us uh, start ahead. Yeah. So I was talking about the Constitution of India. As expected from an educated person who has not made a special study of political science subject, but being an educated, responsible citizen of a democratic country, the largest democracy in the world, he or she should have a specific knowledge about the political system, the Panchati Raj, the various public policies which are prepared from time to time by the government of India for the benefit of the people, the rights of the people, and of course their duties also. The next expectancy of the commission is that one should be thorough with the economic and social development aspects of the country. Therefore, the various economical, uh, you know, the challenges being faced by the Indian economy, the coping measures, the strides, the success, and various schemes in the social development sector, they should be taken care of. General issues on environmental ecology, biodiversity, climate change, greenhouse gases, chlorofluorocarbons, ozone holes, all these kind of uh, general environmental issues a person should be aware of. And of course, general science. You should be aware of the basic principles of physics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, the latest inventions, the latest discoveries in the field of scientific technology development. So you should be thorough with all these aspects. Once we are aware of the syllabus of general studies, let us now take each topic in much more detail one by one. So first is the current events of national and international importance. These current events are I will give certain suggestions and provide guidance as to how one can prepare for the general studies paper. However, the material which is available for the preparation of general studies in the market is quite exhaustive and also easily available. So there will not be much problem as far as the general studies for current events preparation is concerned, if a candidate follows the advice of reading a minimum of two national dailies, especially the editorial part in which all the important national and international events are discussed in a threadbare manner. They are discussed from the perspectives of a particular nation as well as the impact on the international community. Therefore, reading two national newspapers daily, especially the editorials, for example, the Hindu, the Indian Express, Times of India, whatever you are reading, whatever you are comfortable, a newspaper which covers both the national as well as the international news segment, including the sports component, the awards can be taken up. Also, you are required to listen news 
on television channels or some mobile apps whenever you are listening to news channels or having or reading the news on your apps it will keep you abreast of all the development are available easily as i already said the exhaustive uh, coverage is taken in a number of publications but for suggested limited reading i may suggest lucent general knowledge book as i have shown here may i suggest health publication general knowledge book so you can take any one of them and it will definitely give an exhaustive coverage for the major current events of national and international events certain current affair magazines which are available easily you can subscribe to them for example the chronicle or the pratyogita darpan you can also go for regional language magazines if you are working in some other language then definitely you can take the hindi version of them or the tamil or the telugu so these are some good magazines and reference books which can be used for preparing for the current events which have cast an important influence on the past uh, year for which uh, the questions will be asked then there are certain online sources in this lucent general knowledge book you need not purchase it's not required the same book is available as a free pdf download so you can just go to lucent general knowledge sslive.co.in and you will be able to download the book and you can read it so it's not required to spend a lot you can simply you know just download the book and read it i will request the participants to practice mock test on current affairs and you can go to www.edutos.com or crack you app or exam veda app and these will give you a uh, certain you know uh, questions like uh, mcq types and these uh, you can try to practice on and off on a monthly basis so that you keep yourself abreast of the latest events now once we have understood about uh, the uh, various uh, segments where you can study and the kind of reference material online as well as offline you can have let us have a look at some of the sample questions which can be asked from this segment and see how uh, we will be able to tackle them and these are some of the sample questions for example surya kiran is a joint military exercise between the militaries of india and so you need to have a thorough reading of the newspaper to understand that india connect uh, you know conducted a joint military exercise with nepal which was named as surya kiran so the another question for example these are the sample questions which have been taken from the upsc combined geo scientist examination of 2020 and 2021 which was conducted recently so the indian astronomical union has named an asteroid after the singer what is that singer so you have options and uh, it is uh, in fact pandit jasraj after whose name it has come so these kind of news they keep on coming in the newspaper and they'll also be available in the magazines current affairs and gk book football team of which country was defeated by the indian team to win the south asian football federation under 18 championship and who is the first woman officer of the indian air force to be appointed as the flight commander so you should know that chalisa dhami is the to grace the honor so these are the kind of questions you expect coming to the second part that is history of india and the indian national movement so uh, when we talking about history of india see as an educated indian it's it's extremely important that uh, you make note of the fact that uh, we must be aware of our proud and rich 
our history and especially the freedom struggle of India in the uh, which is covered in the Indian national movement part. So for the history, you must be, you know, aware of the entire ancient history of India, starting from the Indus Valley civilization, all the Mauryan Empire, Gupta Empire, all uh, ancient stuff with the literature also who wrote them. The medieval history of India with the Mughals, should, you should have a thorough knowledge of the medieval history. I would suggest to give a good focus on the administrative developments in India during the British period from 1650 to 1857, that is uh, pre uh, the 1857 rebellion, or as somebody calls it as the first war of Indian independence. So uh, before that, how the administrative development was there and after 1857 rebellion, when the British crown took over the administration from the East India Company for the developments later on. So the entire national movement from 1800 culminating in the final freedom of our great country that is in 1947, the entire Indian national movement, the various administrative laws and developments, and especially, you know, uh, post 1919, the freedom movement, the struggle, the various movements which were taken up under the able guidance of the father of the nation, uh, respected Sri Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi. And there are a number of frequently FAQ, I mean the frequently asked questions from 1919 to 1947 part of the Indian national struggle. And for this part, you can definitely make a study from the NCRT textbooks. Now, let me repeat this. I will be telling this repeatedly that uh, the NCRT books from the 9th to the 12th standard are the basic reference material where you are supposed to make a study. For NCRT, uh, is specifically, if you talk about national movement part, class 12 uh, modern India book, jo hai, that is very good to help you in these uh, last three parts, you know, 1800 to 1947, uh, the uh, latest part of the freedom struggle. Uh, it is good. So kindly make a thorough study of the NCRT textbooks from 9 to 12. This is your basic material. So it will prepare a foundation. Now, based on this foundation, you can keep on developing your skills, your information, your knowledge. If you want to do further studies, if you want to do further study on a specific aspect, then you can go for India's Struggle for Independence by Bipin Chandra. It's an excellent book. You can go for the Spectrum book for a brief history of modern India by Rajiv Wahid. Uh, this uh, will help you to give more insight into the intricacies of the various, uh, you know, uh, the movements taken up by the Indian National Congress during the freedom struggle. The various sessions of the Indian National Congress and what were the main uh, objectives, the main resolutions passed in those sessions? These are also extremely important. Now, let us have a look at some of the questions which may be asked in this segment. For example, you can have some questions from the ancient history part, like life-size terracotta images of Ganga and Yamuna from 300 to 600 AD have been found at. So, uh, you have certain options. It's actually Achi Chhatra in Uttar Pradesh. Which group is known as the no changer because when the Congress decided to contest elections for entry into the legislative council, then there were certain uh, leaders under uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi who were saying that, okay, let us not uh, enter into the legislative council uh, because still the Britishers are ruling the country. So who are known as the no changers? Then, as I said, the sessions of the Indian National Congress, the Lahore session, which was held in 1929, is famous for what? So the sessions of the Indian National Congress, the location and the resolution passed. These are also very important segments. So here, actually, it was 1929 Lahore session. They adopted the Poorna Swaraj as the objective of the Congress. So this was a resolution. Then in the medieval history, so you see that you have ancient history questions, medieval history questions, then Indian national movement and freedom struggle questions. So there will be a combination uh, of questions. So let us look at this one. 
Jahangir got impressed by the Turkish fluency of which European traveler and made him a mansabdar of 400 sabar. So it was William Hawkins who was very fluent in Turkish. So uh, Jahangir was really impressed. So these are the kind of things sometimes the questions may be such that uh, you may not be quite aware of uh, many of them, but uh, okay. Nevertheless, uh, you should be aware of uh, the general parts of the history, uh, especially the national movement. Now coming to the Indian and world geography part. See, geography is going to be of specific importance because you are appearing for a combined geoscientist examination. So definitely uh, you expect that not senso stricto geology, but nevertheless, the Indian and the world geography will be given due importance. So yes, uh, definitely a important aspect rahega aapke preparation ka where you are required to have a thorough understanding so definitely uh, you make uh, arrangements for a proper study of this so talking about the indian and the world geography uh, you should be aware of the indian geography the physiographic divisions the political divisions the states the important cities their importance, the economic importance, the social development sector, the social demography of India and also of the world, the physical divisions of India and that of the world, the important rivers, lakes, mountain chains, specific uh, interest of geographic locations, the geomorphology, the economic geography, so all these are going to be of a specific importance. Um, sometimes the certain questions regarding the origin of the earth, the universe, the specific uh, structure of the earth, the internal structure of the earth, the various uh, parts, the discontinuities, the occurrence of certain elements in specific uh, layers of the earth's interior. So all these kind of questions are asked as far as the a geography is concerned. The reference material which you can use definitely the NCRT textbooks from 9th to 11th are going to form the basis. Uh, may I request the participants to be on mute please? We are getting a lot of background sound. Thank you. Thank you so much for responding. So as I said the NCRT textbooks from 9 to 12 are going to find the foundation. It is your foundation for particular study. And on this foundation, you will be building up the further uh, as reference material if you are using. So you can have this. Let us go to some of the sample questions for the Indian geography. A spit can be defined as and there are certain, so it is basically a definition uh, linked question. So a spit can be defined as a beach of sand, which is linked at one end to the land and it is just extending into the sea. Uh, which of the following states does not share boundary with Chhattisgarh? So this particular kind of question involves that you should be thorough with the map of India, especially the political map of India where the state boundaries are marked. So this will help you to understand Chhattisgarh is not in proximity and it is not sharing boundary with which particular Indian state. Which of the following statement about Marajo Island is not correct. So Marajo Island is one of the largest uh, fluvial island which is located in uh, Brazil in the Amazon River. So here, see one place you are having some geomorphology question, physical geography, geomorphology. And here you are having a question related to Indian geography. Now this is a representative question related to world geography. In world geography, you know, Marajo Island, if you are aware of it, then uh, you will understand uh, to answer this question. Now supposing you have a question on which Asian country is characterized by negative population growth. So here again, it is talking about the demography. So the demography, the social uh, setup, the economic development, the physical 
part of the Indian and world geography, the geomorphological aspects, like you have a very good book by Shravendra Singh. So you can study that also for detail. But nevertheless, the NCRT text of geography from 9 to 12 is good enough to answer the geomorphological Indian and world geography questions. Let us come to another part that is Indian polity and governance. So as I said, being a proud citizen of one of the world's largest democracy and a center of continuous political developments where all the uh, sessions uh, and uh, the parliament sessions are recorded, they are of great interest. So being a part of that country, it's imperative that you make a thorough study of the entire political system which governs our country and how this particular governance is put into effect. The pillars of democracy in India run by the constitution of India. So you should have an information on this part. Let us see in more detail. You should give special focus on certain segments of Indian polity. For example, the Indian parliament. So you should know the composition of the parliament. And you should know how and what functions are performed by the different um, components of the Indian parliament. What are the various rights and duties? And what are the main functional parameters as to which uh, the segregation of the central subjects, the state subjects are decided as per the list of uh, subjects mentioned in the Indian constitution. Coming to public policy. See, public policy is something which, you know, keeps on changing as the governments change. They have their own uh, particular uh, important agenda and prerogatives. They have their vision how to develop the country, to take the country to which level, what will be the direction of development, what will be the priority areas, how to ensure the well-being and goodness, how to ensure the success of democratic institutions, how to ensure the well-being safety, health, security, prosperity of the citizens of India. So you should be aware about the public policies which are uh, brought out by the government from time to time. The Panchayati Raj institution is a very unique and very important pillar, I should say, on which the success of a peaceful countryside, the success of peaceful resolution and proper development for the Gram uh, Panchayats and uh, Gram Sabha taking an active part in it, uh, the proper development of the village people of India is concerned. And that is where the real India lives. The real India lives in the villages of India. And the maximum population is in the villages of India. The requirement for development, the requirement for carrying out government policies to ensure that the benefits of governance reach to the last and the every citizen, the lowest in the hierarchy, to every person in the remotest place in India. It may be the remote terrains of Ladakh and Northeast. It may be the forest uh, inhabited by certain tribes. It may be a very remote village which has yet to get connected with the internet revolution or a proper road, it has to reach to the last person. So Panchayati Raj institutions are instrumental in taking the policies 
from new delhi to the remotest village in india and definitely these are very important part of the questions the constitution of india is another important part the solemn book by which the indian uh, democracy is run according to which the governance is carried out in the country certain important segments are the fundamental rights of the citizens of india the directive principles of state policy as to how the state has to function as a welfare state ensuring prosperity well being and development of citizens of india in social moral economic spheres taking due care of the development of art culture and heritage very rich heritage of india the fundamental duties which are required to be performed by the citizens of india for this again i would recommend ncert books from 9 to 12th level for polity if you want to go for further studies you can study a book by m lakshmi kant on indian polity so you know indian polity by m lakshmi kant parliament by subhash kashyap our parliament by subhash kashyap and m lakshmi kant on indian polity then uh, the constitution of india by p m bakshi these are some of the books you can refer if you want to have more in depth understanding and study regarding the indian polity part may I request the participants to uh, please put it on mute thank you so pm bakshi constitution of india indian polity by m lakshmi kant and our parliament by subhash kashyap these latest editions these are very good if you want an in depth study provided you have the time otherwise ncert textbooks are the very basic books they can definitely be utilized let us see some of the sample questions which of the following articles of indian constitution deals with uniform civil code so since the uniform civil code why it should be implemented whether it should be implemented this all is a news so you expect a question so please remember that the questions on indian polity indian history geography world geography are also related to certain news headlines certain events certain things which have been recently discussed and that's why they have come into limelight and therefore they are given due importance and this is the reason that you have this question in your paper so even the history and the political science questions can be related to current events another question which committee on panchayati raj recommended a two tier system of panchayati raj so initially it was the balwant rai mehta committee who gave a three tier system and then later on the ashok mehta committee recommended a two tier system so you have to be aware of uh, the various developments in panchayati raj another question is who determines if a particular subject matter is in under which residuary power of the parliament so actually you have the entire list of subjects which can be taken up by the center and by the states and there are certain subjects which may not be there mentioned in the list and it will be the supreme court of india who will be deciding as to who will uh, be having the residuary power regarding that particular subject another question is who among the following appoints the advocate general for a state so if you know the various constitution post and who appoints them then accordingly you will be aware that the governor of the state is responsible for uh, uh, deputing and getting uh, the appointment of the advocate general for that particular state if you are aware of the constitution if you are aware of various articles 
the developments in the Panchayati Raj, if you are aware of uh, the functions of the parliament and the constitutional post and commissions like the election commission, then the post like the advocate general, the attorney general, the comptroller and auditor general or the CAG as we usually call it. So if you are aware of this, you will be able to successfully answer the questions in Indian polity. Now we'll come to the economic and social development. In economic and social development part, we have to be aware and uh, about the economic uh, development of the country which has taken place and how uh, the various social sector schemes are put by the government of India for which segment they are required and how they can be taken up for a proper understanding and for proper development of the uh, citizens of India. Economic and social development, the entire concept of sustainable development, where you ensure uh, development of uh, economy along with providing uh, jobs to the needy people and ensuring, uh, you know, due respect to the ecology, the environmental considerations, the poverty issues, the inclusion, uh, you know, bringing all the communities for the development, the demographics and the social sector initiatives, you should take care. For this, you can refer to Hindu. There is a special coverage on economic policies and social issues in the Hindu newspaper. In the economic times, you will have special focus on the economics of whatever is up to date. Then economic survey by uh, which is published every year will give you a glimpse of the current scenario and the status of the economy of India. There are two magazines which are published, Kurushetra and Yojana. These Kurushetra and Yojana magazines, which I have shown here on the screen, and the economic survey I have shown here. So economic survey and Kurushetra, they will help you to get a glimpse of the various social sector initiative schemes by the government of India. So these social welfare schemes, should, uh, you should have a thorough knowledge so that uh, you know you are in a better position to understand uh, the various uh, social sector initiatives for the welfare of the people whether the government of india is fulling, uh, fulfilling its role as a welfare state let us see some of the questions which can be asked of the is not to about deen dayal antyodaya yojana so again this is dealing with the social sector scheme the centrally sponsored scheme on bharat is a national health insurance system for what sector of people so if you have read about the scheme on the you know yojana or even in the newspaper you will know it is for the poor and the vulnerable sections the program of swachh bharat mission is implemented by which ministry is meant for which segments so it is the unorganized work so these kind of questions, the schemes, the economic position. May I request the participants to be good, please? Uh, may I request? Please follow the minimum guidelines. Baba Bhat Malika Juna, please mute. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. So uh, now let us come to the general issues on environment, ecology, biodiversity, and climate change. So in this, you can expect topics like environmental pollution issues, the concepts of ecology, food chain, and niche, the biodiversity, the distinct flora and fauna which occupy specific climatic zones, the tundra zone, the taiga zone, the tropical zone, the permafrost regions, what is the distinct flora and fauna, 
the conservation of natural resources, certain endangered species, sanctuaries, where are they located, national parks, location, then the issues concerning global warming and climate change and the greenhouse effect. So these are the ma major segments from which the questions on gen, uh, you know, environment, biodiversity and climate change are generally asked. So again, I would be referring uh, to the NCRT text. Certain where are the parks? These topics and the issues like the fourteen, fifteen, and six. So again, we will chapters because it's environmental issues. So these are the chapters which are very good. And apart from this, if you are going through Lucent or Arihan General Knowledge Book, they have a comprehensive coverage on the ecology and biodiversity chapters. So you can go through them. Uh, let us have a look at some of the sample questions which we can expect. For example, thermal pollution is what kind of uh, an issue, whether it is an atmospheric warming or heat waves or heat trapped in the atmosphere. So you have certain options. And if you know what thermal pollution is, you'll be able to answer it correctly. Into the atmosphere or ocean. Then another question is like, which one among the following is true about the ozone hole? So definitely ozone hole is the loss of the stratospheric ozone over Antarctica. The depletion is concentrated. So you can see this is coming in both in 2020, 21. The ozone hole question is being repeated. So, you know, whatever is there in the current events, whatever parts of ecology, environmental issues, biodiversity issues are there in current are also asked in the section on environmental geology and ecology. So which of the following ecosystem has the highest net primary productivity? So this is all available in NCRT textbooks. Once you have a basic knowledge of the uh, environmental problems and the eco zones into which the world has been divided, you are successfully able to answer that it is the rainforest which are having the highest net primary productivity. Coming to the last segment, which is science and technology, I would recommend that you of the scientific discoveries, the Nobel Awards, in which field they have been given. So that will also be a part of the current and it will also be a part of the certain um, science questions. You should know uh, about the advanced technology innovations which are in place. Apart from that, the fundamental concepts of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics should also be known to the participants. So here also in this segment, whatever are the latest innovations, whatever segment or aspect of any particular scientific principle in place in the recent year has been in news in the recent year that particular aspect will definitely be asked it will be related somehow to those principles which have been in news so reference your ncrt textbooks from uh, of science from 9 to 12 and if you are referring to lucent you have a free download pdf of lucent available or spectrum, then they have a very good general science segment in which the fundamental concepts of all the branches of science have been covered. In Hindu newspaper, you have a specific segment of science and technology. So that will keep you abreast of the latest concepts of science which are being in use for uh, new innovative technology. So let us see some of the sample questions. For example, a chemosynthetic bacteria found in submarine volcano vents is feeding on. So there are options and you know it's hydrogen sulfide, which basic physics with increase in the length of the pendulum. Tincture of iodine, so you have something related to chemistry. 
and then what is not true regarding infrared radiation infrared radiation ke bare mein kya sach nahi hai so these kind of questions so some basic concepts of physics chemistry and biology and some latest innovations is something which you can expect in the science and uh, if you have read about the electromagnetic spectrum and infrared radiations then you will know the correct answer so if you are thorough with the subject definitely these questions can be easily answered as a summary of whatever we have discussed from the beginning of the general study preparation session i would say that kindly practice mock test and multiple choice questions from the gk books which i have told the magazines like chronicle are also publishing a lot of questions and you have the previous year question papers of general studies also of the combined geoscientist examination also of any other examination so you can practice from them keep abreast of the current events work on both speed and accuracy so that you are able to finish the paper on time so the entire question paper first so that you are able to understand how much of the questions you are familiar with the answer carefully read all the options because you have negative marking then you can discuss about the elimination technique if there are four options if you don't know which one is correct you at least know which is not correct so if you are able to eliminate three options out of four then obviously the fourth one is the correct one and keep the negative marking in mind therefore please ensure that if you are not uh, you know knowing the correct answer please do not go for uh, you know outright guess work try to make an intelligent informed factual selection of the right answer thank you with this i would like to end the session Uh, as far as the my discussion part for this is concerned so i just hope this particular uh, session and suggestions regarding preparation of general study will be useful to the participants in cracking the exam thank you so much you can take up a few questions uh, yes sir i was uh, so uh, thank you so much for listening attentively may i request the participants if you have any particular query related to this part i can take a few questions and we will also be having a dedicated interactive session tomorrow so later on also if you want either just now or later on i welcome the participants with your queries which i will be ready to answer uh i must thank all the participants in fact for your patience and attention excuse me ma'am yes sir ma'am i have a uh, one question ma'am uh, ji boli ma'am uh, we have to go through the old ncert or the new ncert there is a confusion means in i have gone through many means uh, i know i <laughs> suggestions i but i got saying, your uh, Yes, yes i got your point sir uh, thank you uh, so much for asking because it will be uh, the same for all the participants so aman ji i also have the same opinion as far as the facts are concerned they have been dealt in a more thorough manner and in a more in depth manner the old editions of ncert however when you are talking about because it depends on subjects when you are talking about subjects like science where a lot of uh, information is required in the latest aspect okay then if you talk about social development if you talk about human geography if you talk about economic geography if you talk about the latest political uh, changes which have taken place so these kind of latest updates you have to refer the latest ncert text because they are updated now if you talk about history history of india now history is something uh, which remains same only the expression may change 
so the expression is more in depth it is more detailed in the old text because they are uh, as you can see they have dealt with each topic in an in depth and more thorough manner there is more elaboration on every topic and that is the reason many of the people suggest that especially for india and ancient history and medieval history and also the national freedom struggle try to go for the old text because they are more elaborate and therefore i will suggest that for the subjects like science and human geography and political science try to be the new one for history you can go for the old one i hope you are satisfied sir thank you so much yes ma'am and means that for the dynamic topic we have to go through for the new books and the static part we, we need to stick to the old ones okay and one more question ma'am regarding the current affairs means if i am uh, going to give the exam on uh, 2000 uh, 2022 means uh, then uh, from uh, when uh, ma'am i need to start the preparing for the current affairs if i going to give the exam next year sir the current affairs are not affected by the current affairs because they are going to give the exam on 2022 so next year Uh, if you talk about history if you talk about certain aspects of geography like physiography geomorphology physical divisions of the country of the world rivers lakes you know all these kind of things then uh, that will be the same but definitely the current events are more focused on the previous year for example if you are appearing in 20 Uh, 22 right 2022 if you are appearing so the entire events from january 21 up to your exam in 22 will be the focus area from which the current events will be asked mostly but it's not uh, you know you cannot make a general statement regarding this the reason being is it is up to the paper setter we can only talk about the trend so the point is that regarding history basic concepts of science the basic geography the basic uh, constitution of india the political system and the various commissions all this will remain static so you can start preparing the current events definitely it's not that they will not ask because the trend is that because uh up to today the current event has already been asked in this uh, recent combined geo scientist examination so you generally expect the current event of the previous one year will be more in focus more in focus i am saying and only for the current section the rest you have to be thorough so there is uh, nothing like they cannot ask you something about the past olympic games they can definitely ask you but for the current event section it will be restricted to one year i hope it is answered sir thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir thank you nidhi i think we can take one more question and then uh, good afternoon ma'am yes, my name is shiva sis i'm from kolkata ma'am am i audible Uh, yes. my question is uh, that uh, in the preliminary examination is there a separate cut off for the general studies paper like we see in the civil service paper 2 or the cut off is made by adding either of the papers 100 plus 300 uh see uh, here uh, as per the notification of the examination is concerned they have said that they have a cut off uh, for each paper so let us uh, let us uh, expect that there will definitely be some cut off for the general studies paper also as per the notification okay and uh, uh, see every year every year for example the notification uh, which is presently available is for 2021 2021 uh, examination so now for the uh, next year like supposing if the notification comes out of 2022 examination again they will mention so this is definitely mentioned uh, and uh, one needs to thoroughly go through the uh, advertisement which the upsc gives in the announcement for a particular examination in which they clearly mention they will not mention what the cut off is but they will definitely mention that they what kind of pattern they will follow for the selection so the selection criteria which i have shared now is based on the notification for 2021 examination and for 2022 examination again the commission will publish a selection criteria and uh, we have to keep ourselves abreast of the latest announcements 
and if there are any changes that need to be taken care of thank you sir thank you nidhi for a wonderful session i think uh, uh, we can take a quick uh, biological break and uh, back hello uh, maybe within 5 minutes uh, where uh, yes uh, we are ending this particular session yes please a quick questions we can take hello ma'am uh, good morning ma'am uh, uh, i am from kolkata i would like to say that uh, is there any uh, free arch uh, archive for the book or anything else uh, free free archive free archive yes archive of, of the books archive of the books yes ma'am <laughs> sir okay, actually <laughs> that i think it's better that if you uh, go for uh, the you know go for the books uh, either online or if you are having those books purchase and i think you need to have a collection of them on your own if you want to study uh, because uh, the reference material especially for the current will keep on changing as i said and the ncrts have also been revised so i think you should go for uh, this particular aspect keeping it in mind rather than going for a pre archive of that okay okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Sir, sir i have a single question i have an interactive session sir can Actually, we take yeah, it yeah yeah we'll take it up in the yeah yes as you rightly pointed out we have a interview uh a uh, sorry uh, interactive session tomorrow uh, afternoon uh, where all the newly uh, joined officers of gsi will be answering the question along with our faculty members nidhi ma'am and also there so we'll clear all your doubts uh, keep your questions ready for tomorrow's session in meanwhile uh, uh, we'll sharply join within 3 minutes with our chemistry team at uh, who have joined recently cleared uh, upsc 2019 and uh, uh, will be sharing uh, the technical details the especially required for uh, preparation of the uh, chemistry uh, paper please be online and come back within 2 minutes in the meanwhile uh, i request our uh, uh, officers from uh, chemistry uh, stream uh, uh, mr kots kosta vajra ms paramita uh, sorry pranamita ms nanika uh, ms uh, mr uh, and let me name excuse me sorry for that uh, uh, for uh, be uh, be online be ready welcome thank you sir we start within a couple of minutes when will we will asking when the geology session starts yes sir geology session will start in the afternoon we have to distinguish speakers from uh, 3 to 330 and 332 Four after that geology will start. Okay. And uh, tomorrow morning we will be having a, a detailed discussion on geophysics, and followed by again a detailed discussion by Nidhi Madam on how to prepare for the exam, uh, especially the mains part. And then there will be uh, uh, interactive session on one of the interviewer uh, who, who who happened to be. Uh, Uh, in the uh, interview board of upsc for a couple of years so he will be telling his perception as an interviewer uh, and then followed by we'll have the uh, uh, 12 officers who have recently cleared the upsc uh, and uh, will be taking your questions then we can interact with them 
maybe uh, in group. Uh, uh, so first up, uh, uh, le uh, let me uh, introduce uh, your team. Uh, uh, here you can see on this screen, Mr. Kostab Hazra. Now, uh, along with him, uh, Kostab, can you share your PPT uh, uh, screen? Yeah, uh, uh, sure. Along with him is joined by Ms. Pranamita, Ms. Nanika, and uh, Mr. Chirushati Guha. So uh, you can see them uh, immediately. Uh, and here they will talk about the preparation for the prelims and mains uh, of the chemistry paper that you have. I have already confirmed somebody is reaffirming it whether geology time, uh, geology session time in afternoon. Uh, sorry, I cannot give you exact time in the geology session uh, because uh, after the uh, uh, distinguished speaker uh, uh, finish their session, we'll start the geology session. Uh, you have the four speakers, uh, the four toppers of UPSC uh, uh, 2019 batch for the chemistry stream. Uh, the cost, Mr. Kosta Mujra, uh, Ms. Pranamita Mukherjee, Ms. Nani Kabandabad, and Mr. Chirajuti Guha, who will be sharing their uh, uh, tidbits on how to prepare for the exam. Uh, soon. Uh, now over to you, Kostov. Please share your PP. Uh, bring it to your PPT mode and session starts now. And you can take your questions uh, maybe after a certain week of time. Okay, please go ahead. All the best. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for the kind introduction. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kostov Hajra, a chemist in the Geological Survey of India. And today I, along with three of my fellow colleagues, Pranamita Mukherjee, Noanika Bandhapadai, and Chirojuti Goho will be sharing with you our experience of preparing for the combined geoscientist examination. Uh, now, uh, the par participants must be aware of the fact that the discipline of chemistry is broadly divided into four sub-disciplines, uh, namely that of inorganic, physical, analytical, and organic. Each one of us will be taking you through the preparation of one of these sections. I'll be uh, talking about how to effectively prepare for the inorganic chemistry portion, and uh, my fellow colleagues would be taking up the other sessions. Um, so let us start the discussion on how to prepare for inorganic chemistry. Now from 2020 onwards, uh, there's been a change in the examination pattern. There's an additional prelims paper to be qualified before proceeding uh, to the main paper. In the prelims, uh, it consists of 100 marks of general studies, the preparation for which has been beautifully discussed by uh, Nidhi Mishra, ma'am. Um, and there's an additional uh, chemistry paper in the MCQ format um, for the prelims. And for, as for the mints, there are three papers, each of 200 marks, of which I'll be uh, talking about the preparation for paper one only, that is inorganic chemistry. So I'll be discussing with you how to effectively prepare for the inorganic part uh, for both the prelims and mains. Uh, now, as for the um, format of the prelims paper, for the chemistry paper, there are 120 questions to be answered in two hours. About one third of the questions are from inorganic chemistry. Now, what I've done here is I have jotted down the important topics chapter-wise to be given importance for prelims. And these questions have been jotted down, jotted down, keeping in mind the trend seen in other national level exams in the MCQ format, like the CSI net exam or GET exams. So let us uh, start uh, the topic-wise discussion. So the first important topic uh, for the prelims is the topic of chemical periodicity. Now the following uh, uh, topics from this chapter are to be given a special importance. The first topic is the electronic configuration of the elements. Now, special emphasis should be given on electronic configurations that flout the Aufbau principle. For example, the configuration of copper or the configuration of chromium. Uh, the next important topic from this chapter is the wave function of hydrogen atom and its dependence on the different quantum numbers. Uh, again, another important topic, which is the most important topic for this chapter, is the trend in the uh, physical and chemical properties, like trend in ionization potential, atomic sizes, trend in the electro 
affinity, etc. Another important topic is the uh, uh, nature of uh, oxides, uh, whether they are acidic or basic from this chapter. Now, every once in a while, they also ask questions uh, to check how up to date you are with the recent advances in the field. Uh, for example, one of the years they asked the name of the heaviest element of the periodic table. Now, such questions are uh, rare, but it is good to be thorough with uh, these topics as well. Now, as for the preparation of this portion, I have mostly consulted uh, for the uh, basic part, uh, the book by A.K. Dash, uh, Volume 1. Uh, it contains, it covers the chapter in great detail. Another book that I have consulted is the book by DMP Mingos, Essential Trends in Inorganic Chemistry. As for the MCQ portion, I've mostly consulted the book by Arihan and Ufkars for the CSIR net preparation. Now, one suggestion from me would be when you are preparing for claims, since you have to prepare for a lot of topics in a very short amount of time, uh, these MCQ books, they come with short notes on the topic wise, on the chapter wise topics uh, for each chapter. So going through those uh, notes um, help you to get a hang of the subject in a short period of time, which I find really helpful when you are preparing for the prelims. Uh, the next important chapter for prelims is the chemical bonding and structure. This uh, chapter is broadly uh, sectioned into three uh, um, major uh, portions, ionic bonding, covalent bonding, and coordinate bonding. Uh, the portion of, uh, from the portion of ionic bonding, uh, the uh, portion of radius ratio rule, and uh, what kind of radius ratio give rise to what kind of coordination, such questions can be expected. Another important topic from this chapter is the color due to lattice defect. From the covalent bonding portion, which is a broader portion to be covered, uh, Fajan's rule and its applications, like uh, the arranging uh, carbonates in terms of their thermal stability, such questions can be expected. Also expected, uh, the molecular structures based on the plan model. Now, uh, uh, while answering these questions, you won't have enough time to work out the structures from first principle. So it is uh, uh, suggested that uh, you should uh, practice as many MCQs on these topics as possible, so that the moment you see the structure, uh, see the molecule, the structure pops up in your head. Another important topic is uh, the nature of hybridization of different compounds and bond length related to it. From the MO theory portion, questions are expected uh, on the order of bond order, like arranging a number of compounds uh, in the increasing or decreasing order of bond order. Questions from resonance, uh, like how many resonating structures are possible for a given compound, these are also expected. From the coordinate bonding portion, questions uh, are expected, like you'll be asked to identify uh, which compound is a high spin uh, complex and which one is a low spin complex based on the ligand type and the uh, charge on the metal ion. Uh, questions from VBT, like uh, identifying inner orbital complex, outer orbital complex, their mode of hybridization and their structures. These are also expected. Uh, you can be told to calculate the spin only magnetic moment value for complexes. Such questions are again expected. UPC nomenclature of coordinate compound, that is another important topic from here. Uh, you should be thorough with the different types of uh, common ligands and their densities because questions can be asked. A number of ligands can be given and uh, their densities could be asked. Questions from geometrical and optical isomerism. Questions can be asked like how many geometrical isomers are possible for a given complex. As for the optical isomerism portion, which compound is optically active, which one is not, such questions are again expected. As for the preparation of the uh, foundations, I've mostly consulted the book by J.D. Lee because it comes with these three portions in three separate chapters. It covers the topic in great detail. As for the MCQ, I'll refer to the same two books as I mentioned before. The next important topic for prelims is the top topic of acids and bases. Mostly numericals are expected from this particular topic. Numerical based on Oswald dilution law, based on buffer solutions and finding out their pH. Uh, based on pK of weak acids, such questions are expected. As for the trend related questions, uh, you will be asked to uh, uh, 
arrange a number of aqua acid in increasing or decreasing acidic strength. We'll be asked to arrange a number of hydroxide in increasing or decreasing uh, order of basic strength. Such questions are expected. Order related questions also might come, uh, on, uh, like arranging the molecules in terms of the Lewis acidity, Lewis basicity. These are also expected. As for the numericals, I have mostly practiced from the uh, book Analytical Chemistry by Carrie D. Christian. Uh, because there each topic is dealt with a number of numericals, which would not only clear your concepts, you might even uh, find some of the numericals in common in the question papers. Uh, uh, as for the MCQ, I, I would refer to the same two books. Uh, the last chapter in the prelims is the quantitative inorganic analysis. Again, it's a numerical based chapter. Uh, different forms of concentration like normality, molarity, molality, and their interrelation. We should be thorough with them. Numericals might come from these portions. Another important portion from this chapter is the acid based titration and their suitable choice of indicators. That is also expected. Now, um, sorry, uh, now as for the um, uh, uh, materials that I've consulted for this portion. Now, as for the numericals related to normality, molarity, molality, any standard class two level book would do. Like one book I have mentioned here is the book by Kale Chug, IC Chemistry. Uh, that comes with a lot of numericals on the matter. Now, uh, the more you practice the numericals, the more um, you can remember the formula so that you won't have to derive them while doing such numericals because you won't have enough time during the exam. As for the acid-based titration and their types of indicators, uh, this particular portion has been thoroughly covered in the book by R.P. Chorkar, Volume 1, and also in the book uh, by Gary D. Christian. As for the MCQ, I would refer to the same two books. Now, these are some of the tips uh, that are uh, to be taken note of uh, while appearing for prelims. You have to practice as many mock tests as possible in a time-bound manner, and only you could improve on your speed. Again, while doing the numericals, you have to keep the formulas on your fingertips uh, because you won't have enough time to derive those formulas. Uh, while uh, practicing uh, numericals, also uh, keep in mind uh, of the accuracy and try to avoid silly mistakes like unit conversions and all. Also try to glance through the question paper once before starting to attempt because what you need to do is to separate the uh, formula-based questions from the reaction-based questions because the reaction-based questions, you would anyway have to work out the mechanism sometimes. So you would need more time in attempting them. So uh, first be um, thorough with the formula-based questions and be done with them. And then only you start, start attempting the reaction-based questions. So these would be my tips for uh, now I'll start the uh, tips for the preparation of mains. So again, uh, in paper one, uh, in organic chemistry, I've jotted down the chapter-wise most important topics. Again, these have been jotted down based on a survey of previous year examination paper. The first chapter is solids. Uh, from solids, descriptive questions are expected from the portion of band theory, like uh, distinguishing between conductor, semiconductor, and insulator. Uh, it is good to supplement your answers with uh, clean MO diagrams leading to the band diagrams. Uh, another hot topic from this particular chapter is the framework structure like silicates, phosphates, aluminum phosphates, etc. Um, almost every alternate year questions are asked from this particular portion. While answering these questions, try to uh, supplement each structure of a silicate or a phosphate with uh, proper diagrams and with proper mineralogical examples. Uh, short questions can be asked from the portion of spinels, uh, like you could be asked to identify between normal and inverted spinel based on crystal field theory. Then you have to uh, augment your answers with proper um, calculations of uh, octahedral site stabilization energy and re related things. Uh, and, uh, and the last important topic in this chapter is the stoichiometric and non-stoichiometric defects. Again, broad questions are expected from this portion. Try to supplement answers with proper diagrams and proper examples. As for the preparation of this portion, I have mostly consulted two books, Concepts and Models of Inorganic Chemistry by Douglas, McDaniel, and Alexander. Uh, the uh, the uh, band theory portion and the solids portion, like the framework structure portions, are dealt in two separate chapters in this particular book. They have also been discussed in great detail in the book by Ikedash. 
the volume three discusses the band theory portion. Volume two discusses the uh, framework structures, spinels, and the defects portion. The next important topic, uh, the most voluminous topic of the means uh, portion is coordination chemistry. Naturally, a lot of questions are to be uh, uh, expected from this portion. Uh, the first important topic from this portion is the uh, types of ligands. Try to draw diagrams uh, of the complexes involving uh, major ligands because such questions are asked uh, almost every year. Uh, another important topic is kinetic stability and inertness. Both short and broad questions are expected. From the short questions, you will be given a number of complexes and you'll be asked which one is kinetically stable, which one is kinetically not try to supplement those questions while you are explaining them on the basis of CFT. Uh, try to supplement them with clean CFT diagrams. Calculation of CFS is another portion. Questions are asked in almost every alternate year from this portion. From the reaction mechanism portion, uh, trans effect is one important topic. Broad questions are expected. Try to uh, uh, divide your answer into like definition of trans effect, followed by the theories of trans effect, and followed by examples. Uh, uh, while uh, giving the example, the stereoselective preparation of cis or trans isomer based on trans effect, such examples would be effective. Uh, the IUPC nomenclature portion and the geometrical isomerism portion are again to be given importance as, uh, as well in the means as in the prelims. Term symbols is another portion that, are, that is to be given special importance. While uh, working out the term, term symbol, try to uh, supplement your answers with clean Box diagrams, Jan Taylor effect, both short and broad questions are expected. Short questions are expected from excited state Jan Taylor effect, like um, based on Jan Taylor effect, comment on the stability of uh, uh, stability constant of elite complexes, such questions are expected. Again, short questions are expected from the application of VPT to coordination complexes, like based on the magnetic moment data, try to comment on the structure and um, coordination number of certain complexes. Short questions are again expected from the portion of square planar complexes. Like you could be asked that why most of the tetra coordinated complex of palladium and platinum are square planar, but that of nickel are tetrahedral. Such questions are expected. Short questions are asked from Warner's theory. These are straightforward questions. Uh, try to uh, uh, make them point twice so that the answer look more attractive. Uh, short questions. And broad questions are expected from charge transfer portion. Try to supplement your answer with clear LMCT, MLCT, MO diagrams and numericals from Orgel diagram. These are also expected. Uh, now, as for the preparation for this particular portion, I have mostly consulted the book by Ajay Kumar, Coordination Chemistry. For the MO diagram portion, that is charge transfer Orgel diagram portion, uh, this portion is beautifully explained in the book by Misler and Tar. The next topic. Uh, for means is acid based titration. Again, uh, you will be asked to draw the titration curves of most of the uh, standard acids and bases and their choices of indicator. Now, while answering these questions, uh, while you are drawing, say, the pH versus volume of strong base added, such plots, now try to calculate pH at representative points in the plot, and then only you plot them on the diagram that you are supplementing your answer with, because then only the diagram would have a solid theoretical foundation. Now, such uh, treatment of these uh, uh, kind of questions you would obviously find uh, in the book by Vogel, textbook of quantitative chemical analysis. The book also comes with a lot of examples, because you will, be uh, you will find in the uh, syllabus that principle or determination of carbonates and bicarbonates, such topics are to be covered. Uh, Vogel's book comes with a lot of examples on this particular portion. So I would refer that. The next portion is gravimetric analysis. Mostly numericals are expected from the solubility product part. As for the theory part of this portion, co-precipitation, post-precipitation, uh, these portions are to be thoroughly covered. As for the examples of gravimetric estimation of some important elements, uh, again, Vogel's book would come in handy because it comes with a lot of such examples. Uh, for the theory portion, co-precipitation, post-precipitation, -precip you'll find them in uh, great detail in the book, uh, Fundamentals of Analytical Chemistry by Spook. And I have mostly practiced solubility product related numericals from the book by A.K. Dash, Volume 3. Uh, the next portion is redox titration. Uh, here, non-stick equation and related numericals 
is the most important portion. You could uh, consult any standard physical chemistry textbook for this particular portion. Another theoretical portion from here uh, that is to be uh, covered is disproportionation and comproportionation reaction. Try to supplement your answer with suitable uh, Latimer diagram, Frost diagram, Corbe diagrams, such things. Now you would have also have to practice balancing redox reaction in ion electron method. Try to practice them from any standard class two level book uh, because they come with a lot of example. And this particular portion is very important because questions are expected in almost every alternate year. Uh, and another portion to, uh, to be, uh, you have to be thorough with is a portion of dichrometrometry, permanganometry, and a portion of iodometry and iodometry. Now, uh, as for the last three portions, the different type of titrations, I've mostly uh, consulted the Vogel's textbook. Uh, IC chemistry by Kelchuk, I've mostly consulted for the numericals related to nonstick equation and also the uh, reaction, balancing the reaction in ion electron method. So these are mostly the books that I have consulted. The next topic is complexometric titration. We'll be asked questions on the three different types of EDT titration. Mostly broad questions are expected. Questions are expected on masking and demasking agents and their importance in complexometric titration. Questions are expected on metal ion indicators and a lot of applications related questions are expected like hardness of water determination by complexometric titration. One book that I have shown by for this particular portion is again the Vogel's textbook because that comes with a lot of examples on complexometric titration that would help you a lot in my opinion during the preparation. On the next chapter is organometallic compound, short questions like uh, finding number of metal metal bonds in a polynuclear complex based on 18 electron rule and effective atomic number rule. Such questions are expected from the broad questions, different organometallic compound, their uh, structure and bonding like ferrocene, dysis salt, uh, like preparation and structure of metal carbonyl, metal carbonyl nitrosis. These are expected. Again, uh, reaction oriented questions like hydrogenation of alkene by Wilkinson's catalyst. These are also expected. While answering reaction based question, try to supplement them with a clear reaction mechanism. As for preparation of this portion, I've mostly consulted the book by B.T. Gupta and A.J. Elias. Uh, the portion of structure of metal clusters that I've mostly consulted from the book in organic chemistry by Parcel and Quartz. The next important topic is nuclear chemistry. Uh, uh, questions from here are broadly divided into two sections, either numerical based or descriptive based. Numerical based questions can be from mass defect and binding energy uh, related to decay kinetics and finding out age of a piece of wood, such questions. And descriptive questions like the different binding model, like the liquid drop model or the nuclear shell model or a nuclear radiation their detection in Geiger Muller counter, such questions are expected. While um, answering descriptive questions, especially the uh, instrumental technique related question, try to supplement them with clear block diagrams. Now, uh, I would suggest from this portion, try to avoid the descriptive questions, try to attempt as many numericals as possible, because the descriptive question would be one big 15 mark or 10 mark question, which wouldn't fetch you that uh, much marks rather than numericals would fetch you uh, good marks. Uh, as for the books that I've consulted for this particular portion, I've mostly consulted the book by A.K. Dash, Volume 1. Uh, this is the most thorough book on the subject. The last uh, most important topic for means in, in organic chemistry is the chemistry of D and F block element. I'll try to attempt as many questions as possible from this portion because this is a rather scoring portion. Because a 15 mark question might be composed of several three mark uh, questions from this particular portion. So these questions are always better to attempt. Now questions are expected from uh, calculation of magnetic moment of lanthanide based on spin orbit coupling, based on J values. Uh, questions are expected from lanthanide contraction and its consequences uh, or uh, from the separation of lanthanides by ion exchange methods, spectra of lanthanides, such questions are expected. As for the basics of this part, I have mostly consulted uh, Concise in Organic Chemistry by JDD. Uh, another book uh, that I've consulted is Chemistry of the Elements by Greenwood and Ancha, and the book by DMP Mingos, Essential Trends in, in Organic Chemistry. These three books covered this topic in 
great detail. Uh, so that uh, actually um, sums up my discussion for the preparation of inorganic chemistry portion. And the next portion, paper two, uh, physical chemistry would be taken up by my fellow colleague, Pranamika Mukherjee. Uh, but for that, uh, I welcome comments and questions from the participants. And thank you all for your uh, kind cooperation and patient listening. Thank you. Hello, this is Koslendra. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Can, yes you I can, tell, can you please tell which book we should follow for uh, nuclear chemistry part? Once again, I missed that. Okay, nuclear chemistry part. I have mostly consulted the book by A.K. Dash, volume one. Uh, that is uh, readily available in the e commerce websites. You will find okay, it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, if there is uh, no more questions, then I welcome my uh, fellow colleague, Pranamita, to uh, start discussing on the preparation for paper two in organic chemistry. Thank you. Thank you, Koslo, for such a wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. Like my uh, colleague just now introduced, I am Pranamita Mukherjee, currently undergoing training at the GSITI Hyderabad. So two years back, I was on the other side, and I would love to share my experiences with all of you regarding the preparation for the physical chemistry paper. Now, let me begin with the prelims part. So which is the new addition to the examination? Now, since the prelims have been held for only one year, here I'll be focusing more on a general term, keeping in mind the questions that have been asked from this topics in the subjective part. Uh, one point to remember here is while you're studying for prelims, pay close attention to the minute points which we generally ignore while we are studying for a subjective based examination. Now, as far as the syllabus goes, there are four chapters in the prelims. As far as physical chemistry is concerned, the first topic is kinetic theory and gaseous state. But the focus for prelims will be more on the kinetic theory and the ideal gas part. So some of the topics that I felt were important from this part are here as follows in the slide. Firstly, study the different velocities, especially namely the average velocity, root mean square velocity, and most probable velocity, and practice associated numerical problems with it. Also, I'll be discussing more on this front in the upcoming slides regarding where you can uh, practice such type of numerical problems. The next important topic is the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for both velocity as well as kinetic energy. Practice the graphs based on it and especially how they change with variation in temperature as well as in mass. Also practice numerical problems which are mostly formula based, based on the different gas laws like Boyle's law, Charles law and Avogadro's law. Uh, the next topic is chemical thermodynamics and chemical equilibrium. Now, this is a very important topic as far as prelims goes, and you can expect around five to six questions on an average from this topic. So for the prelims part, we have first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics according to the syllabus. Here, study the Carnot cycle in detail, especially practice numerical based on the efficiency of Carnot cycle. Also practice the different forms of relation between CP and CV and the different forms of Maxwell relations should be on your fingertips so that you don't have to derive them on the examination hall and that will save you a lot of time. Uh, one thing to remember here is be careful while choosing your options here because especially for Maxwell uh, relations the options are usually very similar like they could give you the same partial derivative only changing from like the constant pressure to constant volume so be careful with that. Uh, study the Joule Thomson experiment in details, uh, keeping in mind the isoenthalpic nature and the numerical problems based on Joule uh, Thomson coefficient. Also, practice the different relations between temperature, volume, and uh, pressure during an adiabatic expansion process. The next topic is colligative properties, so which is solely for prelims. You won't find this chapter in the main part. So, practice uh, topics based on keeping that in mind. Here, practice numericals based on different colligative properties, namely loading of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression and melting point, and osmotic pressure. Also, in the old pattern of examination, numerical questions have been asked almost every alternate year on Vantov factor and degree of ionization. So, practice numericals based on those as well. 
The last topic for prelims, as far as physical chemistry is concerned, is electrochemistry. Namely, the conductance part is only there for prelims. So, a common question here you can encounter is where you need to find a molar conductance of a weak, like a weak electrolyte, uh, where a molar conductance of strong electrolyte will be given based on the principle of Paul Rush's law. Also, read about the variation of molar conductance with dilution and also how it differs for a strong electrolyte as compared to that of a weak electrolyte. Uh, practice numericals based on transfer number, namely from the moving boundary method and Hethorff method. Also, practice numericals based on cell constant, specific conductance, and molar conductance. So, these are usually easy and will fetch you good marks, but be careful about the, sorry, be careful about the unit conversions involved in this numerical. So, that is the tricky part during those while solving such type of numericals. Now, coming to books. Uh, so, regarding books, I believe you can read from any book you are more comfortable with. Different authors have their different style of writing, and it is normal to like one style more than the other. Some of the books that I had referred to are shown here. So, Puri Sharma and Pathania is written in a concise manner, which will be good for the prelims perspective. While Kale Kapoor and Rishikesh Chatterjee, these books uh, delve into greater details and will be good for understanding the concepts. Atkins Physical Chemistry is another book that is beautifully written, and you can refer to that as well. I had also referred to my class 12 chemistry book, that is by Kale too, uh, to revise the basics. So you can refer to your respective class 12 books to revise the foundation part before starting your prelims preparation. Now, moving on to the mains paper, which is of 200 marks. So according to my opinion, this paper is a highly scoring one, because if you see from the last five to six years papers, around 50 to 60 marks are directly derivation based while 60 to 70 marks are numerical based. So these are like the low hanging fruits in the paper. Be thoroughly prepared with the derivations from any standard textbook. And next target is the numerical problems. Again, practice as many problems as possible as that will give you an idea of the different types of problems that could be asked and how to tackle them. Uh, refer to the previous year's uh, CSIR net and get papers as that will give you a hang of what type of questions that could be asked from these respective topics. Also, there are certain books from where you can practice numericals. So in the slide, I have mentioned three books. The last one by Amolendu Ghoshal also has some uh, short questions, which will be good for you for the prelims perspective as well. Moving on to chapter-wise discussion. First chapter is kinetic theory and gaseous state. But unlike the prelims, here the focus will be more on the real gas part. Now, from the study of last five, six years papers, I have seen that usually derivations and related theory questions are more commonly asked from this topic. Like, for example, uh, if question is asked from the variable equation of state, questions are generally asked about the significance of coefficients, especially if the second coefficient is asked. Uh, also, similarly, questions are asked about the van der Waal equation of state. Here, they could ask about the significance and units of A and B, which are the constants for the van der Waal equation of state. Another uh, question that you can encounter is regarding the derivations of critical constants and reaching to the reduced equation of state from there. And now study the PV isotherms here, especially Andrew's experiment in details. Also practice the compressibility factor and how the graphs change for a real gas as compared to that of an ideal gas. Uh, practice numericals from the chapter as these are more straightforward and you can score high marks from here. So these are some of the books that I had referred to for this part, uh, especially PC Rakshit is a good book to refer for this part. So what I did was I made a, sorry, I could just mute your mic, all the participants. Uh, so what I used to do is I used to make a cumulative note from all the referred sources so that before the exam, I didn't have to open the book again. I had a note from all the four referred sources for this chapter especially. Uh, next is chemical thermodynamics. So this is an important topic for mains as on an average, you can expect around 30 to 40 marks from this topic. So for the mains here, the focus will be more on the chemical equilibrium part. So practice derivation, especially like that of Gibbs Duhem equation as that has been asked before. Also study the part on equilibrium constant in details, like there could be questions on the dependence of KP on temperature and pressure, relations between the different forms of equilibrium constant and their associated numericals. Also, uh, another frequently encountered question here is where you are told to find the ionic strength of a given electrolyte based on the principle of dewey huckel limiting law. So, these are some of the books that I had referred to for this part, especially Physical Chemistry Volume 2 and Volume 3 of Kale Kapoor. You can choose any one according to your convenience. 
Uh, for the electrochemistry part, so most of the topics are now under prelims and very few topics are remaining for me. So I would I, I would recommend like actors and be thorough with all of these topics as this is a comparatively high scoring part. Practice derivations of NERD's equation for a given electrolyte. Study the potentiometric titration curves in details related to acid base, redox titration, and precipitation titration. Concentration cell is another important topic here for both the theory as well as for the numerical perspective. Uh, you will see problems where half cell reactions will be given, and you need to find the EMF, equilibrium constant, or the solubility product as the question may demand. So these are some of the books that I had referred to for the electrochemistry part. I would like to specially mention the book Introduction to Electrochemistry by Samuel Glaston. But one thing to keep in mind is you don't have to read the entire book. You can just make concise notes of the relevant portions. Chemical kinetics and catalysis is one of the most important topic again as far as mains is concerned. So if you're really confident with this topic, you can easily score 20 to 30 marks just from this topic alone. Practice and be very confident with the derivations of rate constant for all like opposing type, parallel type of reaction and consecutive reactions. Also practice derivations of rate constant and half-life for different orders, namely zeroth order, first order, and second order. Uh, for the catalysis part, practice differences between the different types of adsorption. Derivation related to Langmuir adsorption isotherm can also come. Also, uh, like one uh, frequently asked numerical type of question here is where activation energy of a catalyzed reaction and a non-catalyzed reaction will be given and you need to find the rate difference based on it. Certain formula based numericals are also asked based on rate constants. So these are some of the books, sorry, these are some of the books that I had referred to. KG Latest Chemical Kinetics is a really good book for this part. You can use it to supplement your notes. Uh, quantum chemistry is another topic and this forms the trickier part of the exam. Here the types of questions are really varied and I would advise practice as many types of numerical problems as you can. So here I have given some representative examples based on previous year question papers. Like uh, operator could be asked and uh, you could be given some uh, wave functions and you need to choose its eigenfunction from the given wave functions. Practice the derivation of Bohr's angular momentum postulate as that has been asked before. Also numerical based on commutator and hydrogen spectrum could be asked. So practice them as well. Also practice numericals based on the degeneracy of a one dimensional box as well as that of a three dimensional box. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is another significant topic here. So as far as the books goes, Levine's quantum chemistry is a good option for, for this particular section. Uh, you can practice this chapter from this uh, book. The next topic is basic principles and applications of spectroscopy. Be thorough with the concept of spin-spin coupling and coupling constant uh, related to one uh, proton NMR. A uh, commonly encountered question here is finding the vibrational modes in a given molecule. So see, carbon dioxide itself has been asked a number of times, so practice that. Also, certain reasoning-based questions based on NMR could be asked. For example, you could be given two molecules and you need to differentiate between them based on the NMR peaks. Also, you could be given a set of compounds and you need to arrange them in the increasing order of chemical shape. So practice such type of questions as well. Uh, from the numerical perspective, usually numericals related to vibrational and rotational spectra are asked. So practice those as well. Now for the book, I hear I feel only one book will suffice for this part as concepts are beautifully illustrated in this book, Fundamentals of Molecular Spectroscopy by C. N. Manuel. I had referred to this book while I was preparing for the examination. Uh, but for practicing NMR based reasoning problems, I had referred to Claydale, uh, which is an organic textbook. You can refer to any organic textbook you are more comfortable with. The last two chapters as far as mains preparation goes are solids and photochemistry. So not many questions come from this part, but I would still suggest not to avoid these topics as these are comparatively easier topics and questions are relatively straightforward. Like from solid questions could be asked where you are given a type of unit cell, be it simple cubic, body center cubic, or a center cubic, and you will be asked to find the number of particles per unit cell. Also, interplanar distance and density are some of the hot topics from which numericals are framed from here. So I would recommend keep your sources limited as far as these two chapters goes. Uh, so you can refer to physical chemistry volume one by Kale Kapoor uh, for the solid part. 
And last but not the least, we have photochemistry. Again, though relatively less questions are asked from here, those are the usually direct questions regarding the different processes like fluorescence, phosphorescence, internal conversion, and intersystem crossing. So I would recommend supplement uh, this type of questions with Jablowski diagram wherever possible. Uh, study about the photosynthesized reaction and quantum yield as questions are generally asked from the same. Uh, for the sources, you can refer to the following books. So physical chemistry, uh, volume five K by Kale Kapoor is a good source for this. So with this, I come to the end of discussion for the physical chemistry part. I would like to end by saying, so all of this, all of us will be sharing our journeys. Please find whatever works best for, uh, best for you. So with this, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce my fellow colleague, Nainika Bandhubadha, who will be sharing her experiences regarding the analytical chemistry part. Before that, if any of you would like to ask me any questions regarding the preparation for physical chemistry part, uh, please feel free to uh, free to do so. Thank you for patiently listening. So if you all don't have any questions, I would pass the mic to my fellow colleague. And if you all like think of any other questions, you all can uh, ask us during the next uh, interactive session tomorrow. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Nayanika Bandhubadhyay. Today I'll be discussing about the part 3A or analytical chemistry portion of the syllabus. So before I get into the detailed discussion about the topics and the books associated with the topics, uh, let me uh, discuss about the subtle uh, differences, I would say, this portion of the syllabus has with uh, the other three portions, that is the physical, organic, and inorganic portions of the entire syllabus. So uh, first things first, you will only encounter analytical chemistry questions for your uh, mains portion of the examination and analytical chemistry does not feature in the uh, prelims portion of the uh, examination. And uh, secondly, what uh, I felt was from my very personal experience. So during the BSc, I only encountered 150 marks paper in analytical chemistry and then followed by MSc, I had just a few uh, instrumental uh, chemi uh, chemistry questions or uh, only a few portions of the syllabus that I had encountered previously. So when I sat with the uh, syllabus after the notifications were out, I saw that there were chunks of syllabus in analytical chemistry which I had not previously encountered. So there will be a lot of things which will be new to you before uh, when you I'll start the preparation at the earlier stages, uh, it will be new to you. So please be uh, mentally prepared for that. And another three part, another another part is that uh, for the other three sections, if you go through previous year papers, you will have you will be able to somewhat predict like what to expect because the syllabus is already known to you. You know the uh, breadth and depth of the uh, syllabus. But for here, what happens is when you uh, look at the question without uh, thoroughly going through the syllabus, syllabus you will find things are new and unknown so the strategy towards tackling this portion of the um, examination is uh, pretty different here go for syllabus coverage first and then come back to seeing the questions like then you can see how much you have actually followed and materialized in, in completion of the syllabus so without further ado let's get into the details so for the first part or the first chapter it is errors in quantitative analysis uh, do something like sit with your plus two book, but for me it was ISC chemistry by KL Chuk, and then the basic concepts of normality, molarity, formality, and associated numerical problems. Just go through that once and get your basics cleared. And this book, that ISC chemistry for KL by KL Chuk, it uh, has detailed dis uh, discussions under of these topics. So go through that book thoroughly and uh, encounter all the numericals and try to solve them. And then the rest of the syllabus, it is a new addition, like uh, concepts associated with standard deviation, precision errors, uncertainty cal calculations. What you will uh, mostly find in your paper is that uh, numerical problems based on uh, these concepts. So for that, uh, I would suggest Fundamentals of Analytical Chemistry by Spook, West, Holler and Crouch and Vogel's textbook of quantitative chemical analysis. These books, I, I actually swear by these two books. So these are very good. Now for chromatographic analysis, next second part of the syllabus. Uh, here, different uh, types of chromatography and the principles of separation 
associated with uh, these types of uh, chromatography questions will mostly come from that but for that you need to study each type of chromatography in detail questions often come like a match the following they will give you a particular system and they will uh, they will give you a series of systems and for which you need to undergo uh, perform separation and they will give you a, a number of topics like op options of various chromatographic techniques so you have to match a particular system with the associated technique so for that i think uh, detailed uh, knowledge about all the topics and intricacies associated with each of these uh, techniques are uh, very much important to know for that again i uh, went to through these two books like fundamentals of analytical chemistry by scope and vogel's textbook of quantitative chemical analysis and and sorry and another thing that i did was uh, i as i created a cumulative kind of note from these two books so it it often so happens that um, say gas liquid chromatography is given very well in scope but uh, ion exchange chromatography is better discussed in uh, vogel's textbook of quantitative chemical analysis so what you can do is uh, make a like a culmination of all these two books you do and revise that and find familiarize yourself with all the concepts associated with this from your own note and uh, repeatedly revise these notes then the third portion is the extra method of analysis generally uh, questions come from extra generation techniques then your use of x rays as a both a quantitative and qualitative tool for analysis the instrumentation and the application and also you can expect numericals from bag bags law and uh, again the principles that is associated with uh, x-ray crystal diffraction and all so for that again i uh, went thoroughly through this chapter that is given in the book the principles of instrumental analysis which is actually different from the previous book so please uh, may, uh, make note of that so if you go through the entire chapter of these principles of in instrumental analysis uh, and patiently read it uh, line by line you have to read the chapter and you will be able to answer most questions coming from uh, this part of the syllabus now for spectroscopic methods of analysis uh, this portion of the syllabus i think it is fairly unpredictable the only way you can tackle it is uh, every word that is mentioned in the syllabus make notes on the syllabus on the, on those topics you can follow these three books that i followed and um, jot down the points that is relevant points and important points make notes and revise them from time to time like uh, you can expect questions from lambert beard's law and its limitations this portion i studied from that fundamentals of analytical chemistry by scope and then uv visible spectroscopy all the principle uh, the uv visible spectroscopy the principle and the instrumentation that is associated with it again i went to this portion from uh, fundamentals of analytical chemistry by scope and uh, principles of instrumental analysis the instrumentation instrumentation part is uh, very well given in the uh, second book and the fundamentals of principles associated it is given in the first book then questions often come from flame atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy these two are very important topics and you have to uh, go into very detailed study of these two procedures and questions will come from the principles associated the interferences that you will face in each of these uh, methods and the background corrections the limitations that are associated with the method, method required this analysis technique of analysis will fail situations where you have to go or uh, why some other other way of method of um, analysis or instrumentation technique is better suited than these two i mean to say that for analytical chemistry all methods of analysis that are given make a comparative study at the when you are at the end of your syllabus you should be in a position where you can uh, effectively compare one method of analysis with other 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 and if someone asks you say i am giving you this portion like, like in an application for water analysis what i will be using you will be able to say that this is com this method of analysis is comparatively better than the other one so the next part of this uh, Uh, sorry um, please uh, please wait for a minute there okay 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 thank you uh, for the inductively coupled plasma uh, spectroscopy again questions come from theory and principles and then uh, plasma generation 
and uh, various types of interferences like molecular interferences, isobaric infer interferences. And again, you have to go into uh, the detailed advantages that are associated with ICP technique and the limitations. Like questions will come, why ICP is better for multi-elemental analysis than your uh, flame AAS? So for that comparative study, for uh, to get into that level of um, comparison and answer writing, what you need to do is to get your basics cleared for each of these associated topics. And then the final topic that is analysis of geological materials. I find this portion of the syllabus uh, is uh, fairly predictable because you can expect uh, about 20 or 30 marks each year from this portion. So what, uh, what I did, uh, I uh, went online, searched and made notes from uh, each, uh, made notes from each portion that is uh, mentioned in the syllabus, like uh, ore estimation in bauxite, dolomite, this I can't, um, at least for me, I did not find any particular book that had all the, all the topics that is mentioned in this portion of the syllabus. So I uh, made my own notes and uh, they will suffix. Uh, and generally I put uh, sources, I uh, consulted that was Wikipedia and chemistry libre text. And you can, if you find better sources, go for it and make your own notes and your notes will only suffice. So uh, thank you. So if you, any of you have any questions from this portion of the syllabus, you can ask me. Otherwise, uh, so if you have no questions, I will uh, quickly pass over the baton to uh, any questions. Okay, so uh, let me uh, hand it over to uh, Chirajuti Guho, who will uh, discuss about the organic chemistry portion of the syllabus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nanika, for your kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Chirajuti Guho. Chemist uh, currently pursuing my training program at uh, Geological Survey of India, Hyderabad Training Institute. Based on my previous experience, I am going to uh, discuss on the effective strategy for preparation on organic chemistry. Uh, from the previous, previous year, as you know that uh, the written test is divided into two segments, that is the prelims and mains. Uh, first, I shall discuss on the prelims followed by mains. In prelims, approximately 20 questions you may expect uh, out of 120 from organic chemistry and all the questions are very much uh, basic and in, if uh, if anyone read textbook thoroughly then you can able to score maximum marks out of it the prelims are very much important because it not only helps you to be selected for the um, main examination but also more and more you score in the prelims the marks will be credited to the final result. That means it gives you an extra edge if you are able to score more and more marks in the prelims. And for organic chemistry, entire syllabus is actually divided into two parts, uh, both for uh, prelims and mains. First, I shall discuss on prelims. Uh, in the first segment, you uh, are very much consist of the fundamental aspects of organic chemistry. That means uh, resonance, hyperconcentrations, and inductive effect. From there, very basic questions are usually asked related to the stability of the uh, molecules or intermediate. From the molecular dipole moment, acid is aromaticity portion, a very fundamental uh, questions you may encounter, like the order of the acidity or basicity. Or, uh, or along the series of the compound, uh, which one is non-aromatic or aromatic in nature like that. The stability of the intermediate, like carbocation, carbanan, and the radical formation, stability and reactivity of it are very much important. Based on that, lots of questions are expected to be asked. And the books I would uh, uh, re refer to uh, read that uh, the advanced organic chemistry by very much the organic reaction and mechanism by Professor Nimai Tiwari. Uh, this, uh, and in Nimai Tiwari, uh, what the intertopic is discussed in the question and answer uh, formats, so it will be uh, helpful to you. Second topic, in second topic, in the studio chemistry part, very simple question used to come from the chirality, the conformational isomer, and several projection related uh, questions you may expect. 
uh, from human projection, flying wedge, as well as the fissure projection. The RS nomenclature determination usually asked uh, in the examination based on CIP rule. And from the geometrical isomer that contains two or more CC double bond, the EZ naming uh, may be asked from that segment. And, uh, and you may follow D. Nashipuri book as your test book to solve the, all the problems. In aliphatic, uh, in in in, uh, in aliphatic substitution reaction, the uh, the questions you may encounter from SN1 and SN2 reaction uh, mechanism is uh, stereochemistry, solvent polarity of the medium, nucleophilicity of the nucleophile. Uh, for basic concept, you may follow T.W. of uh, uh, Solomon's, and for more application, Jerry March book is really an effective book to be followed. Similarly, for elimination type of reaction, you want to uh, 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 elimination reaction mechanism, stereochemistry attacking base leaving group, all are the very much important factors to be remembered. And the Hoffman and the Sergey rule for the eliminations is also very much important topic to be noted. And for this, I would recommend you to read Clayton and Warren uh, organic chemistry book. Uh, from addition reaction, uh, electrophilic, nucleophilic, and radical addition reactions are very much important topic, and uh, for, uh, and, and you may read uh, from Norman Coxon organic chemistry book for this segment. The halogenations, nitration, fidelity of alkylation, acylation reaction for the adamant electrophilic substitution reaction are the topic where from you may expect a frequent questions from aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction especially from the EPSO substitution reaction, at least one question are used to ask in every alternate year. As a textbook, you may follow uh, uh, Clayton and Warren, and for practice of previous year, late and late examination questions uh, would be sufficient for this topic. And right now I am going to discuss on the molecular rearrangement reaction. From the molecular rearrangement reaction, mostly the tricky questions used to come based on the acid base catalyst rearrangement reaction, uh, uh, mainly ring expansion or the hydride uh, ring uh, or the hydride chip, depending upon the stability of the intermediate or from a neighboring group participation type of reaction are the most important topic. So, to solve this type of question, uh, you need to practice more and more problem and molecular rearrangement reaction in organic synthesis uh, written by Christian Rogers is very much important book that, uh, that you may consult. Now I am going to discuss about the main paper uh, from organic chemistry, which is included in uh, part three, uh, 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 part B and paper three. Firstly, the rearrangement reaction like the Reimer Timmer reaction that undergoes through the carbon type of intermediate, whereas for the Hoffman, Cartier's, and Lawson rearrangement reaction undergoes via nitrine intermediate. For uh, thus, any conversion based on this name reaction and their intermediate may be, uh, uh, may be asked for this from this segment. And you may read a uh, Clayton Warren organic chemistry book to cover this portion. Electrophilic, nucleophilic, and free radical addition to the CC multiple bond uh, used to come in the examination and during the mechanism, you have to keep in mind that the overall stereochemistry change before and after the reaction uh, uh, should be intact. Otherwise, the erroneous result you may come, the uh, results may come, and you will find a frequent questions from Dilsolder reaction and also from polymerizations of alkene. And in order to cover the entire portion, you may read very much and the principle of organic chemistry by Norman Coxon. Here from, uh, the, from the name reaction part, that is the Canizero, aldol condensation reaction, Claisen ester condensation, benzene condensation, benzyl benzylic acid rearrangement reaction, uh, Manic reaction, Dickman, uh, Michael reaction, uh, Darzen, Wittig, Neubelgel, all the name reaction are very much important. And you may expect approximately 20 marks questions from this portion, and all the questions are very much scoring, never miss any step during uh, during the mechanism uh, segments. And you may consult Clayton Warren as your textbook. And also, uh, you may follow the basic concept of organic chemistry written by Paula de Bruce. 
the selective reducing agent uh, for a CC multiple bond and for the selective carbonyl reduction by MPV reduction or uh, Wolf reduction are very much important uh, uh, segments and uh, important reaction and frequent questions usually ask from the birch reduction. On the other hand, uh, from oxidation reaction, hydration, hydroboration reaction, oxygenolysis, epoxidation reaction, as well as the sharpness epoxidation are very much important topic. And uh, in every year, two to three questions used to come uh, in every year. All the radioselective and chemoselective uh, agents are need to be covered from Clayton Warren Organic Chemistry book, which is very much necessary for any competitive examination. Now, from electrocyclic reaction, you need to clear you need to have a clear concept uh, regarding the molecular orbital diagram sometimes direct question you may encounter from this portion and moreover from the uh, woodward hoffman correlation diagram a conrotatory or disrotatory motions on, for a ring opening and closing reaction cyclo addition uh, reaction as well as the sigma drop rearrangement are the very much important topic to be uh, covered the Claisen rearrangement reaction and the uh, and the Pope reaction portion some concept this question you may encounter from photochemical reaction like uh, Norwich type one and type two reaction are recently included topic thus some basic questions you may expect it from here and I would recommend uh, Clayton Barrett as your textbook and uh, and for uh, for uh, for your practice you may also read photochemistry and the pericyclic book by Singh and Singh. Now I will going to discuss on uh, spectroscopy. First, I will uh, I, I will discuss on infrared spectroscopy. Uh, in IR spectroscopy, you have to remember the accuracy switching frequency of a certain group like hydroxyl group NH, uh, switching frequency of carbonyl CC multiple bond, CD bond are very much important, and the factors affecting the switching frequencies are very much uh, are the important topics. Sometimes a series of compound it may be provided to uh, to having the different functional group or variation of ring size to find out the highest IR frequency among the molecules. From uh, ultraviolet spectroscopy, uh, uh, from uh, from from the topic uh, homophore, oxychrome, redshift, blue shift, hyper, uh, hyperchromic effect, as well as hyperchromic effect. Uh, you may you, uh, you may ask uh, to define uh, them as well as with the examples or uh, or you may be asked to calculate lambda max value by Woodward rule. In NMR spectroscopy, you need to have a clear concept regarding the delta values of certain functional group placed in uh, different bonding environment and some concept based questions is very much important uh, from, uh, from, from 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 magnetic anisotropy. And the Mac Lafferty rearrangement and its application part is very much important from mass spectroscopy and sometimes organic uh, some uh, sometimes organic structure prediction is to come uh, based on the miscellaneous concept uh, of all the spectroscopic technique and this problem can be solved uh, only by the gradual practice of several questions. I would recommend the organic uh, spectroscopy book by uh, written by uh, uh, William Kemp. An introduction uh, to spectroscopy by Donald L. Pavia. These two, uh, these two books are very much effective and that can be uh, consulted by you. And the stereochemistry uh, and the electrocyclic uh, reaction, that means pericyclic reaction, photochemistry, and the, uh, and the spectroscopy are the main two pillars of organic chemistry uh, for, 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 for UPC main examination uh, uh, because the entire organic chemistry out of uh, out of 100 marks of question, 30 percent question are usually set from this topic and therefore try to practice more and more application and concept based questions for this topic. Now I'm going to discuss uh, uh, discuss the points to be remembered for the main examination. And in main examination, you may encounter five marks, 10 marks, as well as a 50 marks, 15 marks subjective question. Thus, in order to get a maximum marks, you may divide your uh, answer into three, three different segments. That is introduction, body, and then conclusion. Two point, uh, to the point answer writing is a skill that may be developed only through the gradual practice. In, uh, in physical chemistry, before solving any numerical, you have to keep in mind 
uh, that in which uh, in, in in which unit the questions are asked because during the unit conversion you have to be very much careful to make your uh, to make your answer more and more attractive and logical you need to denote all the terms while writing the equations say for example say for an example the equation of radi uh, ideal cash that is pv is equal to nrt then you have to denote all the terms uh, then uh, it will give more clarifications of your thought uh, um, uh, regarding uh, explanations in organic chemistry reaction you must not skip any uh, you must not uh, jump any steps while you are discussing the mechanism because it is a very bad practice in answer script uh, for each question a specific space is provided and thus before any derivation or mechanism first uh, you make a rough sketch in a rough paper uh, and then after you uh, after you become completely sure then uh, then only derive it uh, on the answer paper without any mistake please, please keep in mind uh, please keep with you uh, a sufficient time for proper revision and for checking whether you have answered all the question or not thank you very much best of luck for your uh, examination and uh, if any if you do have any doubt regarding my topic you are free of, uh, you are uh, welcome to ask me regarding that if you do have any question you may ask Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank participants for uh, paying Thanks. attention and listening patiently. Uh, even now, you have just uh, from the experts and the newly joined uh, and chemist in Geological Survey of India. You can also give a thought to what they have suggested you and in case you have any queries after thinking about how to go ahead with the preparation we also have an interactive session tomorrow so you can ask the queries from all the participants regarding all the sessions which will be conducted as a part of this virtual interaction with this we come towards the end of the discussion on how to have an effective preparation for the chemistry stream the people who have done their masters in chemistry and allied subjects will be appearing for the upsc combined geoscientist examination we will have a lunch break at this point but let me ask all the participants definitely ensure to get connected at sharp 2:30 pm that we have the session on interview skills by very eminent and experienced personality shri dhp raju ips officer principal secretary government of meghalaya he will be here to guide and suggest the participants regarding the preparation for interview he will tell the participants how to develop the requisite skills to crack the upsc personality test and come out with flying colors with good marks to ensure a very high position in the final merit list so kindly ensure all the participants to please join at 2:30 sharp so that we can start with the session on interview skills before you finish it off actually professor pranomita is there Yes, sir. So, yes. Actually, you have been requested to name about the books on quantum chemistry. Someone has asked. 
Uh, so the book that I had referred to was Quantum Chemistry by Levine. So I'll open the PPT that will be more helpful. So yes, so this is the part that I was referring to. So Quantum Chemistry by Levine is a very good book. So this deals with only quantum chemistry, but all the topics you don't need for this exam specially. So you can make concise notes based on the relevant portions. Also Physical Chemistry by Atkins is a good book for the quantum chemistry part. So I think these two books will suffice for this part. Maybe please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pra so much for addressing the query which uh, related to your topic for suggesting books for quantum chemistry. I hope it has been answered satisfactorily and you will be able to now consult the required material for preparation of the portion on quantum chemistry. So with the permission from the chair, May we break for the lunch session, sir, with a request to all the participants to kindly join sharply at 2.30 p.m. Sir, please, I request for your permission, sir. Vipas, do you have anything to say? Uh, sir, yes, uh, there are, I'm, we are getting questions in chat box. People are asking, what is the time schedule? Uh, we have already mentioned the time schedule in the chat box. Not only that, uh, someone has asked whether GS part has been discussed already. Yes, GS part has been discussed already and you probably missed the best part, one of the best part, I should not say the best part, one of the best part regarding the preparation of GS because GS is something new which is coming introduced by UPSC from this year onward. Uh, yes, please see the chat box uh, regarding the timing uh, of the uh, you know, the Obviously. different session we have already discussed. Please do not repeat the same question. Go back to the chat box and see the answers. I think that's all for the uh, for it now. Uh, the session is being li live telecast in Facebook account. We have already shared in your email account the details of the Facebook account. Um, uh, yes, uh, we share with some notes after through your email. Uh, uh, that's for sure right now. And I think we can wind up for uh, the forum session, sir, if you give permission. Yes. yes. So thank you, uh, our jewels of chemistry uh, for, uh, stream for uh, special jewels we have from chemistry. Class. Thank you very much, Kosta, Pranamita, Nayanika, and Chirojati for being uh, with us and sharing your skills and detailed discussion on the uh, you know, uh, on uh, the different aspect of UPSC. Yeah, uh, as you can see, afternoon session will be on interview skill. Please join us for the time, Nidhi. I think they should join us by 2.30 and we'll start sharp at uh, our uh, uh, esteemed speaker will join by 2.45. And once he joins, we can have our sessions. We, though we have written, it is from, uh, uh, from 1,500 uh, 1, hours. As he joins, we'll start. So be online by 2.30. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is also mentioned in the chat box. So kindly uh, see the chat and join at 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am.
हेलो
ਤਾਂ ਮਾਰਾ ਦਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ
Good afternoon. Welcome back to the participants. Best of participant trainings only be online training session. As soon as the esteemed faculty joins us, we have an eminent speaker. As soon as he joins us, we will be starting with the afternoon session. Preparation for interview. And certain skills to qualify and secure high marks in the personality test which is conducted as the stage three of the Union Public Service Commission combined geoscientist examination. Are the audio visuals clear to the participants? Is there any issue with the voice? No, ma'am. Get a message. Okay, thank you. Thank you for responding, Shrikanji, Mini Kumar, Vidushi. Thank you all for responding. So I can see the number of participants is steadily increasing. Once the majority of our trainee participants join, we will be starting the e session on preparation for interview. It will be conducted by an eminent personality, Sri GHP Raju, an officer of the IPS or Indian Police Services, Principal Secretary, Government of Meghalaya. I will request the participants present to kindly also inform your colleagues to join the session immediately so that we can start the afternoon part of the virtual interaction on time. May I request the participants mm -hmm to kindly ensure we are in mute during the conduct of the e-session by our eminent speaker. And after the session, we may ask their queries, get them resolved. At that time, they can put the questions in the chat. They can also unmute and ask the queries personally. However, during the session, we will request that they put their mic on mute so that the session is conducted without any hassles and the voice is clearly heard by all the participant trainees. Meanwhile, let me take this opportunity to inform the participants who have joined that we will be having an e-session on interview skills. The first eminent personality speaking will be Sri GHP Raju. IPS officer, 
principal secretary government of meghalaya the second eminent speaker will be dr m jagannath rao vice chancellor adhikavi nanya university rajamundri he has been member of the upsc board and he will be sharing so let me get back to you ha ah, nidhi and just this is dhh pirad will join at 3 o'clock because of some lok sabha speaker is visiting shilla so he is in the meeting. इनके हमारे जो डीडीजी साहब हैं आवाज आ रही है नहीं आती थी अभी आवाज आ रही है हेलो 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 यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल ओके सर थैंक यू सर
वेलकम सर राजू साहब वेलकम सर वेलकम सर जनरल And uh, sir, the DHP Rajesh Sabhi is currently is a principal secretary of government of Meghalaya. Uh, he was uh, for your kind information. He was the uh, GLG background, gold medalist from Andhra University. 1987, uh, 1987 pass out from Andhra University. Uh, he was the IPS batch of 1992. Prior to principal secretary, he was the principal of the CRPF Chief Minister. Prior to this one, we are of Southern Region, and uh, he held the positions of Inspector General of Police, uh, CRPF, and uh, Deputy Director Administrative Sardar 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 Varvai Patel National Police Academy, and as Assistant Director and as well as uh, Deputy Director, and Assistant Inspector General Special Special Group of New Delhi. and uh, he belongs to the uh, meghalaya cadet he was a superintendent of police of east assam district superintendent police of jaitia hills a principal police training school shilla superintendent of police east yaro hills asp east yaro hills and uh, he is having a vast experience in the national and international policing variety the teacher and all the guest i would like to invite sir dhp rao sir please sir please speak sir yeah can you hear me are you clear yes sir done thank you very much i am grateful to the geological survey of india i was supposed to actually join as a as a as a as a member of this elite organization but i got into the civil services before that in fact as venkat uh, mentioned He's a very dear friend of mine. We studied it together in Andhra University, and many of my my batchmates joined the GSA as geologists. And uh, yes, I have decided to take the civil services as my career path. Appeared the UPSC examination, and I cleared the examination in the year 1993. So before that, twice I went to the interview up to the UPSC. 89 after that group 1 i got into the state civil services then immediately i got into this uh, our uh, through upsc so interview preparation is one very this is a very good initiative by the gsa thanks to the to the entire team who conceived this idea and uh, giving you tips about uh, subject preparation as well as personality preparation and i congratulate the entire team of the gsi who conceived this idea and and uh, making you prepare for is a one one of important organizations to join this organization welcome you all and i hope my audio is clear ma'am please confirm it yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you, thank you. yeah here the upsc the board members they are very seasoned bureaucrats with a rich social background academic background they look from the candidate from the very first your your appearance before the board you can read our personality like a small open book there is nothing we can hide from the board please remember not to hide any of our weaknesses having weakness is human it's not an error it's a personality test the seasoned board members they know how to read us only by our body language how you are sitting in front of the body in a board how you are greeting them how you are understanding the question how you are marshaling your thoughts before actually answering i'm very sure upsc encourages one more thing in the board you are permitted to make a notes like i'm i'm making a notes of what mr venkat is suggesting now i make my own notes 
suppose you i you you are, you are the board i am in front of you i am ready with my pen and pencil they keep a a, a, a notepad or you are carrying your own uh, original certificates carry a small notepad with a pencil or a pen if the member is asking a technical question make a note of it absolutely no problem in that it will be appreciated by the board members instead before the member completes his question we start answering that speaks about our personality remember that you can't hide anything from the board members full stop they are very clever i'll take the three examples of the candidates who got into the civil services by sheer their their what called the presence of mind and the dead honesty in one in case, one case she got she all got india 50s there is audio problem yeah in one case she is serving in karnataka cadre the members put a very tricky question your brother is into some scandal in the district where you are the collector give me what comes to your mind instantaneously how you are going to deal with your brother sir i bank on my moral fiber that is not a orchestrated preparated answer it has to come genuinely from within so the members gave her the highest marks in the interview just because of her prompt unorchestrated unedited answer sir i bank on my moral fiber i asked this lady how you got that answer i don't know sir but it it just popped out like my mouth when my brother is involved in a in a scandal where in a scam where the, i am the district collector i said that how are you going to deal with this means sir i leave it to my moral fiber the moral fiber we never we never we never prepared these answers so those scientific questions subject wise questions is one thing whereas your personality related questions the second if you if you are into a hobby be sincere to that hobby just for the sake of interview don't write extra curricular activities or hobby don't mention it if you don't have a hobby don't have a hobby we are in the habit of writing of uh, to impress the board i am into yoga and meditation i am into singing i am into cooking i am into gardening their hobbies the board members they will corner a candidate whether this candidate is genuine into his or her hobby or not not having a hobby is not negative but falsifying a hobby is seriously taken seriously that is a personality oh this this candidate has a tendency to mislead is a negative mark so before actually any any extra curricular other than textual knowledge other than the scientific knowledge if you have any hobby genuinely whatever it may be be sincere to that hobby i'll give you an example you want to take up a garden gardening as a hobby they will ask what is the purpose of hobby yaar why one has to have a hobby there is no need to have a hobby government will not pay you any money for having a hobby right so sir hobby has nothing to do with my profession for example you may write writing the 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 publishing in the scientific magazines about the geology subject is my hobby it's not hobby because it's your core subject hobby means which has nothing to do with your core subject you are getting my point if anyone has this hobby which has nothing to do with the geology please honest with that hobby take the example of cooking they ask what type of cooking continental what is the difference between continental and uh, the indian cooking what is the difference between the punjabi dishes as well as the south indian dishes why idli and dosa sambar is very very popular in south india why not in north india we don't know but if you are curious about the cooking as a hobby and if you are paying attention to this type of the divergence in the country then that clinches the interview in your favor one question like that lady who said sir i leave it to my moral fiber that one question clinched the entire board and clinched her the interview hobby i take one example this girl she got into ips first and she wanted to appear again in her interview there was she mentioned one particular hobby spending time with children 
she mentioned that as a hobby one board member become curious how do you spend time with children and what do you learn from the children it was initial 2 to 3 minutes of the interview beginning for upsc she said that sir i learned a lot of things by spending time with the children oh come on come on what are the things sir they are working in delhi this girl stays with her parents in the complex there are many maid servants staying and helping the seniors houses their children the maid servants children they go to the government school father is not there father is a taxi driver mother comes to my house to attend to the works so who takes care of the children there is nobody the school teachers the quality of education is so poor their health problems there is a a, a, a tacit they don't know if a girl child is molested and she doesn't know that she is being molested by the teacher then how you sir how did you spend time sir every day when i come back from my college between 6 and 7 in the evening i pulled these the laborers children started teaching the maths and english it's a one hour free of cost there is no charges so sensing her sincerity towards this simple hobby which has nothing to do with her subject that clinched her excellent marks third how the board the board corners you one student who facing the interview he got the distinction in class 10 he got second class in intermediate he got distinction in degree and he got a distinction in gold medal in in the post graduation so the board chairman see board chairman surfing his bio data oh you are a distinct student you are uh, you you remained distinction throughout your uh, academic career the candidate remained silent he did not say anything there was a few seconds of silence the candidate who who is it's not a question to the candidate i uh, please please note it's not a question to the candidate it was the chairman was reading from the bio data of the candidate oh you are you you, you remain distinction you got distinction throughout your education career very good this candidate got just 50 250 marks into you he got 125 you know what the flaw sheepishly the candidate should have said no sir i am not i got the second class in the intermediate had this this candidate just sheepishly it's not the fault they they might have asked why suddenly 10th class you got distinction then degree distinction post graduation distinction gold medal why intermediate sir there must be some reason so that reason he perhaps might have expected you know the third candidate who attended the interview in the 89 he missed the service by one mark can you believe it had he scored 126 you would have been the alende service that candidate is me the third example is my example the candidate who remains silent is me because i don't know I, maybe i went blank i didn't know how to respond i thought he is he is casually mentioning but at actually he is reading my personality my silence had i told sir no sir my intermediate is the second class i am not distinction i did not get distinction in the intro in intermediate which is factually correct you see in front of how i missed it still it happened in there can you imagine 89 interview i missed that was my first interview for the ias exam in the upsc this is the second attempt i got into the service how the the presence of mind Uh, is 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 not there like this that's why i just want to share these two three examples see you have to prepare there is no coaching available for your personality your personality already is there 25 years of you were brought up your family brought up it's a part of it's ingrained in your personality you have to stand in front of the mirror and say that am i honest with my answer it's basically is general questions it's not the technical subject geology subject no i'm not interested in that because you already mastered the subject you already have a command over the subject 
we go into your deeply into your personality you have to be very very aware of the weaknesses your personality weakness means there are some cases where they have the, the habit of stammering stammering is not negative is not negative there are some more candidate who remain stiff they remain so stiff like a statue only his lips are like our farmer pradhan mantri ji only lips move are you are feel normal while we are interacting but i should not i should not do dramatics the body language means i should not do dram dramatics my body language is basically the, the the gestures the hand movements the head movements should not be should not be out of should not be out of sync with what you say so that is your personality it has to be trained not not this is only we give you tips through this type of interactive sessions thanks to mr venkat for introducing you to this type of type of these the skills remember it's a skill what is a skill the skill is not we are born with it is cultivated always remember that innate talent that's what we born with whereas the skill is we learn the honey bee the dancers did it learn the the dancing from the dancing school no they has carried the language of communicating with its counterpart through dance it's innate it's a dna whereas in us language is a skill presentation is a skill the dressing is a skill the way you you put your tie is a skill the way you do the makeup is a skill is all learned so in the personality you have to identify uh, that's why standing in front of the full length mirror how you are walking how you are taking the seats how is your body language you watch yourself that will help you a lot and any specific question mr venkat if it is there i'll address otherwise thank you very much for this for this excellent interactive session mr venkat anything you want to ask please or any student which they want afternoon sir uh i my name is parni i have a question so uh, whenever we are there in an interview and uh, suppose there is a panel of 3 to 4 uh, interviews and one of them is asking the question so uh, usually i think being a candidate who is getting interviewed we get confused that with whom we shall actually maintain the eye contact while we are answering so shall it be with the single person who is asking or with the complete panel majority of us face these situations out of the three four panelists one member is asking you question putting the question before you so whoever puts the question your entire attention has to go to the gentleman or lady and you you need not pay attention to other members presence no not required if a is putting a question to you your entire attention including making a note of the question is is focused attention is only on that person once the question is clear to you and you are ready to answer you answer to the board not to the individual a put the question to you and you noted and you came up with the answer that answer for the entire board not to the member i hope i hope uh, uh, that i made it clear Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Ritu Parna from Kolkata. Sir, I had one question. That sometimes we are at the end of the interview, we are sometimes asked that, uh, do you have any question for us, or would you like to share something? So these questions, how can they be dealt tactfully at that, at the present situation? I mean, these these things have to be very prompt. you see one member always especially the chairman if he is if he is impressed with your, if 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 the board is impressed by your performance 
they just before your departure they put that last question like this you simply smile thank you sir because that is the trap are you having self confidence or not in the in the board's mind you are selected you are the material for the job but just before just to unnerve you before you even just before opening the door to go out of the room oh, miss just just come back so just to make you just to test your self confidence i assure any candidate gets the question just before the departure is surely selected surely selected that is the sign because the board is so impressed with your performance the chairman out of out of his out of his uh, yeah satisfaction he is he wants to just anything you want to ask that means you are selected okay just my sir thank you sir Okay. So, sir, in that situ those situations, we should obligingly say thank you and then depart. Exactly. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. There is nothing more to add. That's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Nidhi, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. श्री उंगतूर लाहेरी एम एस सी फर्स्ट इयर स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम आचार्य नागार्जुन यूनिवर्सिटी हिंदू कॉलेज गुंटूर ही वॉन्टेड टू आस्क सम क्वेरी कैन यू आस्क प्लीज सर सिंस यूपीएससी इज अ वन इयर प्रोसेस How do deal with the exam pressure? Right. Uh, exam pressure is a subject or interview. If it is subject, geology will not give you any pressure. In fact, it's a cake walk subject. Um. Here. Can you hear me? Hello, yeah. sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah audible. Go ahead. Yes. Hello. Yes, you yeah, are audible, you. please. Go ahead. Hello. You are audible. Please ask the question. Hello, sir. May I ask a question? Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, Ma'am, may I ask a question? Uh, if uh, there is time. Ah, uh, yeah. May I request the participants to kindly ask question one at a time. If everybody starts speaking, it will be difficult to listen and answer. Ah, uh, Lahari ji uh, was asking. Uh, Can you continue, please? We can hear you, ma'am. Since uh, UPSC is a one-year process, how to deal with the exam pressure, ma'am? You are asking about the exam pressure. Uh, let me take my my yeah. Let let me take my example. Okay, up to up to twelfth twelfth standard, I studied from with the biology, maths, and physics. It's a combination in Andhra Pradesh. I joined Hindu College Guntur for my graduation in the B.Sc. Yes, Geology, Chemistry, and Physics. I'm not that good at English. Yes, the first year, I I I hearted the entire subject so much, so much. I I hearted and I hearted in the examination. I painted in the sense that I did not write my first year exams in the first. If I look, if if you look at my mark sheet, the first year is absent, 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 absent. All five papers because language problem. Because I I mucked the subject so much, I couldn't reproduce in the exam. I I I tensed up. From next year onward, there is no no question of memorizing. I learned the art of writing the answers 
while preparing for the for the exam i'm not i'm not see the more i write the art of writing helped me in any of the examination including the civil service the art writing and reading i kept almost a thousand white paper if i read something i write it immediately i write it two to three times so writing helped me in both in the stress number one the more i spent time in writing and writing writing even copying writing is copy i am copying two three times that increased my presentation that has removed the stress and my presentation and examination writing becomes so natural because i am writing there is a fundamental reading and preparation writing and preparation if you inculcate the habit of writing from the first day then the stress is taken care you will never feel stress for even for the ias examination mark my word and start practicing writing and writing and writing i am a classic example where up to 12th standard telugu medium english has no absolutely no command graduation i scored 80% plus thanks to my writing habits first year i dropped all the exams absent because of the stress like you experience second year onwards it's absolutely it's not reading it's writing and writing and writing but writing helped me i'm very sure it helps you also thank you good afternoon sir uh, good afternoon sir i am bhagya shri it skills we have to develop to clear upsc sir and how to overcome winter you sir how to overcome interview how to overcome fear uh, fear in the interview sir oh interview fear okay. <laughs> uh, uh upsc preparation is one thing is i, I can assure you one thing since 1948 the first batch of the recruitment through the U U union public service commission till date the only organization which has maintained impeccable integrity last 75 years is upsc there may be scandals there may be complaints against the state public service commissions once the integrity of the upsc selection process is came under question that is the the greatest strength of the upsc that's why why you why are you worried what are you worried about what is that which is so fearful about the upsc uh, uh, i'm from rural background i'm not from the english or or the urban urban centric education no i'm from municipality school that is jph school i studied after that government college in vishwavada 11th and 12th after that the private hindu college nowhere if you look at my career like but the upsc is the is for me it's a hope because it is the most transparent and the integrity is impeccable organization that has to make you very confident about yourself about the selection process suppose if you go into the state public service commission money politics contacts you forget about your preparation you are worried about whom should i contact which politician will help me how much money they are taking upsc unlike all the uh, the public service commissions upsc integrity is impeccable if you you are hard working remember that if you are hard working if you are genuine about what you know what you don't know if i don't know don't know see remember one thing board doesn't expect you to know everything you remove that from your mindset oh board may come up with the some unexpected question it will come up with unexpected question to with with the with an honest answer from you sir i don't know the answer instead you try to try to answer it though you are not prepared you you are half knowledgeable about that question or don't know anything about the question that you tried to i take the one example they suddenly asked me in my interview upsc 
what is the difference between what is the one significant difference between hyderabad and vijayawada because i studied from vijayawada <laughs> hyderabad i told them suddenly the road it's a tank but huge water but they laughed it's a lake it's a nat natural lake in hyderabad in vijayawada there is no natural no 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 we are not mentioning about that there is some other establishment which is not there in hyderabad i was scrapping uh, didn't sir uh, uh, no i am unable to recollect and is that have you heard of ntpc oh sir yes sir we have the thermal power plant how the board member helped me to connect to the the ibrahim patnam thermal power plant in vijayawada see he wanted me to tell that vijayawada has the thermal plant whereas hyderabad doesn't have the thermal plant he helped me indirectly by asking have you heard of ntpc yes sir ntpc is national thermal power corporation oh yes sir vijayawada has a thermal power corporation he helped me indirectly why should i fearful about the board and upsc when they are there to help us provided you are honest so i am i should be honest with myself because it's a personality which we are opening up before the board it's a very good question never fearful about the board because upsc is the most transparent and integrity wise impeccable organization feel confident about yourself because you are facing an objective independent transparent body you must feel proud that you are facing the board why fear thank you thank you sir good evening sir good afternoon I'm sir hello I'm no. One by one, please. The one last question. I have another meeting to go at. We have. Please ask uh, one at a time. Oh. You, you may continue, sir, please. Sir, sir, this will be the last question. Didi, this should be the last question. Sir, it's a different meeting. Yeah, sure, Hello, sir. sir. Yes, sir. This Hello, is sir. one last query, Hello. and later on Hello, we'll sir. get back to you. So we can have one last question, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Am Am I audible? Hello. Hello, good yes. uh, hello. Hello. Sir, how many members are board members? Sir, interview panel. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Hello, hello, good afternoon, sir. Just a moment, sir. We'll just answer one question at a time, please. Yes, sir. I have actually two Good questions uh, related, to, related to one another. Oh. Stop. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Please stop Please. asking so many questions. I request the esteemed participants to kindly ask only one question at a time. One question was already asked. So the esteemed, respected, uh, uh, eminent speaker will answer. So just wait for the answer. Thank you. So please, sir. Okay, ma'am. Repeat the question, ma'am. Ma Nidhi, ma'am, please repeat the question. How many members are in the board, sir? That is the How question, many sir. members are in the? Yeah. If it is UPSC, generally no. odd number. The board invariably have either no. three, five, or seven. Depending on the level of the examination, it begins with the three, and if it is civil service IAS examination, the maximum number is seven. Out of the seven members, the five members are authorized to assess and give marks. The remaining two members are observers. They simply keep watching and observing you. Whereas the, when it comes to the five-member board, there are generally four members allocated marks. One member is the observer. If it is a technical subjects like engineering surveys, geological surveys, you may not have a general psychologist, not of I mean subject specialists because it's, it's on rotation. Board members vary from board to board and day to day. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for this uh, opportunity. Hello, sir. One, Entire one, GSA one GSA last GSA question, sir. Grateful. One last question, sir, one. please. One last sir, question. Actually, my, my question is about the addressing the question. As you have already mentioned your example of giving interview and uh, the failure in your first attempt. So I just want to ask you how to address the question because sometimes the question are being the opinion, opinion varies with your panel member and with the interviewer. So how to address the question particularly? And the second thing is the language of interview. 
uh, about some uh, sometimes we cannot express actually what I have I have learned to someone uh, in some uh, specific language. So is there any issue about the language? Answer the first question. Like yeah. if you are if I am a member, uh, I ask some lengthy question which has no meaning. You are, you are not clear. Don't jump to answer when the question is not clear to you. You have a right to, to request the member to repeat the question, sir. Forgive me. Can you repeat, sir, please? Kindly repeat the question, sir. The member is duty bound to repeat the question. It's up to him to repeat. Or he may not, he doesn't want to repeat it. Okay, next member. You are not, you are not given negative mark for that. But Without actually understanding the question, you are guessing and trying to answer that question, which is definitely wrong. If the question is not clear, that is the member's problem, not yours. Please keep it in mind. If my 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 question is not clear to the to the to the interviewer, whose problem is that? It's not it's not the interviewer's problem, it is the board member problem. The chairman he knows about that member. Next question. Next member. So if the question is too lengthy, you wait. That's why carry this notebook. Whatever the member is telling, write down. You have a right to. You can you can take your own time. You become clear about the question. You may ask again, sir. What is that question you are asking? You have a right to, to that that speaks about your confidence. That's called the self-confidence. You are very self-confident about yourself. Then only with the politeness, you will ask, oh, sir, can you repeat it? The second question you are, you are coming to, the, what is the second part of your question, please, quickly? Uh, uh, that was about the language of interview because- Language, yeah, exactly. See, uh, I'll take the, my example. My example. Though I studied, I'm not that confident with the English. In the UPSC application form, they clearly mention which language you prefer while they in the interview. Suppose Telugu is my mother tongue. Had I opted for Telugu, I should have been written my mains in that language. Then only I can exercise my right to choose that language. Suppose I have written mains in the Telugu language, Telugu medium. I can opt for Telugu interview or opt for English. No problem. Then there will be an interpreter. Suppose I want to give my interview in Telugu, my mother tongue, in, in Telugu. So there is an interpreter to translate my Telugu answer for the benefit of members. For the benefit of the members. So that's why language you have in the application. I don't know about the geological GSI the recruitment application through UPSC. I don't know. Geological survey. Uh, sorry. Uh, sir, in geological survey that has not been specified about your language of interview. I think. Uh, yeah. Then 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 you can you can opt for you can read politely say sir my. I'm not confident about the English. What, which language you want us? So that, sir, Hindi, no problem. Mother tongue, see, the UPS is very accommodating. Suppose I'm a Canada speaking person. I'm neither good at Hindi nor at English. No problem. They will give you the opportunity. They will call an interpreter, Canada speaking, and I can assure you they will accommodate. UPS is not punishing here. UPS is there to facilitate, to sell, not to punish or not to penalize. Please. It's not a punishing organization. It's a selective organization. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to Mr. Venkat and the sir, entire... One last question, sir. Thank you. Sir, one oh, one no, no last question, please. Oh. No last question, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very I'm much. Because I'm, I'm open. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Grateful to you all. Hello, sir. Uh, Nidhi? Nidhi? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, already, uh, Vice Chancellor Sahib has joined Yam Jagannathar. Please welcome him. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we would. Uh, I extend a hearty and warm welcome to Dr. M. Jagannath Rao, Vice Chancellor of Adhikavi Nanya University, Rajamundri. It's a privilege to have, sir, of such an esteemed uh, reputation, such a great scholar, such a great teacher, with us in this training. May I now request respected Shri C.H. Venkateshwar Rao, sir, to kindly uh, read about him. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Namaskar.
Namaskar, and uh, indeed it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome Professor M. Jagan, Vice Chancellor of Adhikavi Nandaya University. He is, uh, in fact, it's a pleasure. He is my teacher in Andhra University. Uh, I'm a privilege to welcome Sri M. Jagan Nadarosa. So he is the Vice Chancellor of Adhikavi Nandaya University. He got his Master's in Green University in, uh, from Alaska, USA. He got his PhD from Andhra University in 1985. He joined as assistant professor in the Department of Geology in 1986, later promoted to professor in HOD of the department. He is a serious researcher in the, and academician, having the three and a half decades experience. He had 150 papers, national and international journals. 33 scholars got his PhDs under his guidance. His students are only from geology, but also computer science, geoengineering, geophysics, and elite physics. He has strong research collaboration with various organizations, US, Canada, Australia. He has completed 800 projects like DST, UGC, CSIR, DOD, APMDC, like that. Uh, and he has a vast experience in administration. He held various administrative positions, director for uh, information management center, Andhra University, dean and PG professional examinations, Andhra University, director of international students affairs, Andhra University, director of Delta Studies, Andhra University, chairman of board of studies, uh, Department of Geosciences, Ambedkar University, Srikakulam, HOD Department of Geology. Uh, he has filed a uh, patent entitled an innovative model that explains the genesis of Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea, which is under consideration. He got many awards and honors, including Dr. Sarvepalli Radhakrishna Award, the best recognition award in the year 2019. Awarded scientist of the year 2017, by National Environmental Science Academy. He was an editorial board, of, board member of uh, Indian Journal of Environmental and Eco Planning. He is the member of various professional scientific bodies, national and international repeat. He is a NAC accessor and more. He is a member of various boards of selection committees at national and state. In the earlier selection includes uh, selections include UPSC civil services, group services. UPSC exam in 1995, UPSC geology exam. And his vision to see the Adhikavi Nanda University into international institutions for education, research training, and consultancy. I welcome you, sir. Please, uh, over to you, sir. Oh, thank you, Venkateshwar Agaru, uh, and also uh, Madam uh, Nithi and uh, all others. Uh, and uh, I'm extremely happy. Uh, to be here today uh, in connection with the uh, kind of uh, some inputs for how to prepare for the personality test or the interview for the UPSC geoscientists examination. I'm extremely happy that uh, the earlier speaker as well, uh, Sri GHP Raju, is happened to be my student also. So my uh, talk will be, first of all, I'll give you some uh, uh, inputs and some points, uh, how to be successful, because uh, whatever we want to say for the preparation or for the interview, I always feel that interview as actually will test you, your personality and your IQ and your leadership. And there is no such preparation because it is already there. You, you have a career behind you. So whatever it is there and establish the career, based on that, the questions will be asked by the board members. However, there are the, based on the experience, based on experience as, a, as an expert member in various research boards, various interview boards. I wanted to give you some of the, some of the inputs or some of the tricks of the trade, how to be successful. Because sometimes the candidates, though they are very intelligent, they're knowledgeable, but still uh, sometimes because of their own mistakes, they fail miserably in the interviews, despite their knowledge in the subject. So those inputs, those techniques, uh, and those uh, tips, I think will be useful to all the candidates today who are attending uh, this wonderful program uh, in this afternoon. So I, first of all, I say good afternoon to all of them. And uh, I will be giving those inputs initially and last five, 10 minutes, maybe you can ask some of the questions. 
So by the time you uh, reach the interview stage, maybe uh, the interview, they'll be called maybe one is to two or one is to three or, or some ratio, you will be there uh, at the interview level. So you have done well at written examination. So you're uh, just uh, so happy that you will be attending the interview. Uh, as far as I know, when the UPSC is a professional body, so there are some indications or some guidelines even to the interview board members. So they cannot ask questions just like that from the sky. So there, is, there are Oscar, maybe the expert should bring out what is the best out of the candidate. He's not there to test his ignorance. What he knows should be brought out. What he doesn't know is not a matter. So that is what is indicated to all the experts. So first of all, you realize that questions won't come from the sky. The questions will come based on your background, your presentation, your introduction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So which we'll be discussing now. The first of all, when you attend the personal interview, it is a realize, don't worry, don't be anxious. They will be asking you, they'll be making you comfortable. They will be asking you fundamentals only. They don't want to go into very deep and depth of the subjects because they'll be asking you at a master's level. So whatever you have studied at your the university at master's level, those fundamentals. So you should be very strong in fundamentals. So first of all, they'll start with your background. So what is your personal background? So uh, you tell me about your personal background. So they ask a committee or the chairman, uh, chairperson will ask, okay, Mr. X, you, you tell me about your background, your personal background, the academic background, uh, some family background, and where from you came, your place of birth, your native place, etc. cetera. But then, they may ask you some questions like, so what is your interest to choose because you have chosen geology as your career? So what is a specific interest about the geology? So tell me about your academics. So how you performed in your academics? So what is the rank you have obtained? So what is the specialization? What you have done uh, in the final year as a specialization? And also, do you have any special subject of interest? So these are the general questions based on which they wanted to further extend into deep into the interview. So first of all, suppose they ask you our academic background, academic interest, what you have done at the project or specialization and your subject of interest, if any, like that, these questions, they start. So this is where you need to be very careful. When you are telling, suppose, you came from some area, suppose your native place is Vishakhapatnam. So I'm talking about little more of geology, then we can think about the, the physics and chemistry candidate as well. So then they'll ask you, what is the geology of Vishakhapatnam? Can you tell me something about the geology of Vishakhapatnam? What are the rock types? What is the composition of those rock types? What is the age of those rock formations? What are the economic minerals associated with Eastern Gods? How, what is the genesis? Those, those things you should be able to know. Suppose while talking that, you have to be very careful in your answer because based on your answer, further questions will be asked by the next member or the members. Suppose you have mentioned something the origin about these granulate faces, that is the metamorphic grade under which these Eastern Gods are formed. Then naturally, you should be able to know what is granulate faces. As such, what is a faces itself? What is the concept of faces? Who introduces the term faces? What are the other faces from very low temperature to high temperature? What are the index minerals in those faces? What is the composition of those index minerals? Then they will go into those details. So you have mentioned one technical sentence of the granulitic facies. They don't stop there. They wanted to 
go detailed way into the fascist concept. What is all about fascists? Who introduced? What is Escola's theory of fascists? What is Greensist? Then what is Ampipolite? What is the other fascists? What is Aclogite? What are the index minerals in those fascists? So when you are telling about your geology of the area, whatever you mention in your description, you should be very, very careful and you should know each and every point of that description. That is very, very, very important. So if you talk some loosely, some, some, uh, some word or uh, some sentence, so it is a, a kind of uh, origin of uh, uh, Eastern Gods. And when you say, I have worked on uh, Eastern Gods in my project also, worked on the bauxite deposits of Eastern Gods. Suppose you said like that. Then you have to be ready with the information. What is bauxite? How bauxite is formed? Where the deposits are? What are the bauxitic minerals? What is the difference between laterite and bauxite? How, what are the minerals in the bauxite? Where gibbsite is formed? Why, why diaspora is not in Eastern Ghats? Like that many, many, many questions will crop up because you have mentioned that word bauxite. So you should be, when you are talking about your area, geology, you should be knowing each and every word and the details of that word. So that is the most important part, because I always say one thing to my students. They ask me, sir, you conduct mock interviews for me. So I conduct mock interviews. So only the interview pattern or the trend will be, will be in the hands of candidate only. I always say that. You are the, you are the person to control the trend of your interview, how it should go. Because whatever you say, those questions will be asked further on those technical terms, on the description, on the area, what you have mentioned in the given answer. Suppose you mention, sir, I have done a specialization. What is specialization? I have done a remote sensing and GIS applications of so and so area where I wanted to evaluate the groundwater potential using remote sensing and GIS studies. When you say that, you are supposed to know all the basic and advanced information of remote sensing. What is GIS? What kind of software you have used? What is meant by spatial database? How, how these remote sensing and GIS are linked? What is a thematic map? And they will go into details of remote sensing. What kind of images are there? What are the resolution? What is meant by FCC? All those things you should be able to tell. Then only you should mention of your project work. So whenever you say, whether it's the geology of your area or your project work or anything, please remember you are supposed to know all the details from fundamentals to the advances of that particular title of your project that you have mentioned. That is very, very, very important. So some people say something loosely, sir, I have worked on remote sensing of so-and-so. He doesn't know what is meant by remote sensing, what is meant by electromagnetic radiation, what is meant by uh, GIS, all those things he doesn't know. What is a spatial database? What are various softwares in spatial database? How the thematic maps are prepared, et cetera, et cetera. He doesn't know, but still simply mentioned that. Then the questions will, will be like, flow, they'll be like asked by all the experts. You will become miserable in the interview. So that is the very important point. You need to realize that whatever you wanted to say, you should be knowing it completely. Another important thing, if you do not know, you please be honest to say, sir, I do not know that. Don't try to bluff the experts. By bluffing, what will happen is, you will be, the, the experts will lose interest on you because you wanted to bluff, you wanted to cheat them. So, 
let us be very honest with the expert members similarly another thing is the most important and difficult part is many candidates if suppose they ask what is your subject of interest so here the subject may be you are really interested in x subject but here for the interview board you should be telling the subject which is more limited in nature suppose if you say geochemistry then any question from the sky they can ask geochemistry or are you geochemistry or trace element of geochemistry or cosmic chemistry or space chemistry anything they can go geochemistry such a vast subject so it is a wrong choice you have selected so select such a subject which is having a lim limited only limited scope suppose you do not like stratigraphy but still still i suggest you tell stratigraphy as your subject of interest because maximum they ask you order of superposition the type area the economic minerals in each formation the ages the lithology the paleontological composition the mineralogical or lithological composition the unconformities etc 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 they ask so at least you can justify that if you say geochemistry as your uh, choice it is a vast subject similarly mineralogy so in this way okay you can tell ore minerals or ore minerals some extent you can satisfy uh, the experts so in this way what i suggest you is you have to bring the experts into your fold by having your choice of the subject or your specialization or your subject that you like or your area of geology etc 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 while telling so you can also say sir in the student seminar i have presented a paper on so and so so you are giving them an indication sir please ask questions on, on that so naturally uh, what is the title of your paper he will ask and the next member will ask then you are ready with that because you have prepared well about that paper you have presented in the student seminar and the class seminar so naturally you are dragging them into your line so you have dragging them into your line similarly you have to end with something some statement so that the next member next member will catch that point will try to ask that information so i always feel don't tell just like that in general way try to be very crisp in the subject you are mentioning and you are mentioning whatever you mention you are supposed to know everything everything every minutest thing in that subject otherwise don't mention at all otherwise you will be end up in the problem similarly now geo scientist exam is also being uh, for uh, being conducted for the chemistry physics and geophysics students so at the end of the day when you talk about the geo scientist the chemistry fellows maybe is a pure chemist but still he should be able to tell what a chemist will be doing in the geological exploration or in the geological survey of india i suggest you to go through the website of uh, gsi or other information and try to know what a chemistry fellow will be doing will be performing in gsi similarly what a physics fellow will be doing suppose as a chemistry fellow you will be working as a geochemist so many geologists will be bringing a lot of samples the samples need to be analyzed using various instrumental techniques so you need to know what is geochemistry how to analyze a rock sample to analyze a rock sample what is the methodology involved how do you digest a given sample what are the methods of digestion 
what are the equipment used in analyzing major minor trace elements etc etc you should know similarly a physics fellow will be working as a geophysicist what a geophysicist fellow will be doing uh, in geological survey of india you should be knowing though you are not directly connected with geology you should be able to know the fundamentals of geology the geology of india the rock formations of india ore deposits of india we ready with that try to be friendly with some geology student and discuss a land be comfortable with the geology even if they ask questions on geology you should be able to tell besides your basic chemistry and basic physics so similarly there are personal traits don't be anxious don't be anxious in the, while attending the interview so anxiety will be due to fear of failure so don't have that fear don't have the fear of failure when you prepare well for the interview you have that kind of confidence so nobody will expect that you are encyclopedia of earth sciences they wanted to be make you comfortable whatever you know you need to present that well and convincingly and very intelligently that's what i say so if there are any questions from the uh, audience or the members i think uh, we'll give some time for that thank you uh, hello uh, nidhi hello nidhi yes sir uh, yes okay. four questions nidhi four questions Please, uh, just to Thanks, tell sir. them clearly. Hello, only four. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. One at a time. Yeah, Hello. yeah. So, all Hello. of you, please. Uh, I request to ask one question at a time. Let us have from the lady first. Bolly, ma'am. Hello. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Sir, my Hello. question is: If in interview something uh, we answered incorrect by mis. So later on, should it be corrected by us if chances are given, or uh, how to tackle the situation? That means you have uh, mentioned that uh, some some wrong answer you have given. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, you, have, uh, you have realized that. Yes, sir. So you can you can always correct it humbly, stating that. So by uh, by mistake, by uh, this thing, I have confused. But uh, this is the right answer because uh, that is always there. They they'll accept that. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, and one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Hello. Now, yes. Neha, you may ask. Hello. Please be one at a time. I request again. Neha, please ask. Hello. 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 Yeah, Neha, you are asking something. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Sai yeah. Kumar ji, we can get your voice. Can you go ahead with your query, please? hello good afternoon sir good afternoon sir i have faced this question at interview session general yeah. question yeah sir uh, uh, actually the question is uh, up to schooling my i have studied in government after then i have shifted to the private sector so mm -hmm. why you have been shifted to the private sector and mm. this question sir after yeah. then from uh, 10th standard to msc level your percentage has been decreased what is the reason behind about it this question mm -hmm. and last question is that what is your weakness miss should i mention straight forwardly or should be given in a positive way these three questions i had doubts sir yeah the, the last question is uh, what is our weak point means you should be giving uh, uh, a, any intelligent answer and it should be positive also the weak point is sir my weak point is uh, i always want to read books so i i spend more time on reading sometimes even my family members object that but still i cannot avoid that that is a very positive Big point for you. Similarly, the second question is: You said that you have decreased your performance from 10th to degree. Uh, that is very personal question. You have to answer that. I I cannot answer that because what has happened in your life, uh, you know better than me. I do not know anything about why you have performed poorly. The first question is: Why you have changed uh, from the uh, government school to private school? Again, you have to tell that uh, in a positive way. Whatever the reason may be, you tell. that in our area there are no high school of government high school only a private high school is uh, prevailing so i had to join in that school like that you can give the answer in a positive way excuse me sir yeah. 
थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर आंसरिंग या प्लीज प्लीज मैम या गायत्री जी प्लीज गो हेड yes i have a question uh, if uh, my special area what i am mentioning is tectonism in himalayas but uh, tectonism in himalayas but uh, my post is hydrogeology so should i mention hydrogeology there or i can mention uh, this tectonism and uh, tectonism in himalayas or about tectonism is my uh, specialization area i want to specialize in yo okay uh, gayatri the question is though you are referring for the hydrogeologist position or a geologist position whatever it may be you tell me your yes, specialization, specialization honestly honestly it is not a problem uh, it is not uh, okay uh, but uh, but if if they will ask uh, geo- hydrogeology questions or these questions that was my uh, point to ask this question No, no, no. You, when you said a specialization, definitely they ask questions on specialization. You have mentioned, but uh, sir, uh, I am not specialized uh, specializing in that subject. I have interest in that subject. If I am uh, quoting that, I have interest in that subject. They will ask that questions or hydrogeology based questions. That was my question. That, that's what I told you. Know whatever you say, whether you have interest in something means definitely they ask questions on that. Without knowing oh, that. Without knowing, having the knowledge of that, don't say that you have interest in that. Why? Why you are unnecessarily uh, putting putting you in yourself in the trouble? You say whatever okay, you sir. know better. What? Actually, you know my better. project also was, uh, sir. Uh, my project also was based on that. Uh, uh, I have not uh, mentioned now. I have not gone to that uh, area, but uh, my project will be on the, that subject today. That's why I just asked you. Whatever it may be, even if you do project on tectonism of Himalayas. You you must be confident and thorough with the subject. Otherwise, okay, don't tell sir. that. Don't tell that because unless you are not confident, you do not have any idea of that fully. And don't because it is tectonism is a big topic. Himalayan tectonism is a big, big, big topic. So a lot okay, of work sir. is done. You cannot answer those questions. So be comfortable. You tell things which yes, are sir, in your hand. Yes, sir. If they hand. if they tell uh, if they only will uh, suggest or I should speak about it. Which topic are you comfortable with? No, that's what they ask you only. What is your specialization? What is your subject of interest? That's what I told you know all these twenty-five uh, minutes. You you are oh, building, you have to tell that. They will ask you what is your subject of interest? What is your specialization? In which area you have done your project? They will ask you. you that's what you know. Interview will be in your hands only. You will tell in a in a good way and subject you know. The questions will be from that area only. Understand? Okay, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. I think it's very well answered again and again, Gayatri, ma'am. I hope you are satisfied. Sir has very categorically answered. We can take only. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. If I may ask one question. Only this is the last one, please. This is the last one. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, um, uh, sir, my question is: uh, I have taken a year drop for the preparation of GSI, and uh, when I go for a uh, for the inter. Uh, they will ask me about it. So how can I tackle that I did uh, in during my preparation time or my year drop? I was preparing. Year drop for, from what? For uh, preparation for sir, uh, for GSI preparation sir. Uh, you you frankly you, you tell because you want it to be very successful, hundred percent successful. That's why you have taken uh, one year uh, for your preparation only. You, it's uh, it should be honest enough. Okay, sir. Like we don't have to exaggerate something else like this. No, 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 no. Because at the end of the day, everybody wanted to be successful in the examination. So you wanted more time. So you have taken an off, whether it's from the job or from other work, and you have prepared for the GSI. So it indicates your seriousness. It is a positive only. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I have one question, ma'am. Can I ask? Yeah, I believe sir has very limited time, so we will again be joining as I said tomorrow. We'll have an interview. Okay, one sir. Okay, sir. Fine. We can have one last, last question, question, ma'am. Please. Yes, ma'am. Sir, my question is: uh, uh, you mentioned it. Uh, um, uh, subject interest. We should uh, not mention on petrology uh, that. 
uh, means uh, I missed that part. So how mention the interest of subject? Uh, means in English pathology, can we mention very less part of that or how to um, recommend? No, I told I, I told you Sangamitra Jana. I told yes. you maybe you missed that part. So whatever, maybe you're really interested in some yes, subject sir. like geochemistry or igneous petrology, etc. But I always, because at the end of the day, you want to be successful in the interview. So you have to choose such a subject which is a limited yes. scope. Because if you say the igneous petrology is a vast yes. subject, they can ask anything, anything from the sky, anything can be asked. So you should be careful enough while choosing the subject of interest. So I told people, like you, you, you select stratigraphy, you select the paleontology if you have any interest. You select uh, maybe economic to some extent. extent. So they are limited areas so that if you are thorough with the subject, definitely you will be successful. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. My colleague is Dr. Bishwati Gangopadhyay, sir. He is, he is the Deputy Director General, Regional Training Divisions and Field Training Center, sir. He will be giving a vote of thanks, sir. Please, sir. Uh, over to Bishwati, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I am taking the privilege and the core of our heart and on behalf of the American Society to Mr. Hagmar, the deepest and most heartiest stay your precious time in the budding aspirants. We made ourselves this particular program a lively one. So many questions are coming, and I know in the chat box a number of questions are coming. Till you have patiently answered not a single one. One after another, you are answering from a single candidate. It shows your dedication towards the subject, towards the upliftment of the aspirants. This Thank you. remains of your personal stature as a scientist, as an administrator also. We take the privilege for having you Thank with you. us through this digital platform. And we hope you will extend uh, the similar cooperation that we are extending in future events. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Biswajit. Uh, thank you, Biswajit Gangopadai. And I am also privileged to have this opportunity. And I am always uh, believe I am a teacher first, uh, then the vice chancellor next. And that's why I am a geology. <laughs> I am a geology teacher first and a professor first. But then I am a vice chancellor now. Uh, it is nice uh, to have uh, to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Venkatesh Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Huh. So we have uh, finished Continue, uh, Continue, the please, interview. Sir. Yes, sir. We have finished the interview uh, skills and interview preparation sessions by two very eminent speakers and uh, who are stalwarts in their respective fields. We had it from Sri Raju sir, an IPS officer himself, and we had it from Dr. M. Jagannath Rao sir, Vice Chancellor of the University. So I hope the participants have benefited a lot from this discussion as to how to develop the interview skills. So we were really privileged to have them. Now we will be having a geology session, which will be uh, presented by the recently recruited and joint geologist, the toppers of the examination of the UPSC combined geoscientist exam from the geology stream, who will be discussing their experience with the participants so that they share and suggest the participants they give them guidance as to how to prepare for the geology stream. So we can have a short break of five minutes. Please do not five leave minutes. the meeting. Please, yes, sir, five minutes. Please do not leave the meeting. Stay in the meeting. You can just have some water and just stretch out a little. And after five minutes, we immediately start with the geological stream people who will be discussing about the preparation for geology part. Thank you.
sir 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 how do you like sir both I welcome the participants again after a very short break of five minutes so that you could just have some water and be prepared for the next session. This particular e-session will deal with the preparation for the geology stream so that the post of geologist in Geological Survey of India or the post of hydrogeologist in Central Groundwater Board. For these posts, a candidate has to appear for the geology examination. So we have the newly joined officers, 
the geologist in the geological survey of india the toppers in the respective stream of the examination and they will be providing guidance and suggestions for effective preparation of geology so we have with us long kumar and binayak mohanty who will be presenting for the geology stream may i welcome our uh, anjali kept sharing the screen please i give a hearty and warm welcome to the geology streams the geologist who will be discussing as to how effectively prepare yes they are very much they have joined us and they are starting to share the content gives me a pleasure to introduce them binayak mohanty tali lebdan long kumar anjali upadhyay who will be taking part in this guide e session of interaction with the participants i'll hand it over to anjali and the group please thank you so much you may kindly start thank you nidhi mishra ma'am for your kind words for introducing us good evening everyone i am binayak mohanty geologist at geological survey of india uh, me discussing about the effective preparation strategies for upsc combined geoscientist and uh, geoscientist examination for geology paper as you must be aware in the year 2020 the pattern for this exam changed which consists of three stages first stage for prelims then second after you qualify prelims there is mains exam and then the third stage is interview for prelims it's a objective paper you have two objective papers and for mains exam there are three subjective papers so the first i will be discussing about the prelims part the paper 2 part uh, exactly the geology part and the paper 1 for general studies has already been discussed by nidhi mishra ma'am in the forenoon session so i will be dealing with the paper 2 geology part start let me tell you the format for this paper the question paper will be set in english only there would be 120 questions and for 300 marks which consist of 10 topics uh, as we can see in the syllabus there are 10 topics which you need to cover for your preparation and it is of uh, two hours in online mode examination pattern and each question carries equal weightage and uh, for there are negative marks for your negative response so you have to be very careful in that regards and there is one thing to you need to understand that these questions are very, uh, very conceptual and from very fundamental part of the subject now we'll begin with topic wise we have to see that what are the main topics that you need to consider or that you need to focus on while preparing for uh, subject wise when it comes to physical geology or structural geology we'll be discussing we'll be dealing with that and subsequently we'll be telling you the reference materials of the books that you need to uh, refer for in order to cover all the subjects all these topics and uh, before i start i would suggest you to have an integrated approach while preparing for prelims as well as for mains exam uh, in, by integrated approach i means you have to uh, prepare simultaneously uh, you don't have to first prepare for prelims part and then go for mains once you get selected i would suggest you to make it together so that uh, in that your level of confidence will in, in that way so i'll start with physical geology physical geology paper you can expect questions uh, the important most important topics uh, like internal structures of the earth like uh, they they would ask about the boundaries about discontinuities uh, in that way the simple questions and all like uh, boundaries between cl and cima in that manner and you could expect questions from earthquakes volcanoes the fundamental part and concepts of plate tectonics sea floor spreading continental drift also and soil profile soil profile and soil types and isostasy and relative adjustment is an important uh, is an uh, concept which you need to understand you need to learn it well because you 
can always expect uh, at least two questions from in that paper and in from that subject and of course the geomorphic processes and landforms of different by different geomorphic agents like river wind glaciers glacier is the most important part i can i can say in that way you have to prepare and for that book which you can cover all these topics i would suggest you uh, to read earth materials by kb hefferman and john o'brien where all these topics can be covered easily and you will feel confident about when you are answering the questions Yeah. Now coming to the second topic, that is structural geology. For structural geology, you, uh, it is an important topic in any exam. So you will be uh, putting your focus, putting your uh, you should be concentrating on topics like rheological properties of rock, uh, classification of folds and faults, uh, their mechanisms, basic definitions like rake, pitch, plunge, deep strike. Related to those fundamental concepts, uh, questions can be asked. More circle and criteria for failures of rock. Uh, study of the topo sheets is important. Also, I would and uh, V rules and outro pattern. Suppose uh, it is given like this: uh, the dip of the bed has been given, and the slope of the valley is given. So you need to understand what kind of outcrop it would produce. So in there are different cases. So you need to study that in well in details. And stereographic projection for structural elements that we usually do for in the practicals. And also you need to have a clear cut concept about this so we can answer during our exams. For the books regarding the books, I would suggest uh, the structural geology by Hacken Fosen is a very good book. You can cover all these topics from here. And structural geology by M. P. Billings regarding the faults, pi, and beta diagrams, you can do that. And for structural geology by S. K. Ghost, uh, because superposed deformation, you can always uh, expect questions from superposed deformation. So S. K. Ghost is a good book where you can refer to all for all these topics. Now moving to the third topic, that is mineralogy. Uh, if you see the mineralogy part, it is divided into two: mineralogy and crystallography. In mineralogy, you can uh, ex uh, expect questions from polymorphism, isomorphism, exolutions, and all. With examples, you need to remember which mineral shows which poly uh, polymorphism and which minerals examples of minerals which show isomorphism. Uh, the physical and optical properties of minerals, the basic minerals, silicate minerals like pyroxene, amphibole. You need to remember their physical properties as well as their optical properties. Anything can, could be asked. And uh, similarly, the silicate group of minerals like uh, for nesosilicate, sorosilicates, their uh, silicon is to oxygen ratio. You need to remember all those basic questions. I mean, the basic things you need to remember in order to answer properly. Now, the second part of this uh, topic uh, for mineralogy that is crystallography, uh, where you can uh, always get questions from crystal classes, the highest symmetry for normal classes, radio ratio rule. Uh, it has been seen and uh, planet point groups. You can always get questions from that. Also, so you need to prepare that well. For that, you need uh, mineralogy by Dexter Perkins and introduction to mineralogy by W. D. Nese. I believe these are the two books would be enough for the prelims part at least to cover all these subjects, all these topics. Now, moving to the fourth part, the fourth subject that is igneous petrology. For igneous petrology, uh, IUGS classification is the most important thing. You just need to remember that uh, diagram and all of uh, igneous textures, forms. Also, you need to remember. And bond reaction series is important. Uh, that is also, and you need to consider while preparing. And processes of magma generations and differentiation. There are different processes. You need to not just to understand the definition as well as also you need to remember what are the fundamental uh, technique. I mean the fundamental part of that, uh, the essential part of that process, uh, uh, pr um, process of magma generation. So that anything could be asked. Now the phase rule is in an important concept where you could be asked about the degrees of freedom and all, uh, and uh, about the phase rule equation also that has been seen. And systems like incongruent and congruent melting, binary diagrams, ternary diagrams, you can always expect questions from there also. And igneous rocks for mainly for granite, granitic suits of rocks or basaltic rocks, lamprophiles also, you expect questions from them. So you need to prepare well for that part also. Regarding the books, uh, I would suggest uh, 
Igneous Petrology by Mihir K. Bose is a very good book in Indian author context. And uh, with respect to foreign author context, uh, Principles uh, of Igneous uh, and Metamorphic Petrology by John D. Winter is a very good book to cover all your topics which have been mentioned here and overall for the overall completion of your syllabus. Now, moving to the metamorphic petrology part. In metamorphic petrology, you expect you uh, you can uh, you can expect questions from types of metamorphism. Metamorphic textures is also important, and uh, metamorphic phases is one of the most important topics that you shouldn't forget to uh, I mean to study it, understand it well, not just the temperature, pressure, and the mineralogical composition of that particular phases, but also the uh, interrelationship in with respect to the facies series and well as with the plate tectonics as well. And you need to understand the crystallization and deformation relationship. And also, uh, there is also one concept of paired metamorphic belts also. You just you need to remember all those. And classification of metamorphic rocks and shear zone rocks concept. So you need to understand, you need to learn it well in order, because there will be questions from all topics for sure. Otherwise, there are many, there are topics in syllabus you can always get. So, but which I believe that uh, you can uh, have questions from there in any time. Now, the book is again the principles of igneous, uh, igneous and metamorphic petrology by John D. Winter. It, this uh, this book, one book is quite enough to cover all these topics for metamorphic petrology. Now, for sedimentology part, uh, sedimentology part, sedimentary structures is most important and uh, as well as sedimentary structures the primary sedimentary structures sedimentary uh, secondary structures chemically formed uh, structures you just need to understand all those things with proper diagrams with proper understanding their mode of formation their environment their morphology etc and uh, for textural and mineralogical maturity of different sedimentary rocks as well and uh, classification of sedimentary rocks like for sandstone carbonate Fox classification, Dunham classification for limestone. These are the classification, uh, the the things that have been named after scientists, the classification schemes. You just need to remember that, which is always helpful from exam point of view. And of course, the questions are being asked from sedimentary environments as well. So you just need to look after that also. The conceptual part, just the basic part, but the conceptual, you just need to understand the concept for that. And for that purpose, you need just three books, I would say. The Principles of Sedimentology and Stratigraphy by Sandbox. Uh, sedimentology by S.M. Sen Gupta for classification of, of rocks and all. Sedimentology and stratigraphy by Gary Nichols for sedimentary and uh, for understanding the sedimentary different sedimentary environments. Now moving on to the paleontology part. For paleontology, uh, there will be questions from favorable conditions for fossilization, uh, taphonomy, taxonomy. There would be questions from morphology and ecology of uh, invertebrate fossils, uh, and uh, you uh, like uh, brachiopores, lamellibranchials, and trilobites, and all uh, evolution of vertebrate fossils as well. Uh, morphology of microfossils like foraminifera is an important diatoms, ostracods, all this, and carbonate uh, carbonate uh, compensation depth is an important concept that you need to understand. You need to learn that well as well. Stromatolites and uh, Gondwana rocks and Gondwana fossils is always important. You always get at least one question from that part also. Regarding the books, uh, introduction of Introduction to Paleontology by Amal Das Gupta in vertebrate and vertebrate paleontology. For that, you can refer as well as for fossils and stromatolites and for paleontology by P.C. Jain and Ananta Raman. Uh, examples uh, you can just remember for invertebrate paleontology and their ecology, their morphology. You can just read from there also. And uh, there is another one book micro for micro paleontology principles and applications by Pratul Kumar Saraswati and M S Srinivasan. You can refer to that book for micro fossils as well. Now the stratigraphy part. If you see the stratigraphy part in the syllabus, uh, there are two things. One is principles of stratigraphy and there is Indian stratigraphy. So I believe because there are 10 subjects, as I said earlier, and there are 120 questions. So at least from one subject, you would be getting expecting at least 12, 12 questions. So in that way, you cannot just skip just one topic. So you have to read it properly. So you have to complete your syllabus uh, judiciously. And for that stratigraphy of uh, first uh, principles of stratigraphy, you would always expect but some questions from there and from questions from Indian stratigraphy as well. So from principles of stratigraphy, you will be getting some principles. There are different principles, law of superposition and all. Uh, and from uh, you also get questions for lithostratigraphy, chronostratigraphy, biostratigraphy as well. And regarding the Indian uh, stratigraphy part, you need to remember this proper stratigraphic sequence for Dhavar, Singbum, and Aravali, as well as for different proteogenic mobile belts, phenologic stratigraphy like uh, Paleozoic of Kashmir, 
Kach, Trichina Poly, uh, Cretaceous of Trichina Poly and Shivaliks. These are the important, but you can always uh, try to cover the whole syllabus. These are the, I could say these are the most important, but you just need to cover the whole syllabus as well. Coal and Gondwanas are all, always an important topic in stratigraphy when it comes to the stratigraphy part. And Himalayan geology and tectonics, you can always expect some questions. For regarding the books, I would say the Geology of India by Ramakrishnan and Vaidyanathan, which is a publication of Geological Society of India. Why it is important? Because the stratigraphic sequences which have been given is given by Geological, uh, Geological Survey of India only. So it is the most accepted and the most important. So it is my kind advice to all of you that to follow that book, particularly when it comes to stratigraphic sequence. So both the volume for volume one and volume two and there is another part for principles of uh, to understand to read the principles of stratigraphy sedimentology and stratigraphy by sandbox is uh, quite enough good enough so if you want to relate stratigraphy with respect to the uh, plate tectonics part the making of india geodynamic evolution by case is very good you can also refer to understand the plate tectonics concept what is the reason behind the formation of basins and cratons, mobile wells, everything. Now, moving to the uh, second uh, second last, economic geology. In economic geology, the processes for different ore formation uh, are important. The most imp two important, I would say, hydrothermal uh, types of deposits and supergene deposits. And uh, there are different terminologies when it comes to ore geology, like tenor, gang, proteor, ore. You just, remember to you just need to remember that uh, terms and what are the definitions. The ore minerals and their uh, association with the host rock and their mode of occurrences is also important. You just need to look at that. And Indian mineral deposits, its distribution and with respect to its age. Like uh, then for the next part, it's coal and petroleum. For coal, you need to understand the formation and distribution uh, in India, like for lignite deposits, where the lignite deposits, bituminous deposits, anthracites, all those things. And for petroleum also, you just need to understand uh, origin of uh, origin rocks, uh, source rock, cap rocks, migration trap. These are all the terminologies that you need to understand and uh, understand the concept as well for prelims when it comes to prelims exam. So very small, very fundamental questions could be asked from these topics. Now regarding the uh, book for your reference, you could refer to classification of ore deposits by Batman uh, in order to understand the processes for formation. There is another one book by Lawrence Rock, Introduction to Ore Forming Processes. You can always refer to that book also, uh, which would give you a good uh, broad perspective idea about the ore, different ore formation processes for ore formations. And Ore Geology and Industrial Minerals by Anthony M. Evans is also a nice book. You can refer to that also. And uh, regarding the economic Indian economic deposits, uh, like uh, uh, you can refer to Economic Geology by Umeshwar Prasad. It's, uh, it's a good book. You can always refer to that. Now, the last part, this is Hydrogeology. Although in geology, uh, we, uh, for geologist exam, for geologist post, we do not uh, have this paper in subjective part, but in uh, prelims, because it's a common paper for both the geologists as well as hydrogeologists. So we will be getting questions from hydrogeology as well. So the common questions, you just need to prepare. You just do not need to go in depth. Of, of the topics, you just need to see uh, the basic things. So, which are the topics uh, you need to cover, like groundwater occurrences and uh, aquifer characteristics, porosity, permeability, transmissivity, the concepts. Uh, these are easy concepts. The formulas you need to remember for transmissivity, Darcy's law, storage coefficient uh, concept, uh, applications of isotope in groundwater. And uh, it has been seen in the last two years, the past uh, question papers, the formula based questions. And uh, formula based questions and numericals, you just put the uh, form Darcy's law, you can expect questions. The formula, you just need to calculate some basic calculations and unit conversions, and you will get uh, you'll get an answer or equation wise from the well hydraulics part also, you can expect. Now there are two books, uh, I would say one is uh, hy Groundwater Hydrology by David K. Todd is a good book you can refer. And one is uh, Groundwater for Feta. It's not been mentioned yet, but uh, Feta is a good book which uh, will clear your concept regarding the well hydraulics part. You can just do that well for that. Now, these are the topics which I discussed for the prelims part. And, uh, and the take home tips for prelims, I would say, in just to make short this lecture uh, practice as much as you can. Uh, because this is objective type questions and uh, you have to practice time bound uh, objective questions uh, you can take reference from gate and jam question papers as well uh, because that's the level of question that that has been going to ask 
year only. So you can take reference from that only. You can practice as much as possible. Formulas, uh, like I said, in uh, hydrogeology, the formulas have been asked, equation has been asked. So it should be on your fingertips. You should be uh, well aware of those things. And just go through the question before, uh, before you start the exam. And there is also one thing, prepare for the See, go through the previous question paper like for it is available in the UPSC side as well. Uh, for assistant geologist exams, you can practice. It could give a good mock practice, uh, mock test practice for you. And uh, as well as uh, the two years question for 2020 and 2021, which got recently over uh, for the prelims part. You can just see that check so that you can analyze yourself up to what depth the questions are being asked so you can analyze yourself and see uh, up to which your level you have to go and study there and uh, you have to do that by yourself it would be beneficial to you also and make notes accordingly it would help you do not attempt unless you're very sure of the question because there are negative markings which are negative marks so uh, it would carry wrong impressions so uh, you just don't want to lose your positive marks right and uh, you need to take care of your speed and accuracy as i said before earlier also there are 120 minutes and 120 questions so like it's one minute for one question so you just need to be very uh, i mean accurate and uh, you have to speed up while answering you just cannot stay at one question if you don't know the answer you just you can just cannot recall in the 10th uh, moment so you just need to see these things and you just need to take care of all those things and before finishing off you just if time permits you just make sure to revise at once again because it's an online mode exam so you can do that but uh, make sure if time permits you can just revise it once for all now uh, this is the first part of this presentation. And if you have any questions, you may ask regarding the prelims part or the prelims preparation. And, uh, Are there any so questions? Sir, I can take a few of them. Uh, hello, sir. Please speak. Uh, sir, uh, so my question is that uh, in, uh, in prelims, uh, while tech, yes, we found uh, the, uh, we get the uh, numerical questions. So the, those numerical questions are uh, are of simple type or they are complex. So because uh, time limitation is there, what types of no, numerical yes. questions? Uh, numerical questions. If you see the last two years questions, uh, the basically the numerical questions or equations that have been asked is basically from structural geology, not that uh, calculation part where you need to unit conversion. The normally that we get in gate exams. That is not the case here. These are just simple. There is time bound, limited. Uh, we have time constraints. Like for one minute, one question. It would be like that level only. So I believe the question level for the numerical is quite uh, average and easy i would say you just need to be thorough with the concepts so that you just apply the formulas and you will get the answer in that way only okay so thank you sir thank you. any other questions excuse me sir yes this one by one please. Hello, sir. I have one question regarding the paper one means uh, in which we have to give the exam for history geography that part. Uh, how much time uh, means we need to give for that means it have 100 marks means how much time distribution should it take in our preparation time, sir? Like if you're talking about the self preparation part? Yes, sir. That uh, means paper one that uh, in which we have history geography economics means all the current affairs part all that okay. for your kind information sir the for, for the first part the session has already been covered uh, in the phone noon session so in just in case you have missed it tomorrow you can ask in the interactive session as well but for uh, for my side i could say that it is up to you uh, that uh, how much just one hour daily is also quite enough for you okay sir okay. thank you one sir. hour bye Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, how to write a good essay in the main, sir? Uh, sorry. Repeat your question, For main, sir. For main, sir. Yeah, for the main part. How to write a good answer, sir, on effective, effective. Yeah, the, for the main. Subsequently, my colleagues will be discussing now, uh, so I will be handing over the mic to them. So they will subjective parts now. Please be patient. Please be with us.
So if we don't have any next, we will be back into the next one. Yes, sir. So that's all from my side. Now I hand over to my colleague, uh, Lebzen, to present the subjective part for the paper one mains paper. Thank you. Uh, now I will be discussing about the main exam, uh, main paper that is uh, geology paper one, which consists of physical geology and remote sensing, structural geology, sedimentology, paleontology, and stratigraphy. And uh, we will be sharing you the important, what are the important questions that they have been asked or recently asked question. And yeah, so we will be discussing uh, only those important topics. So from section A, that is physical geology and remote sensing, one can expect uh, this kind of question. That is the one is internal structure of the earth. They may ask about the composition uh, variation that is rheological also. Sometimes they may ask about the boundary. Sometimes they may ask about the geophysical uh, anomalies within the earth's structure. So these questions are uh, quite important. You may expect for descriptive as well as the uh, five marks question. And next one is weathering processes and product. Uh, this may be asked for a short type of question, so you don't have to skip it. This is also important. Another one is geomorphic landforms, uh, which which may be river, wind, glaciers, waves, and groundwater. So amongst all those things, it's quite important. This question usually uh, asks either in a uh, five marks question or either 10 or 15 marks question. And every year this uh, from this particular topic, one or the other used to usually ask. And most frequently asked uh, topic are uh, glaciers and this groundwater, usually cars topography. So one has to go through this particular topic. Another important thing is major geomorphic features of India, whether it's India, one has to uh, go through about this uh, Indian geomorphic features. Next is remote sensing. Here, uh, some important uh, topic that you should uh, study uh, for the men's is spectral signatures of soil, rocks, uh, water, or vegetation. And another important thing is digital image processing. Um, the, uh, this may ask in a short note type of question and same like Lancet, IRS, spot characteristics and uses. These are usually asked in short type of questions. So you can make uh, notes according to the accordingly. And next one is aerial photographs. That is, uh, they may ask about the types, their scale, their parallax, their reflect, uh, relief displacement. So uh, this may ask for 15 marks descriptive question, or they may ask about the types of aerial photography or the scales of uh, aerial photography. So depending on that, uh, uh, you you have to respond. And this is also another important topic which you don't have to leave. And another important thing uh, for this remote sensing part is elements of image interpretation. They may ask about elements of image interpretation, so you don't have to skip about this. This you, you may expect for either five marks or for 10 marks. And um, some of the sample questions that uh, they have asked in, from this uh, particular section A are uh, this landform produced by glaciers and fuel actions or continental trees or uh, they may ask about the salient features of satellite imagery and aerial photographs. So uh, these are the sample question from this particular topic that she, uh, previous uh, examination has asked. And then the that I've referred from this particular section is um, Earth by DARPA, Earth Science by Praise and Sevier, Earth Materials by Kevin Heffren, John O'Brien, and by Fundamentals, and usually geomorphology, by Fundamentals of Geomorphology by Hackett. And when it comes to remote sensing, uh, I refer two books that is uh, remote sensing by John Jensen and Thomas Lellison. Although I referred uh, remote sensing geology by R.B. Kapta. Next is section B that is structural geology. Here also I have uh, met some important topics uh, that you don't have to miss. You have to study. So uh, the first one is kinematics and time analysis of deformation. You don't have to skip this topic. Stray strain relationship for elastic, plastic, or viscose metals. They may ask uh, in one year, they may ask about the stress relationship of elastic or they may ask about plastic. So one can expect for short notes as well as the descriptive type of question for this particular topic. And another one is measurement of strain in deformed rocks. There are a lot of um, 
uh, measurements for strain. So one can expect for short notes from this particular topic, as well as they can ask the whole uh, techniques or the uh, technique for this measurement of strain in the form rows. And um, another one is uh, structure of fault, cleavage, putin, lineation, chomps, and fault. This one you have to go through a little bit detail because from this particular topic, uh, one question will come. Uh, so you don't have to uh, leave this particular topic. By any means, you have to uh, go through this uh, particular topic. And another important thing is geographic projection of linear and planar structures. So this particular topic has been repeatedly asking uh, asked, uh, questions. So you have to go through this particular topic as well. And another important uh, Topic is shear zone. Most of the uh, most of, most every year, almost every year, this question has been asked related to pretel or related to ductiles. So one has to go through in details the short shear zones. And another important is that relationship between crystallization and deformation. So this they may ask about uh, they may ask in short type uh, relationship between crystallization or team asks about deformation also. So one can expect even from this particular topic, either short notes or long uh, notes. And the particular sample, uh, question sample that they have asked previous, uh, for the past few years are like, they ask about the Ramsey classification of faulted layers. Sometimes they ask about the types of strikes with false. Sometimes they ask about the characteristics of tactile shear zones with net diagrams. So accordingly, you have to uh, write that. And the books that I've uh, referred to for this particular structural geology is Structural Geology by S.K. Koch. It's very good. Uh, structural Geology by Dries and Morse, Davis and Ron Reynolds. Uh, and for the basic, uh, for basic foundation for structural geology, uh, I referred R.G. Bach. And uh, another good book is Structural Geology by Hakan Folsen. And you can also uh, watch the videos by Professor T.K. Bishwal on YouTube for better understanding of structure, structural geology. Next, section C, that is sedimentology. Here also, uh, usually they ask about the classification of sedimentary rocks. To sedimentary rocks, they usually ask about the classification of sandstones, Sometimes they ask about the classifications of uh, conglomerate. Sometimes they ask about the classification of limestone. So those three questions are the repeated type of questions. So you have to focus uh, particularly on that topic. And another important thing is quantitative uh, crane size analysis. So this question usually asks for descriptive type of questions. So you can make question accordingly. And uh, another important things which repeatedly asked from this sedimentology part is these primary sedimentary structures, whether it be primary sedimentary structures, penny contemporaneous uh, deformation structures, or biogenetic structures. From this uh, three topic, one or the other will come either as a short note or for a descriptive type of question. So you have to uh, thoroughly go through this particular topic as well. And again, paleo uh, current analysis, uh, they may give about, they may give some data and then, uh, some little logs and then you will uh, explain about it or sometimes they directly ask about the paleo what is paleo current analysis so you have to focus on this topic as well and then uh, for descriptive question here in sedimentology uh, this uh, last second that is sedimentary environment and fishes analysis so this is very important usually they ask for, for uh, 15 marks or 10 marks so uh, whether it be fluvial uh, glacial celtic silicic plastic shallow or deep marine environment, one or the other, the, uh, the acts often. So you try to make notes according uh, according to this uh, uh, explanation. And again, uh, one another important things, uh, like topic here in sedimentology is principle of uh, sequence stratigraphy, its concept. So you can go a little bit details about the sequence stratigraphy because sometimes the acts in detail, sometimes the acts about the just principle of sequence stratigraphy. So accordingly, you have to make notes. And uh, here are some of the samples from sedimentology for uh, previous question. Like sometimes they ask about the procedure for paleocarbon analysis, like I've told you, their significance. They ask about the control uh, and the composition of sandstone. And uh, and sometimes they ask about the Walters law, which is related to this sequence stratigraphy. So, uh, and some of the books that which I've referred uh, from sedimentology part are the sedimentology and stratigraphy by Kerry Nichol, Sempo, and then in, uh, introduction to sedimentology by Sally Richard. And uh, another good book uh, which I've referred is sedimentary rocks by Betty John. 
now coming back to paleontology, um, this is quite a vast topic, but uh, if you, um, here are some of the important uh, topics. The first one is ignofossils. Usually they ask for the short note types of questions. So one has to focus on this particular topic as well. And then another important thing uh, is morphology and time range of brachiopods, IJP brachiopod, lemmiprean, castropod, cephalopod, and echinoids. So most of the time, you can, you can expect one or the other morphology from this particular topic. And uh, at the same time, they may ask about the evolutionary trend, like whether it be trilobites, lemmiprens, castrobots, or cephalobots. So one has to go through in details their morphology, their time range, and the evolutionary trend of that particular species. When it comes to uh, micro paleontology, uh, the most important one is foraminifera and ostracods. So you have to, uh, even here also you have to study their morphology, uh, their time range, and their evolutionary trend also, and uh, their correlation, their paleo uh, environment. And another important thing uh, from this paleontology part is the confounder plant fossils and their significance. Usually, this question has been asked again and again. So one has to go through or for this particular uh, topic, and you can elaborate with the good diagrams uh, of different type of Gondwana plant fossils and their significance. And when it comes to vertebrate paleontology, uh, they usually ask about the uh, proboscidea, equidia. You, these two are the uh, frequently asked questions. So you can expect uh, these two questions uh, in future examination. And then uh, find uh, another. Important topic is application, application part of paleontology. They may ask about related to stratigraphy. They may uh, even ask about regarding to paleoecology or paleoclimatology. So accordingly, when you study, uh, you correlate, uh, you make notes according uh, to stratigraphy, uh, paleoecology and paleoclimatology. And then uh, you may even expect a descriptive type of question from mass extinction. And here are the sample question that have been asked in previous years, like they're asking the diagrams and the morphology of ammonoids and the node of evolutionary and their situ patterns. And again, uh, they are asking about the internal structures of brachiopod shell. So in that way, they ask a uh, question from paleontology part and from paleontology part, the books which I've referred uh, are the principle of invertebrate paleontology by Dwayne Hoffels, uh, introduction to paleontology by Amal Daskopta and paleontology by PC Jane. And for micropaleontology, I refer Bilal. Back to uh, section E, that is stratigraphy. Uh, here is uh, this is also a vast topic, and this is also an, another important uh, branches of geology. So you must be thoroughly equipped with uh, it. And uh, some of the important uh, topics that you should particularly focus on it are the principles of uh, stratigraphy. They're called of stratigraphic nomenclatures of India, or uh, you you can also focus on. The stratigraphy, biostratigraphy, and magnetostratigraphy. And again, coming back to India, they may ask about the Archean greenstone belt of India, or sometimes they may ask about uh, where are these greenstone belts found in other parts of the world. So you should at least know some examples or at least know some geological history of some particular area, not only just India. And then again, for Indian stratigraphy, uh, you have to know the uh, mobile belt of of all the mobile belts in india and then uh, apart from that you have to know the uh, all the stratigraphy of the cretans of india when it comes to uh, proterozoic sedimentary basin the most frequently asked uh, question are from the Kotapa and the vindian uh, groups so you should focus more on this too uh, when it comes to proterozoic sedimentary basin and when it comes to phenerozoic stratigraphy uh, that is paleozoic uh, they usually ask about spiti and kumal and usually uh, in this two, uh, they don't ask uh, descriptive type of question. They may ask only in short notes that is the five marks questions like the Blaney boulder beds, uh, what are Blaney boulder beds, or they may ask about the pole formation of Himachal Pradesh. In that way, they ask. So accordingly, uh, you have to study. And when it comes to Mesozoic, they may ask about Spiti, they may ask about Kutch or Trichinoboli. So they, you, you can expect either short notes as well as in the uh, descriptive type of question. And another important uh, topic uh, from this stratigraphy is Gondwana supergroups. So you have to know about the stratigraphy of the Gondwana supergroups, uh, their um, their importance. So 
one has to go a little bit details when it comes to Gondwana supergroup. Super and coming back to Sinozoid's um, stratigraphy, uh, one has to focus more on Assam and Himalayas. They may ask about the Assam oil field related to it, which in which formation those oil have been formed. They may ask related to that, or sometimes they may ask about Himalayas, their various structures, their evolutions, or their stratigraphy of either lesser or higher Himalayas. And then uh, another important thing is Shivaliks. Shivalik is very important. Uh, they have asked two, three times of uh, for descriptive type of questions, so you can also prepare for that. And last is the boundary problems of Indian stratigraphy. So boundary problems, uh, every asks one question or the other, one boundary problem. So one has to study all the boundary problems of India with examples, with Indian examples. And if you can, you can even correlate with the um, other countries. And here are the sample uh, that has been asked uh, from this particular topic, that is stratigraphy. Uh, give this, give the stratigraphic succession of Indian super groups. See, uh, like I've said uh, from Pruturosa sedimentary basin, this type of question I usually ask. And then they describe briefly the natures of Deccan volcanic province and comment on this geodynamics. So this type of question has been asked from stratigraphy uh, part. And coming back to books. I refer the Geology of India by Ramakrishna, that is volume one and two. Uh, you, you will know a lot of things about the Indian stratigraphy here in this book. And for sedimentology and uh, some uh, stratigraphy part, you can also refer for same book. And then for detailed stratigraphy and the Himalayan uh, evolutions or their geology, you can go through the making of India, uh, that is geodynamic evolution by K.S. Valdia. Thank you. Now, uh, if you have any uh, questions to be asked, you can ask. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm Pradesh. I'm studying uh, MSc Applied Geology, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, I have some queries. Yes, can I yes. ask with you? Yes, yes, you can ask. Yes, sir. Uh, each question contains how many marks, sir? Can you explain about uh, the mark pattern? Uh, the first part, that is the part E, you, you will ask for five marks. There will be 10 questions for five marks, and the remaining uh, five part, you can ask either in 10 or sometimes you can directly ask for 30 marks. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. If there is no more question for me, can there's no one. Uh, now I give the time to our dear colleague, uh, Anjali Upadhyay. Now you can come and take your time. Yeah. Thank you, Tali Libdin. Welcome, Anjali. You may start, please. Yeah, thank you, Libdin. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Anjali Upadhyay, a geologist at GSI and recently joined this organization. Today, I will be discussing about preparation of paper two of geologist main examination. So, by now, uh, you all might be thinking there's a vast syllabus and lot many books and how are we going to read these many books in a very short span of time. So here we are to help you because we have gone through the same stage two years back. Uh, in paper two, you can score maximum if you work a little bit smartly and that can help you to get a good rank also. So what I believe in paper two, we have to write a lot as compared to paper one and three. So be prepared for that. But there are some sections in this paper like mineralogy and geodynamics. So in this, if you know the answer, you can save your time, which, which can be invested to the other sections which need more time. So let us discuss each section in detail. So the first section is mineralogy and it covers your physical and optical mineralogy as well as crystallography. So first, uh, from crystallography, the most important topic is uh, symmetry elements of different crystal systems. So you can expect a question like, uh, 
describe different symmetry elements from the normal class of cubic system. So uh, direct question like this can be asked and most frequently asked is the monoclinic uh, system. So you need to thoroughly read uh, the symmetry elements of all the crystal systems. And for the physical and optical part, you can expect questions like describe, uh, like I have already mentioned in the sample question, describe the composition, internal structure, and characteristic optical properties of pyroxene group. So uh, the most important mental mega and and pyroxene, which the question asked. So for these kind of questions, first uh, write a, a short introduction, then. Uh, the silicate structure with a schematic diagram, then the characteristic physical properties of the particular mineral for which the question is asked, then the characteristic optical property, and then uh, any additional in, uh, important information if you know. So uh, next you can expect uh, questions like determine the optic sign for uniaxial or biaxial mineral, and along with this uniaxial and biaxial indicatrix can be asked. So. These were the topics which are important for the detailed question. And then there are topics like pleochroism, isomorphism, coordination number, and twinning, and twinning especially for twinning in feldspar. So these questions are asked in short notes, like in your section A. But out of this pleochroism, again, you can expect a detailed question, like uh, what do you understand by pleochroism? How do you determine the pleochroism in plane polaris light? And then uh, describe different pleochroic scheme for Hondren and something like that. So for uh, this section, the books we have referred, uh, we have referred were, uh, for, op for, for optical mineralogy and crystallography part, uh, the book by Dexter Perkins. Again, for optical mineralogy, you can refer to WD Nessay. And then uh, you can also refer to Dana's Manual of Mineralogy. And especially for silicate structures, I have referred uh, book Rock Forming Minerals by Jusman. So that was about the section A. Then comes the geochemistry and isotope geology pass. Uh, geology part. So in geochemistry, important topics are composition of meteorite, partition coefficient, geochemical classification of trace element, large and lithophiles, and RE and RE patterns. So uh, partition coefficient and composition of meteorite can be asked in short notes as well as uh, in the detailed question along with some other questions. So RE is very trending and uh, you should you should know the different uh, geochemical characteristics of RE mm -hmm. and significance of uh, RE anomalies. Like uh, I have mentioned uh, one question in a sample question, like discuss geochemical characteristic of RE and what is EU anomaly. Part, you can expect questions from the topics, composition of bulk earth, geological behavior of earth's mantle and geochemical cycle. From the set of geology part, uh, they mostly ask questions from half-life and deriving the decay equation. And along with this, they ask one of the radiometric dating method. And the most frequently asked are the uranium lead and rubidium strontium dating. So for this section, important books are uh, a book by uh, Brian Mason. Uh, this book covers your uh, meteorites and uh, geochemical classification of trace elements and composition of bulk earth, geochemical cycle, all this topic. For uh, Again, for trace elements and I stopped geology, we have referred to geochemistry by uh, William M. White. Uh, there's another book for geochemistry by K.C. Mishra, and especially for isotope geology. I have uh, referred to some of the videos uh, which are available on Vidya Mitra website to, for the better understanding of the concept. Uh, next section is igneous petrology. So the most important topic from igneous petrology is IUGS classification. You can, get a, uh, you can expect a direct question like... Uh, discuss about the IGS classification of acidic rocks or basic rocks or ultra-basic rocks. So whenever, uh, if question comes like IGS classification of acidic rocks, so you need to give the QAPF diagram. Then uh, you can expect questions from Bowen's reaction series, fractional crystallization, evaluation and differentiation of magma. So all these topics are interlinked and uh, there are questions expected like uh, uh, write an essay on origin and late stage crystallization of basaltic magma or discuss about the evolution of basaltic magma and something like that. Then again, next is nature of magma with different tectonic settings. So if a question, come, question comes from this topic, you need to keep a proper diagram like uh, in subduction zone so setting, uh, in mediation ridge, what kind of magma you expect. So try to uh, give more and more neat and clean diagrams to uh, explain your answer. Um, next is phase diagram. So uh, the important one is a binary system. So that uh, 
every two three years they always ask questions uh, related to the uh, this binary system phase diagram then there are topics like hotspot volcanism uh, continental flood basalts cometaites kimberlites and earlier degrees complexes and so on so if question question comes from these type of topics you need to first give one uh, broad introduction then uh, always describe in what kind of tectonic settings you expect this rocks and then if you know always try to give some indian example so this will help you to get good marks for igneous petrology um, we have referred to the books uh, Igneous Petrology by M.K. Bose and Principles of Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology by J.D. Winter. These two books uh, mostly cover your uh, all the topics. Uh, you can refer to the book by Phil Potts also. And there is one very good uh, online course material available by Professor Stephen Nelson from Tulane University. And especially for the phase diagram, I have referred to this material. And this is very easy to understand and very much helpful. And again, from the topics like hotspot volcanism and mental metasomatism. So for these topics, I have referred to the videos from Vidya Mitra. Next section is metamorphic petrology. So the most important topic from metamorphic petrology is characteristics and mineral assemblages of different metamorphic facies, and out of which most frequently asked are green schist facies, blue schist, and eclogite facies. So you must thoroughly go through the all the facies and remember all the mineral assemblages. This you can expect in a detailed question. Then again, for phytoblast and their significance, it can be asked in a ten or fifteen marks question. Then there are topics like thermal like faces, ACF diagram, retrograde metamorphism. So all these things are asked generally in short notes. So you prepare these topics accordingly. Then uh, metamorphic facies series, ultra high pressure metamorphism, role of fluids in metamorphism, geothermal barometry, and so on. All these questions are uh, repeatedly asked in previous years uh, UPSC geologist examinations. So you need to uh, focus on these topics also. So uh, again, uh, for metamorphic also, the very uh, basic book which we uh, refer in, uh, which we read in our college days, uh, the book by uh, G.D. Winter, it covers almost all the topics. And especially for the facies, I've referred to this metamorphic petrology book by Mia Shiro because it has, uh, it has given a detailed expl explanation of each and every facies and which is very easy to understand. So next, last section is geodynamics. So this section again is very much scoring and the most important topics again here are concept of continental drift and plate tectonics and you can expect a very a basic and direct questions like uh, give evidences of continental drift or what do you understand by plate tectonics and different dif uh, describe different types of plate boundaries so uh, if a question comes from uh, plate tectonics so whether it is from mental plumes or subduction zone oceanic island chain accretion ridges rift basin backup basin and so on so you need to give a proper uh, clean and labeled diagram and try to give maximum information in the figures itself because it is a last section and you uh, there are chances that you might be running out of the time so even if you do not have uh, the time to uh, write anything try to give maximum information in the diagrams itself then in the second part uh, important topics are paleomagnetism seismic belts belts gravity and magnetic anomalies on ocean floor seismic discontinuity in earth olive in spinal phase diagram and evolution of himalayas like in this part you can expect questions like write a note on gravity anomaly at mid oceanic ridge or differentiate between the magnetic anomalies at mid oceanic ridge and oceanic island and something like that and for this section the books you can refer to are uh, for tectonics you can refer to earth structure global tectonics by kerry and wine plate tectonics by casey Condy, and for the uh, geophysics part you can refer to fundamentals of geophysics by william laurie and the first chapter of this book is very much important so this was all about the paper two and uh, uh, so if you have any uh, question regarding uh, the section which I have discussed, you uh, feel free to ask. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am, I am Dhruv uh, So ma'am, I have actually three questions. Uh, first is uh, means how means uh, I have experienced the mains exam uh, last year. And actually, uh, what happened that uh, while at attempting the questions, the lengthy questions of 10 to 15 marks, uh, most of the five marks questions, uh, which we tried to attempt at 
test so actually uh, how should we manage the speed in that case and uh, also if uh, in 15 or 20 marks uh, questions if we are able to write if in 15 uh, three pages are given so if you are able to write uh, two pages and in 20 some three pages if you are able to write and if and uh, is left then uh, uh, does we lose marks over there or uh, uh, while in in the checking process and uh, uh, and yeah and overall approach should be more of attempting the questions or just we should just let go the questions that we are not sure and confident okay i understood your point so your first question was you uh, could not attempt your section a so basically uh, what happened in section a there are 10 questions and each having five marks of weightage so uh 50 marks that means and uh for uh, li like for my strategy was i always used to attempt section a first because there are more chances that you can score maximum in that part so uh first 30 minutes you give for section a 30 or 40 minutes and then accordingly uh, like you have three hours you um, devote your 30 minutes for section a and then 30 30 minutes for each of the section so always try to attempt section a first if you want to score more uh your second question was uh in the descriptive part like in 15 or 20 uh, marks question you could not fill all the pages uh, which were given so no you do not lose marks if you leave one page blank the uh, idea the basic idea is you need to uh, be straightforward and you need to write correct answer uh, all the uh, papers and the last question was uh, i'm sorry i forgot your question can you repeat that again yeah so overall uh, overall approach should be attempting of more of the questions or we should just let go the questions we are not sure or no. confident our objective is to qualify the exam right so uh, in uh, in this particular exam you need to attempt all the section so uh, rather than giving one hour to one particular section and then you could not attempt uh, one section so that that should not be your strategy so you should you should be uh, speedy uh, from the beginning of the exam and then uh, try to attempt all the section thank you yeah, thank you uh, ma'am am i audible uh, hello yeah, hello yeah. ma'am uh, ma'am i'm uh, asking uh, that uh, whether we should uh, write the questions in a, in tabular way in point wise or i which i should uh, write the questions in a descriptive manner no you you should always write in uh, like point wise in bullets or in tables that that saves your time and that looks good also and that is easy for examiner also and that gives an impression that yes you know the answer so there is always chances to get uh, more marks if you write uh, point wise okay okay thank you so much and, and another try question to is, give can more I... and more figures ra rather than describing try to give more and more figures and cross sections something like that okay okay and the second one is can i use the color pens uh, like that or only one or two pen uh, no no only use blue pen and no uh, if you want you can use pencil for the figures okay 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 thank you so uh, much. color pen doesn't matter okay can i use that or not uh, is it allowed no, no, you or... should not you you should use only blue pen okay 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 sure thank you hello we have yes two queries hello uh, yeah yeah yes ma'am do writing matters in the exam or not because uh, it's a uh... It's a writing exam, so I mean, be like uh, you be able to uh, convey that yes, you know the answer. That's all. Even if your English is not good, that doesn't matter. You should know the concept. About uh, good handwriting. Oh, good handwriting. It should be legible. Hello. Good evening, ma'am. You can also use black pen, right? Or specifically uh, that it's a blue pen. Hello, ma'am. Use black pen also, right? Uh, I think yes, you can use a black pen. Uh, still, you should go through the uh, this notification before going to the exam. Uh, whatever is written. Yes, Anjali. Yes, sir. Please state say in the notification what sort of color paints. You can use and you cannot use. It is clearly written. 
please go through the notification next one next ah. question please. thank you hello ma'am yes ma'am from when we are pre preparing for the exam so we should make a short note for it or we should for complete the uh, whole syllabus sorry i could not understand your question Um, my question is that when we start preparing, so first uh, from the day one, so we should start making short notes, or sh we should complete the course at once, and after that we start making notes. Oh, making no notes. Oh, that is your choice, whichever way you are comfortable. Like uh, it's better to uh, write. So uh, it of course uh, uh, that will help you in uh, writing in the exam also. So whatever you are reading, it's better to make notes. So that will also improve your writing skills and improve your speed also. Yes, so you, ultimately, that is going to help in the exam. Ma'am, one more question. Please. Ma'am, the sessions about the that is uh, GSI videos on this. I am not able to get these videos. So, how can could you please get a link? Uh, no, uh, they are not GSI video. Uh, that is uh, a different website, uh, which is I think from government Vidya Mitra. So, they are all the uh, videos for all the subjects are available, and for geology also uh, videos are available, and that are very helpful. Oh, okay, I can share that. Thank you, thank you very much, ma'am. We'll let, uh, tomorrow in the interactive session. We'll let you know. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Uh, hello? your voice is not clear. Uh, hello. And how long? How? What is the minimum uh, time limit that we can spend to prepare for?